call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, are you ready? Sorry. Okay, very good. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Patterson Municipal Council, I welcome you to the regular meeting of the Municipal Council, June 28th, 2022. This meeting is now called to order. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, Madam President. Roll call for Municipal Council regular meeting of June 28, 2022, at 7 p.m. Councilman Abdelaziz. Councilman Menton, Councilman Jackson, Councilman Kalik. Here, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mendez, Councilman Mims. Here. Councilman Rivera. Here. Councilman Velez. Present, Madam Clerk. Madam President. Present. Thank you. Madam President, this evening we have with us to render the prayer, <coughs> Mr. Joel Ramirez, who is the Director of Health and Human Services. And also, to lead us in the flag salute is the Honorable Councilman Abdelaziz of the Sixth Ward. Everyone at this time, please rise for the prayer and the flag salute. Thank you. No, no, go prayer first. No, prayer first. I go first, Councilman. I'm sorry. <laughs> God before man. For those of you who know this prayer, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver the honorable members of this council, the mayor and his administration, and all of the residents of this city, deliver them from malice, temptation, and discord. Bestow upon them discernment, wisdom, and temperance, and guide us into times of prosperity and peace. Lord, we ask all of this as your children under the covenant of Abraham. Amen. At this time, if you can please remain standing for a moment of silence for our troops and those who have lost loved ones. You may have a seat. Madam Clerk, can you please read the statement of compliance? Yes, Madam President. Statement of Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law 2021 to 2022. Meeting date, June 28, 2022, time 7 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting was compiled and disseminated in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law in the following manner. One, the annual notice of regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council was compiled for the year 2021 to 2022, and about July 1, 2021. Two, a schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 
2021 to 2022 was duly transmitted on or about July 1, 2021 to the North Jersey Herald News, the record, the Arabic voice, Italian voice, Passaic County Pulse, Dominicana News, Kiskater International, El Especial, the Patterson Press, the City Post News, and Tap into Patterson, in addition to any other publication duly requesting such notices. Three, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2021 to 2022 was prominently posted in the lobby of City Hall, first floor in the place reserved for the announcements of this type. Four, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2021 to 2022 was duly filed with the municipal clerk. Five, a copy of the schedule of the regular meetings of the municipal council was mailed to any person who requested and it paid the fee authorized by the Open Public Records Act. Madam President. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. At this time, I'll take uh, the a motion for payment of bills. Payment of bills for June 28, 2022. We have total payments equaling $5,461,098.78, of which $4,445,378.21 is for payroll. Second. I'm, I'm sorry. Payment of bills moved by uh, Councilman Rivera, second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on payment of bills. Yes, Madam President. Roll call and payment of bills in the amount of five million five hundred and four five hundred five million four hundred and sixty one thousand and ninety eight dollars and seventy eight cents. Councilman Abdulaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan. Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Pass by the for a minute. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Oh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Just double checking. We don't have no waste management payment on this payment of bill. My vote is yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam President? Yes. I'm sorry, yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Payment of bills is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, before we continue with the agenda or with my colleagues, I I'd like, there's a presentation for uh, Councilman Abdulaziz, do you want to continue with the agenda and then we, the Councilman Rivera, do that first? Addendum first? Yes, I was about to ask. Yeah. Councilman, did you want to vote that item on? Yeah. You yeah. have one addendum number. Yeah. Actually, six. yes, Would let's like vote on do? the addendum. This is an item uh, that came through workshop. We discussed it. It was on the agenda uh, through Health and Human Services. Don't exactly know what happened, but the item was pulled and then it was put back on. So in order for us, because it was advertised without, the agenda was advertised without the item, although it was discussed in workshops, um, we need to add it to the agenda. So any council member that says no, then we're not able to add it on. Is everyone okay with moving forward we, to we add okay, this okay, Council item? President, but just to clarify, I received an email, I believe yesterday, about three items that are supposed to be voted in the agenda. One was the police. One was the, uh, right, correct, uh, director? No, 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 no. Or is in, or is in the agenda? No, um, Councilman, that wasn't for addendum. Anything that didn't make the agenda, like this came up today. Oh. It was done yesterday, so because it was sent out the day before the meeting, right. it does not need to be voted on today. So it was, it was It's, a, it's included, but attached. I know, but it was tagged in an email wrong, okay. So we just have one item to be voted on that came today. No problem. What, what, wait, um, Council President. Did you remember copy? All right. Uh, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, oh, Council President. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Cotton. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, what happened to those other three items like Councilman Velez was talking about? Is okay. it under, is it on? Uh, the, yes, at the back of your agenda, there's okay. an addendum. It was done yesterday. Oh, so there was no it. need to vote it on because it was sent out to the public yesterday. It's, it's items 43, 44, and 45, which okay. is attached. I want to make sure. an addendum, but it says to be included. The one today, there's one item. This one has to be voted on. So it's there. All right. I just want to make sure the record is okay. okay. May I continue, Councilor President? Yes, Madam. Okay. So at this time, there's an addendum. There's one item to be voted on, and it needs unanimous vote, and it reads, Dear Council Honorable Council Member, the following resolution is also scheduled for your consideration at the regular meeting of the Municipal Council to be held on Tuesday, June 28, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Council Chamber, 155 Market Street, third floor, Patterson, New Jersey. Item to be voted on the agenda. And the item is item number 46, resolution authorizing the City of Patterson, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Health to accept a grant from the New Jersey Department of Health, Division Family Health Services, Health and Human Services, resolution 22, colon 421. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to vote item 46 onto the agenda. Yes, Madam President. Roll call on item number 46 to be included in the regular meeting agenda of June 28, 2022. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mint? Yes. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 46 is hereby added to our regular agenda of June 28, 2022. Okay, very well. If anyone doesn't have any questions, do you want to go ahead and just vote on the item right now? This is just to accept the grant. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on okay. item 46. Um, item on the non consent yeah, item number. 46, I'm just gonna read, I have to read it to the record again. Yes. Item number 46, and item number 46 reads, resolution authorizing the City of Patterson Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Health to accept a grant from the New Jersey Department of Health, Division Family Services, Family Health Services. And this is from Health and Human Services, resolution 22-421. Is there a motion? Move. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Abdelaziz. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 46 for approval. Yes, Madam President. Roll call on item number 46 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Yes. Councilman Kelly? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor and none against. Item number 46 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'd like to do the presentation. presentation. Madam Clerk? She would be right. Councilman Kali, yes. Vice President, could you come and join Council President, please? Thank you.
so this will this will be a quick uh, presentation. As everyone knows, uh, Councilman Rivera, our finance chair, uh, councilman at large, decided uh, not to run for re-election, and um, today is his last meeting. And we just wanted, on behalf of the council, you know, we want to present to the Honorable Flavio Rivera, Councilman at Large, a, a plaque for your dedicated service to the Municipal Council and the citizens of Patterson. We truly appreciate you, I know I do, and even in the best family, sometimes, you know, you can fight, but the love is real and the respect is as well. And um, I've learned a lot from you. I know that you have a lot of municipal uh, experience, uh, finance experience at that, and I'm so looking forward. I know you're not going anywhere. You're still in Patterson. You're still active, and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing some of the great things that we're going to be doing together in the future. Uh, but on behalf of the council, I want to present to you this plaque. Our vice president here also has a few words as well in the presentation of the resolution that we passed. Well. Is it working? Okay. We drafted a resolution a um, couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm not going to read anything from the result. Councilman Rivera, um, I have known you for years during your uh, school days, school commissioner, sc commissioner days. And you are truly will be missed. Your knowledge was on finance was, is, Tremendous. You know, I have learned a lot from you, sitting next to you in the finance. Uh, I hope to see you on every meeting. Come to the podium, give us the knowledge of what we're doing right, what are we doing wrong, uh, and hope to see you every week on the, on the uh, council meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. So it, it has been an honor to uh, be able to serve this community in the last four years, to be able to work uh, with the most professional staff, uh, the clerk's office. I appreciate everything you do for us. My council colleagues, uh, I wouldn't change any one of you, and I really mean it. Uh, we keep it fun. Uh, oh, Mike is here. Um, so um, now it's been, it's been a, a great experience. And, and once again, um, I'm not going to go anywhere. You guys used to see me here before I was elected, maybe for about eight years coming here with my concerns. Sometimes put you know, many hours of my time doing research and presenting possible solutions. Um, and again, you gave me the opportunity to serve the last four years. And I believe during my, uh, during, in the campaign trail, I said, you know what? If I get elected, we're gonna try to do things a little differently. Agree, or, agree with me or not, we have done a lot of things differently, you know, differently, popular or not, but it just didn't make, make sense to get elected and just stay there for four years and don't do anything different. It, it, it does a disservice to the community. You can see the difference in the parks. Uh, we have done a lot of things that, you know, other council bodies did not want to entertain because it might, to them it might seem unpopular. To me, it's just, you know, it was the thing to do financially uh, to put the city in a different situation. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and I'm sure I have confidence in my council colleagues that we're gonna continue, and, and the administration, that we're gonna continue to move the city forward. Thank you very much.
Okay, very well, let's continue. Okay, Madam Clerk, we're going to take item number one for second reading. Yes, Madam President. Next item in our agenda is our second reading ordinance. Second reading? Yes. Next item in the agenda is our second reading ordinances. Item number one, the second reading, public hearing is required. Ordinance setting salaries for, city, for officials of the city of Patterson and accordingly amending Patterson Code section 5-19, administration ordinance 22046. I have a motion for item number two for second reading. Item number one. Item number one was read into the record. Move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velas and second by Councilman Abdelaziz. The public hearing is now open on item number one. See none, move to close. No, no, no. Uh, Councilman, oh, just oh, yes. I, I, I got, it was a big delay out there, so, you know, uh, you, we're watching a live here, Ms. Freeman. I thought. <laughs> Madam Clerk. I, I got to wake up the crowd somehow, uh, Madam President. I'm going to please ask that everyone please, please put your phones on vibrate. Please remain silent while the speaker is speaking. Uh, slow to move, but quick to respond. Good evening. Good evening. Dave Gilmore Patterson. Uh, this is a hot topic and a defining moment for this council, for the sunset of this council, whereby we're going to reorg Friday and a new council will come in. What's the rush? Why is this being pushed through at the end when we're not all, uh, giving others an opportunity that are coming on to evaluate and or to uh, uh, make an assessment as to the productivity and the effectiveness of this council? It has been said that the raises were, are being uh, or the ranges are being increased to attract better talent or more folk to come in to uh, serve. But I would akin, I would akin that, that assessment or that statement to the Supreme Court judges when they asked them were they going to uh, uh, rescind uh, Roe versus Wade and they said no. And what did they do? I think the same thing will happen here. In terms of the raises uh, being a, a range, some of those ranges are flat raises. So there's some level of uh, deception going on with how this is being presented. And I do believe that you don't have to get a $50,000 raise or a $21,000 raise to pick up the garbage. We can't even uh, address the low-hanging fruit. Where is the production? What has been done other than pass out a bunch of grant money? It's not been, it's not been a real effort in terms of going seeking and finding and and, and moving towards uh, a better day when all of the money is handed to you on a silver platter. I just don't believe that it's our best, in our best interest to ignore the people at the bottom of the totem pole and top down raises and nothing coming up. The, all the excuses can be made for the unions and the lack of steps and this and that, whatever, but I think more attention needs to be given to being more creative and finding a way. You had ARP money, COVID money. People could have been given uh, raises, but we had hired a, a consultant for $500,000, originally $750,000. Mr. Gilmore, your time is up. I'm wrapping up, wrap right up? I'm wrapping up right now. For $500,000 after we balked at the $750,000 to give 91 cents premium pay. 
I think it's, a, I think it's horrendous. And uh, they will be held to pay because we're not gonna let this go by and not address it in the next election cycle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good evening, <clears throat> Valerie Freeman Patterson. Good evening. How ironic. The city is going to shit. And we sit here and they want raises. Absolutely not. Raises to me are based on performance. The mayor's performance, poor, F, failure. His administration, who don't reside in Patterson, who are making tons of money when we have more than qualified residents of Patterson who can sit in those seats, but yet they're overlooked. I'm not with it. I don't like it. Don't like the rush of it. I don't like it. He doesn't deserve it, and they don't deserve it. How many shootings have we had in the past seven days? How many? How many? I counted 24, but yet he wants a raise. And no, I don't blame him for everything, but what effort is being made? None that I see, none. You pick and choose what you wanna talk about. You pick and choose what you wanna praise, him especially. I don't like it. He can press conference everything down to somebody chewing bubble gum. But I have yet to see a press conference about these shootings. Not one. I have yet to hear anything about the police officer shooting a young man in the back. Nothing. That is totally against everything police stand for. And you want us to trust the police and he wants to give a raise to his administration Please. while DPW <laughs> cleans up all the mess in this city because we have yet to see cameras where we know that the dumping is being done, installed like he promised, but we'll send DPW to clean up the mess and they're the lowest paid. But guess what, I, 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 I guess I have to understand that they're the lowest paid because they're the most Patterson residents that's employed by the city. It's a shame. You need to be ashamed if you vote. And even you guys, some of you are my friends, some of you I don't care for, don't deserve the raise. You have families, mothers who can barely pay their rent. They're not even making $45,000. And he wants $50,000 raise? <coughs> Come on, think about it, think about it. It, it. it can't happen, you can't allow this to happen. Now if you wanna go down the line and give, look at it back based on performance, I have no problem because that's how I get my raise, based on performance, not just because, oh, we gotta make the salary look better for people to come in. You have more qualified people here in Patterson and we need to start looking at that because this is where we live. The people that's making the most money in here, aside from the mayor, they don't live here. I don't like it. So you can save the BS. And I know why it's being pushed. I know exactly why it's being pushed. Because it can wait until after July 1st. Because it's not that important. But you want to push it? I'm watching. I'm listening to see who casts a vote for yes. And believe me, People are talking, the city is talking, and it's another election coming, and maybe some of y'all won't be here again, but think hard. Think about the citizens of Patterson. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Charles Ferrer. So I happen to be in the area after watching numerous council meetings on YouTube and kept listening to this attract talent when the ordinance clearly states that your department heads are supposed to be residents. 
of the city. Okay. So when we were attracting talent, there were two people that applied for positions and they were look, overlooked that lived in the city for somebody that didn't live in the city. But we're gonna attract talent. So as an educator for 29 years, I tell my students, everything that we need to make Patterson successful lives in Patterson. But we're setting ranges to attract talent. But when I look at the jobs that G. Greer posts for the low, for the low level workers, 28,000, I don't see no range to attract talent. Or we want to talk about, well, the unions have to negotiate better. So it's difficult for the union to negotiate better if you're putting zero on the table. It's difficult for the union to negotiate if, for example, the person's making 30,000 and the city says, oh, we'll give you 3%. So that's $900, 26 paychecks, $34.62 before taxes. So the husband can take his wife to Applebee's once a month for the two for 20. Okay, reality, if you want to bargain in good faith with any of the unions, especially the DPW ones and the ones, the meters and the ones that aren't making any kind of substantial money, if you're not looking at the cost of living, which Social Security just got, which is 8.6%, you're not doing them a favor. If it was 35,000, it's $40.38 a paycheck. If it's 40, it's 46.15 numbers. That's what you want somebody to look into their check and see. But we want to attract talent. The talent's already here. There's no need to put a range when if you need to do something, you can just do it. You need to create guides where the people who are working here diligently every year can see some light at the end of the tunnel. Not see what they're seeing and see everybody else get money and get it approved like they don't matter, okay? You know me, I don't come down here for nothing because I'm tired of it. Been tired of it for years. Haven't been down here in so many years. Came here. But for this, I needed to let you know, this garbage about attract talent, if the talent's not already here, you have no business looking at it in the first place. None whatsoever. I'm just a stone throw away. But if I need to start coming down here to start reminding you of the, what the people are saying, the people, whether they want, you want to say it's not a raise or whatnot, what they hear is that somebody's getting ready to get something good and I'm not, okay? So if the people that you're supposed to represent say that this is not something that they want right now, then it shouldn't happen. And if it happens, then you just said to the people, I don't care two cents about what you say, what you think, what you feel, and even how important you are until I run again, and then I'm gonna come with the hamburgers or the chicken and, 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 and the special kind of food to entice people to come vote for me, okay? Okay, stop the nonsense. Respect the people, because eventually they're going to stop respecting you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you had this first. I'm Next speaker, please. God's name, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. I just want to say, first of all, I don't know how many of you listened to the prayer that the guy did for the beginning of this prayer. Joel did when he said to deliver us from evil and if you don't think this is evil then you have another thought coming because this is evil people and anybody that shares in a blessing you share that blessing but if you share in something evil you're going to get what's coming and you might not be listening to us because you don't give a two cents what we say because you already got your five to do whatever it is that you're going to do. But I can tell you one thing today. You might be sitting here, but there's a God above you that's going to come and let you know 
what it is that you're doing to his people. Because you don't believe that anymore. You have gotten your sight set on five. All I need is five. But I can tell you, the five going to get you in trouble. Because you don't believe that. See, and one thing God does not like is arrogance. And if you all haven't gotten arrogant because you think you got five, you better realize why God gave you five senses, five fingers. Because you have these two hands to do something good. But what you gonna do tonight is raise your five fingers and do something evil. But we're here to let you know we are not going anywhere. And even though you sit there and stand up and talk to each other while we're talking, it's gonna come back to bite you. Because we're not playing. And as the brother said, we're tired of being tired. And as I was listening to an individual today, he said to me, Ms. Muhammad, when they talk about the 2% for our employees, for truck drivers that have CDLs, that comes down to $600 for them at 2%. Why can't you give yourself 2%? Because right now, we're feeling like you don't deserve 2%. And you might sit back and lean in your car, in your seat, and think this means nothing. But on your way out, you're going to pay. And you're going to pay dearly. And we're not just talking. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi guys. Hello. So why aren't we up the street at Monique's Comedy Club? Cause y'all hilariously funny right now. This is sad. We're still even talking about this. No amount of money will keep or attract any new talent here if we can't control the controllable chaos. You want raises and ranges? I need a police presence in my neighborhood. So much so that I know the cops and their names and their schedule. You want raises and ranges? I need a substation in the fourth ward. You want raises and ranges? I need the 700,000 in tickets and fines collected because if I don't pay a bill, they coming for me with interest and my credit score goes down. You want raises and ranges? I need the garbage collection done properly. Have we thought about giving out garbage bins the same way we did the recycling bins so that way our neighborhoods could look a little unified? You want raises and ranges? I need safety. Are we listening to the difference? Your wants, my needs. Needs trump wants. And we're gonna prioritize. You want raises and ranges? I need not to be attacked at 12, 10 a.m. when I'm coming home from work in a dead end street looking for parking with some whacked out, intoxicated, disturbed, half naked person pulling on my passenger door, trying to get in, and then when I pull off, they hang on to my bar, and I'm on the phone with Patterson Dispatch. I didn't call 911, I wasn't getting transferred. I called Dispatch, and it took them 10 to 12 minutes to get a unit over there. If my kids would have been in my car, this would have been a whole different conversation, and I would have been in the headlines. The shit show is coming in to my backyard. My neighbor's peace is being disturbed, so my peace is being disturbed. I'm tired of being told, move out the fourth. The fourth is the worst. It's not. We need some enforcement. You want the raises and the ranges? I want enforcement. I want loitering laws. You want raises and ranges? I need fines to be collected. I need consistency with the fines for the street parking and the street cleaning. You want raises and ranges? I need red light blocked intersection cameras to get money. Your wants do not trump my needs. Your wants do not trump my children's needs. My children deserve to be able to play in my beautiful ass backyard, but we can't because we're in the season of gunshots or fireworks. I need cops in my neighborhood driving up and down River Street 
Highland Street, Rosa Parks. I want to know their names. I want to know their schedules. I want them around. We're getting new cars, right? They can go and drive around in my neighborhood. Your wants don't trump my needs. Preparanse to have boils in your third eye if we get the raises and the ranges. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good evening, Council. Oh. Good evening, Council. My name is Billy Prempe from uh, 96 Butler Street, Patterson, New Jersey, the fourth ward. And uh, say what? Congressman. Congressman Billy Prempe. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Jackson. But uh, my name is Billy Prempe. I'm running for Congress. But that's not why I'm here today. Um, the reason why I want to speak is uh, today the mayor is deciding to vote on an increase. And as you can see, there's a lot of people here in the city that don't seem to agree with that. At the end of the day, when you guys walk out of here, keep in mind that the people are watching and the people are paying attention to that. Because over the past four years under this mayor, violent crime has gotten higher and higher and higher and higher. And it seems like there's no end in sight. In areas where that we need to have a police presence, we don't have a police presence. The taxes are going through the roof while the mayor continues to sell out the city, and we see all these cardboard apartments popping up all across the city while taxes increase for all of us civilians here. So I want you guys to ask yourself, are you voting on this because you believe you deserve the paycheck, or do you believe the city of Patterson deserves a paycheck? Because what I think would make a lot more sense is like if we're gonna talk about raises, I think we should increase the budget for the DPW, for example, and get a lot more of these workers where they need to be. As you guys know, like I'm always out helping whenever I need to, whenever there's something that needs to be cleaned up, I'm always one of the first people to come and say, um, I'm down to be there. And the DPW is significantly understaffed. So for you guys that are here, I'm, I'm really begging you all here, the people are watching you and they need better change. And that's why I decided to get involved in this. So with that being said, I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Francis Harrison, good evening, everyone. Good evening. As we know, elections have consequences. We are in a season, taxation without representation. This city is a melting pot that has been divided by all of y'all. All this ward stuff here and ward stuff over there and getting stuff for myself and getting stuff for that one has divided this melting pot. We have showed up as a community a number of times with things that we were not for, against it, had our voices heard or half listened to, and it still passed. So we know there is no empathy for the people of Patterson, none, zero. And because one of you have come in for four years, no votes, no, no uh, running for election, you show up, you got a job. Now this is the last hurrah. That'll be your five that you need to do this. Because y'all don't care about Patterson. You look at, we're running on grants and bonds. There are so many grants that have been put out there that have not been completed or taken care of. In 2020, Streetscape, Vreeland Avenue, grant out there for that. Paid someone to do the diagram or whatever the heck they were gonna do about Vreeland Avenue, zero. Grants for Eastside Park, two of them, 2018, and 2021. Now you're waiting on more grants, more bonds, money that's coming to this city. It's all a shell game. A shell game that it's obvious there is no empathy or caring about what the city of this community needs and wants from you people. And they do not deserve no raise because they can't even answer an email or a phone call when you call for somebody. And if you don't have a, a, a relationship with somebody, you can't even get an answer, even to the point of the council. 
No community meetings explaining to your constituents what the hell is going on in this city. If you don't go out there and try to find it and try to find out what's going on, I don't see none of y'all doing nothing. And you getting $7,000 versus somebody else getting 50,000 is ridiculous. Think about the city and what it looks like. You guys live here, you see the dirt, the filth, the attics, the, uh, the garbage not being picked up. You see all of this and how you can sit there and not listen to your constituents' concerns. You call the police, never come. When was it, two years ago? Oh, we gonna have patrols running through the different Ms. wards. Ms. Harris, if you can please wrap up. Never happened. I'll end up, y'all know what the problem is. We all are standing up here saying the same thing. No raises. Do the work, do the job that you were hired for and take care of this city. Thank you. Next speaker. God bless Patterson. This is, ain't this, this is not the same city that I was raised in. All I have to say, the mayor do not deserve no raise. I'm going to tell you why. Patterson, New Jersey is the third largest city in New Jersey. People are suffering. You got all these developers coming here building nice, beautiful buildings now. But people like me and most people in here cannot afford it. 2100 a month? 2300 a month, but you want to raise? Then you walk down the streets in the downtown area, you just want to shop in peace. You got drug addicts right here, and then you got on the other side, you got homeless people. You can't even, we, and the city got money to build homeless shelters and more drug rehab programs. What are you doing with the money? But you want to raise. Another thing, I'm going to remind you, this is the third largest city in New Jersey. No community center buildings. No performing arts center buildings. No jobs. The streets is dirty. Every other day, you got drive-by shooting. But you want to raise. You say, I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing against the mayor, but it's like this. If I got to do my job, clean up at the parking authority, clean up trash, and I do a great job, I expect the mayor to do a good job. And then you don't got no relationship with the city council. Every, you acting like 10, 9-year-olds on national TV. Don't you know people in other states and cities looking at the council meeting? Because you... Because y'all decided to go on YouTube. Not the people. Y'all should have never went on YouTube. Because right now, you're making the city look bad. It's time for us, before anybody get a raise, it's time for us to work together. That's how you build the city. But no, nobody. The mayor, his administration, y'all do not deserve a raise. Clean up the city first. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good evening, honorable city council members. My name is Lester Ellis. I don't live in Patterson, but I worship in Patterson for over 20 odd years. When I entered the building, I saw a sign that spoke about the mayor's wellness program. I find that interesting. I wonder when that or how that's going to take effect when I tried to have a sign put up on Van Houten Street. I asked the Block Association president, I said, listen, maybe we need to put up some signs that say, you know, Block Association or this and that is going on because you all are well aware that there's prostitution on Van Houten Street. I'm sure all of you know that. Open. So, but then I was riding down River Road and I saw there's a sign that says, Panhandling is a violation as the man walked past me with a paper cup and a sign saying he was homeless. So I'd like to pose the question and ask you, you can't take garbage to Wayne and leave it there. So why are you taking their children that you know they don't reside in Patterson? Since you're talking about wellness and the quality of life, 
Why is every surrounding town that keeps their property value up high, they send all of their garbage to Patterson and Patterson receives it? Aren't you live, those of you who live in Patterson, aren't you, are you concerned about the quality of life for the residents? What about the citizen that can't afford to move? So you mean to tell me four to five times a day, daily, I clean up in front of my church, the whole block. I have a leaf blower, I have everything I need uh, in my truck, I take it out, I clean the entire block. I'm not here to ask the city council to clean the street for me. I'm a man of God, I do it myself, and I was raised to clean up where I live. So I don't, I don't need your help to clean up my block. I don't need your help to remove the drug dealers and the prostitutes. I do that myself. But what I'm here to tell you today, when I move it out of my area, it's coming to your area. So the prostitutes that are on Van Houten Street right now, when I move them from Van Houten Street, they're gonna seek some other place of revenue, and where are they gonna go to? Wherever your other residents live at in Patterson. So if you're concerned about the people of Patterson, if you're concerned about where you live, you hold, uh, God has allowed you to be in a position of authority. My question to you is, whether the people like you or not, what is God saying about you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Madam President, Madam Vice President, uh, to our mayor in his absence, um, Dr. King once said, Though I was initially disappointed at being uh, categorized as extremist, he said, as I continued to think about the matter, I gradually gained a measure of satisfaction from that label. Was not Jesus an extremist for love? Love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Was not Amos an extremist for justice? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. We don't conduct ourselves in a matter that exhibits respect or integrity, nor justice, nor righteousness. And it just hinders progress we are here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to be a service for the people, Brother Jackson. I mention him because he's just about the only one that shows visibly. You know, when I moved from job to job, it was because I wanted more money. You don't like your present salary. You are free to leave and accept a position elsewhere. From my understanding, and I've only been here for two years, as I said, from time to time again. So it's a dress uh, difference from New Orleans to New Jersey. Brother Jackson, when I went to the market, I left out with just milk, eggs, and butter. And I spent over $50. I had no ribs like I like it. I had no steak like I like it. And then I had to go back home and pay $1,600 rent. I, I, I just met director. I think he's a, a great guy. He, he's a comedian. I love his jokes. But at the end of the day, I can't say, director, he can have a boost to his salary. Well, I have to go home. I have to figure out if I want to eat today or buy tissue to wipe my backside. So these are real issues that each one of your constituents and people on your war deal with on a daily basis. So all I have to say is that from my understanding, this city isn't composed of wealthy families. They are low income and seniors. So I leave saying we are better together and as one. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Brittany Hunt. Patterson Fire Department, OEM Central Dispatch Center, also referenced as the Communications Division. My shift began at 6.30 a.m. 
At 7.43 a.m., the phone rang. 911, where's your emergency? Ma'am, I need help. I need help. The baby's not breathing. What do you mean the baby's not breathing? He's not breathing, miss. He's not moving. Okay, tap the bottom of his foot. Tap the bottom of his foot. What is he doing? Ma'am, he's not moving. I need help. Please send help. Sir, I'm going to tell you how to do CPR. I'm going to walk you through CPR. You have to start chest compressions. How old is the baby? He's only two months, miss. He's only two months. I need help. Help me. Sir, you have to start chest compressions. Use your middle finger and your index finger, and you start the chest compressions. I'm going to count with you. One, two, three, four, five. Count to 15. We get to 15. OK, you have to give the baby two rescue breaths. Ma'am, I can't. It's blood in this baby's nose. By 8.05, we were told that the baby had been pronounced as a DOA. A DOA is dead on arrival. The baby didn't survive. At 8.09, we received a call for help the very same day. A girl had stopped breathing. By 8.16 a.m., the responding officer was requesting a supervisor because that call, too, was a DOA. At 11.01, we received a call that a woman had been hanging out of a window. She was attempting to commit suicide. This is just to provide you all with a brief synopsis of what we, every person here, as telecommunicators, dispatchers, experience on a daily basis. I heard the timer. I'm just not done. Mayor, council, unfortunately, he's not here. The mayor, I was wishing he was. But um, at the meeting on June 14th, you guys discussed raises. In that very same meeting, Council President Davila, in response to Councilman Velez, who is not here either, um, you stated, there is over 180 residents in the city of Patterson, and we serve all, I quote. So the difference between us and you all, Council President, we don't just have the privilege of just serving the residents of Patterson. In fact, we serve the 180 plus residents of Patterson, we also serve the residents of Prospect Park, Heldon, North Heldon, Woodland Park, Elmwood Park, and also William Patterson College for our EMS services. Council, business administrator, and again, the mayor, all members of the panel, it is important that you all understand that we have an employee list of over 40 plus individuals and of that 40, many of us work two jobs or just somehow depend on a second income to make ends meet, to make ends meet. It is absolutely a disgrace that not only is our contract three years outdated, but to make matters worse, employees at fast food restaurants receive a greater salary than we do. That is, considering the fact that we save lives, and this is not to take away from anyone who worked in fast food. In fact, we are thankful and appreciative of them for their services. We are not here to disrespect anyone. However, we're tired of being disrespected. We're tired of being overlooked. We're tired of feeling unappreciated. We're tired of that 2% increase that we are constantly offered during contract negotiations, and more importantly, as a unit, we're tired of struggling. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next speaker. Yeah, my name is Willie Peterkin, resident of Patterson, long life, born and raised here. And I joined this unit three years ago. I used to be told they're rude, they this, they that, they this. Guess what? They're not that. Every day, the phone rings from the time we get in to the time we leave. They just announced us as first responders. Wow. Guess what? We the first one before the police, the fire, and the EMS gets there. As she just told you about the baby, we get that constantly every single night. Yes, you guys call us for noise complaints, but guess what? When we got a shooting, a baby, someone getting stabbed, those are the first priorities that comes out. 
So when y'all come to us telling us we don't know what we're doing, or are we not out there putting the police in a certain area because of noise complaint, I want you to go talk to that person that baby just died. I want you to talk to the person that just got shot in the head this weekend, or the other five people that got shot, or the gentleman said that is his brother. You all know me. I'm, I've been here all my life. I do good things in this community. These guys deserve a better raise than 2%. This contract, they haven't re received a raise, I believe, since 2017. We keep talking about 2%. We keep going to the table, the table, the table. They haven't spoken to us in a month. This should have been done already. And I know we say, oh, you know, we want to attract more people. Here's your people right here that you're attracting. We're here. So if you want to do a, a scale, scale them, because they're the first ones, even, and no disrespect to DPW, but guess what? When y'all call for DBW, guess who you gotta call? You gotta call us first. When something happens to your families, guess who you call? You're calling these guys back here. So 911, Patterson Central Dispatch, that's what's, what, what's the bottom Patterson. We talk about taking care of our residents. These are all residents of Patterson right behind me. So let's take care of them. Let's do that. Let's think about that at the end of the day. That's all I gotta say. Thank you very much. I really, I'm going to respectfully ask, and I understand, and everyone here today and what they're speaking upon is important. We are in a public hearing specifically for item number one, so let's keep it to I'll, that. I'll save myself okay. for. Thank you. We're going to have a public portion for the rest of, of the uh, constituency. Maybe you guys ready? Next speaker. Kimmy, Kimmy Freeman, Third Ward. Um, I just came from work. Huh? What? Oh, is that you? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't going to come back down to the city council again anymore after the despicable election that we had in May. I've been a resident of Patterson for 52 years. 52 years. I have never seen the see the city in such a bad shape. Last night, while I was trying to drop somebody off by school four, I almost ran into a shooting. First, I thought it was firecrackers while I was approaching the store in back of school 28. Then I realized people were running and shooting while they were running. I had to stop my car. I almost went past North Main Street. I backed up so I said, oh, and they started shooting this way. This is the second shooting I've seen. Two years ago, those seven kids got shot on Carroll Street. I'm parked right across the street. I saw those seven kids get shot and four of them died. I just found out on Essex Street, five people got shot. I've been coming to the city council 30 years maybe. I've been a school teacher, so social worker, coach activists, the whole nine yards. I was gonna just throw the towel in and got to the point where I don't care. My taxes are sky high and the, the streets are terrible. Legal department, my 30,000 car, my Hemi uh, charger hit a manhole. So you guys can expect, this is the third request I had two other cars get jacked up because of these roads, all right? Passing is filthy. I lived on Governor Street during the 70s, and uh, I have never seen so many drug addicts in the city of Patterson. I don't think the mayor or anybody who works in the administration should get any kind of raise. If anything, how about you lower my property taxes, all right? How about I can go somewhere and don't have to be afraid to get shot. I'm to the point now, I told uh, Councilman Mims, uh, back in 1970, there were a group of kids that lived on Gov Governor Street, the Governor Ave, and an old lady got mugged. It was one of my friend's grandmother. There was about 12 of us. We started a block patrol, we were 10, 11, 12 years old, 
and for two years, nobody touched nobody. We were kids. I told Mims, I'm going to have a Panther, Panthers and Panther Patrol. I don't need your permission. I don't need your permission. The park over there, Barbara Park over there, it's a shame. I will volunteer so those kids can play in that park. Eight foot fences around our high schools. I go to, I'm limo drive. I go to other communities, there's no fences. You treat our kids like prisoners, that's where they're gonna go. I don't wanna go back to the jail to help my former students get GEDs. You guys are doing a terrible job. There's a few people on here that I respect that are doing a good job. You know who you are. I'm not gonna mention names. But you guys are elected officials. I taught social studies and civics for over 30 years. You guys are doing a terrible job. There's third world countries that are doing better than we are. My people from Ethiopia, and they're doing better over there than I'm doing here. The poorest country on earth. And they say, please come home. I say, I can't. My children are here. And like I said, I was going to walk away. But you know what made me stop? I was watching Powell. And the white prosecutor said, if I walk away, I'm an accessory to the crimes that are being committed. So I can't walk away. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Like I said, 1970, we had no permission to do it. No person got mugged in two years on Godwin Ave between Carroll Street and Arch Street. Nobody. And we were kids. God's doing a terrible job. And the police, you guys can't stop all this crime. Unless you get jobs, people need jobs. And another thing, right, during the election, I said I'm pro-black. I'm pro-black. We got to do a better job, man. And like I said, some of the black leadership, despicable, despicable. I have people who I admire for years and years and years. I'm finished with them. All talk and no war. I'm going to do that thing, uh, Mims. I'm just getting my crew together. And we're going to do what we have to do. And the government's not doing a good job. I think we got to protect our own people. And I'm going to make money to build that community center and the school. I'm going to do that. I'm from the fourth ward. Thank and you. I'm proud to be the fourth ward. And this city is in shambles. And Andre, he really, you know what? He got a damn, some damn nerve. Really. Terrible. Terrible. The Thank city you, is, is terrible. You, terrible in terrible shape. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. <laughs> Next speaker. Good evening to all. Patterson, wow. I mean, it's a shame. Y'all should all just look at everything because what you're doing to these residents, us people, it's like a slap in the face. The city is turning to shit. There's garbage all over. There's panhandlers all over. There's outsiders all over. Do you go to Fairlawn and Elmo Park and see any of this? We'll get kicked out of there. We're not allowed. So why is it allowed here? Half of their people are in here, but we're allowing them. In every exit, it's, it's a garbage trail. That's the entry to Patterson. I mean, it's a damn shame that the authorities that we have right now, you asking for a raise? We have dispatchers, they, you just heard it. I mean, we have officers that start off. I'm one of them that was going to become one, but I didn't want 12 to $13 an hour. I deserve more than that. Okay, especially to save someone's life, which is why we have the corruption that we do in the city with this rogue police department that does not know if it starts from the top or the bottom, in the middle, around, we don't know. We find lieutenants, sergeants, regulars, rookies, all of them are corrupt. The biggest corruption and, and, and um, how can I say this? The biggest corruption criminal is in there. The cover-up is bigger than the corruption, unfortunately, because there's levels. There's one detective, there's one sergeant, there's where's lieutenant. It all starts from above. And, I mean, it's just a shame. I, we come here, I've been coming here week after week after week. Everyone that comes up here 
tells you there's gunshots, kids are getting shot from left to right, you can't have no summer, you're talking about spending millions and billions on parks, who the hell's gonna take their kids to a park that's, they're at risk of getting killed? I'd rather stay home in the house with my kids and figure it out than risking coming out and not coming back with a kid. That's my, that's my fear. So I think us as a city, and then we have all these city cameras, how about them $50,000, you grab that and put it in for the safety of these people, these children, a grown man that went missing in a park where the divas play. Didn't they just go to Puerto Rico or something like that, right? I don't, I'm not worrying about that. But what I'm saying is, the bigger picture is you have to show protection and not like you're slapping us in the face with all the shit because we already see everything. You come out and you can't walk at night, you can't get to your car, you got a prostitute passing you up, somebody want a dollar, somebody want this, homeless shelters. You have nothing recreational, not even recreational for the kids. You offer recreational summer program with no AC, no water for these children, so you're dehydrating our children, they're about to pass out and faint. You won't even have any MT on site. Thank you very much. We have a motion. Move to close, second. Move to close by Councilman Villas, second by Councilman Abdulaziz. Roll call to close the public hearing on item number one. Yes, Madam President. Roll call to close the public hearing for item number one. Councilman Abdulaziz. Yeah, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, to our dispatchers um, and Madam BA, uh, even if there is an impasse or a disagreement, we should be at the table, right? And, a any negotiation, no one should be without a contract and hopefully we get back at the table. But I am gonna say something that we had a retreat on Saturday and to the people that spoke about DPW and the lowest employees, I asked a question to the DCA and I hope you guys take this because that's a public agency that's out of trend. And everyone on, in this council was in that room when I asked this question. And to, to point for DPW, the lowest employees that we said that weren't paid, everyone was in that room except one council person. I said to our monitor that we have to follow their MOU. I said, I think one thing that this administration and this council will agree, if we raise the minimum salary to $50,000. I said that, I asked her, I said, if we came and we said we all support as a body, we want to pay every single employee minimum $50,000. She said, we won't approve it. Specifically, she said, we won't approve it. She says, that's not in your MOU. So I suggest, take what you're telling us, flood the, the DCA, and ask them to grant a waiver to the city. Because I think we all agree, the lowest employees, and I'm, not, I'm just gonna speak for myself, I was in that meeting and every council person, I, I'm sorry, except two ones are sitting on this dais, and the councilman elect was in that room for this retreat, and that's the facts. That's the facts. Even if we all agreed, put the money in the budget, right? They said we won't approve it and you'll be at risk for losing $18 million. That's her exact words to me in that room. So just to say, anyone that wants these raises, call DCA, some grant a waiver for the administration for us to get that. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I believe that I'm, I'm hearing um, everyone here uh, regarding the raises and, um, and I reminded my council colleagues that we did raise uh, maybe three or four years ago um, from 25,000 to 30, we did. Um, and I know that it might not go, can go to 50, but it can go to more than, more than five. You know, I can't take 30 and go to 50, but I know we, we had discussed that. We had discussed it because I was here when we went from 25 to 30 uh, for all employees. You know, we fought hard for even the CDL license out of DPW. But I just wanna say, we hear you, I'm not, I'm not. No, no I'm saying we did that before you came on. No, that's before you came on. That's what I said. Council, wait a second. Councilwoman, no, wait a you second. know that we can't have a back no, and forth. I, wait a minute. He just, I'm saying, we know what they said in our meeting in DCA. Um, the, basically, the meeting was about to tell us as elected officials, legislators, mayors, administrators, you know, our role. But we know 
that it was done. It was done already. So I want to say, and I hear you, uh, Ms. Brittany Hunt, you know, I'm not quite sure if John Houston has that young, that baby um, that you were on the phone with that they couldn't bring back to life. That would, you know, that they couldn't because when you call 911, you expect to get someone quickly. You know, I, I, I mean, I've been waiting out here for three years, four or five years for that call center that you ladies can be, and gentlemen can see where everybody is, where the EMTs are, where the police department car is. You can see it. Those are, those are the type of stuff that you need to make sure that we can get services. But there's so many things that, that we clearly need to get done. Are we going to be able to get it done? Yes, we can. Some of the things that we can. So I have more remarks when we get ready to vote. Because as we close this public portion, we get ready to vote. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First of all, let me start by saying this, Ms. Hunt and uh, all of the members of the uh, dispatch. First, let me take my hat off to you. Let me take my hat off to you for multiple reasons, not just the job you do every day, not just the sacrifices you make, but having enough courage to come before that microphone because we all know how vindictive and, and, and revengeful things can be. But they want to try to silence you by threatening your job. We got an example of that sitting right in the front. Not one of the only highest performing employees in the last several years of the community wound up getting a pink slip to get terminated. You know, it's difficult for me because I don't come here for what most other people come here for. I, I could really care less about being elected. I've said that most all the time. I come here to make sure that my people, our people, our community, the people get treated fairly. I'm gonna stay diligent on that fight. You know, I remember uh, being a kid playing for, um, I think it was Marty Barnes. I had a teammate, a lot of you guys know, he called himself Ham now, his name was Demetrius Muhammad. Things would happen and he start crying on the field. Most people see him crying, right? And think that, oh, you know, he must be a little soft. Sure enough, he hit a home run while he crying. And I mean, I can't, I got a lump in my throat hearing some of the circumstances because I look at it as if it could easily be my family. Those people that are suffering every single day, that's our people out here. When I'm watching these young men that I look, that was so promising just two years ago as seniors in high school now selling drugs or doing whatever they're doing on our corners, and we don't even give a damn about them. We don't care about what happens in our community. For them to so callously come here and demand a $50,000 increase, more than what the average employee makes here, on top of an already six-figure salary, where they don't even have to be responsible to report their work, that's embarrassing. That's disrespectful. But you know what? It's your fault. It's all our fault. All the years watching this go on, we're letting somebody come into your event, dancing to your, singing your songs. That's disrespectful, but you let the disrespect happen. So now that it's happening, you know, so when they don't see it as you, when they don't see it as your brother could have been the, their brother easily, it doesn't matter to them. So I was in the same meeting with the DCA. It was a disrespectful, insulting meeting. They had a meeting to tell us how we're supposed to act, as if we're not astute enough to read the, the, the code of Robert's Rules of, of Order or how things are supposed to be conducted. But they're not looking at the corruption in the city. I was just on in, in the old Christopher Hope, in the Christopher Hope building. I'm watching five and seven year olds climb over nine foot walls climb over like, it's just, 
regular business, no play areas there, while the owners of these facilities are making millions of dollars and we ain't getting shit. So if people got a problem with how I conduct myself on this dais, I beg for them to make me change, because I will not. I come here for one reason every day. I put my gloves on to fight on your behalf. And this right here, I'm going all the way. Because this is an embarrassment. This is an embarrassment. When, you can, when they can tell you that you should not talk about someone's lack of credentials, when you forget go hire somebody from outside the city, when they don't have a college degree, they don't have the experience that's, that's called for, and yet they still get a job and pay double of what the person who has an engineering degree, who has the credentials, who worked for the city for 25 years, it's an insult. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. And if this isn't saying that in your face, what is it saying? So I'm not going to keep going for now. I got more, of course, but let me just get it warmed up. My vote is no, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman, Councilman Kali. We yeah, we are, we are public, closing the public, public portion. I know what we're doing. I don't need anyone else to talk talk to me about decorum and code. What I need. Shaheen. I said, let me get it warmed up. I'm entitled to vote no. In the I, closing the public portion, I, as well as anything continue. else. Councilman, I did not say anything. Some of us like to do sound bites. OK? Dispatch are, are here. Madam B.A., Corporation Council, as a councilman, as a council member, what can I do for them with this contract negotiation? Or is between administration and the dispatch union? Can, can you answer me, please? So there's nothing as a council member I can do. It's between the administration and the dispatch union, labor union. They are the one who got to get the contracts done. Please, please talk back to me. Please, Council. please, please. Council. Uh, wow. Council. Why, why you? That's, that's the fact. I cannot be on the negotiation table, give them a raise or anything. So we need to know. Councilman, don't answer that. Oh. Just, okay. Councilman, just vote. OK, so is, is the job of the administration and the dispatch union to get a contract together? Also, I hear a lot of misinformation here regarding this ordinance. We're rushing in. This has been in the conversation for three years. Please don't, please, please, I'm speaking. When, I, when, I, when you spoke, uh, no, uh, nobody said anything to you. It was your time. So I'm speaking. So let, let me speak. I, I, I'm sorry, it's one second. It, it, one, one second, I'm going to respectfully ask, the councilman has the floor. While the, the public, port, public hearing was open, no one was interrupted. Please allow the councilman to continue. In this ordinance, specifically, only two, mayor and the council members, will get the increase. But they have the option to waive it. OK? Opt out or waive it. That means they're not going to take it. Any one of us could, could opt out of it. That's one thing. All the other salary increases, 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 is a range. The administration, whoever, whatever they're making, their salary, I believe, going to stay the same unless the mayor give them a little raise. There's a range there. So there is no absolutely concrete increase there. And that, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say. And we come up with misinformation and, uh, and try to do a good sound bite. It doesn't go for me. And my vote is no. Yes. No, my vote is yes to close the public portion. Thank you. Councilman Mendez. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, before I vote to close the public portion, um, I, I just want to thank the, the first respondent, our dispatcher, for coming in front of the mic and share your experience on your day-to-day -day operation, on your job. I just want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, because a lot of members of this community don't understand the, the, the skill, the job, what you're going through in your job and the day by day. And I, I will pray that this administration pay attention to those positions 
to our DPW. I'm very often time I speak about investing in human capital. You know what that means in my, in, my, in my point of view? When I pay you the right salary, when I pay you a decent salary that with your job you could be able to put food on the table, you're gonna be able to give your children a better quality of life, a better education, and that's the conversation that we need to have in, this, in the community. The city is struggling. We have a lot of family that they have one and two jobs and they're still struggling and, um, to have a roof over their head, struggling for food. We have a serious problem in our community with the violence. I do believe that this is not the right time for this, but we, do have, we need to have a conversation about our community. This community is suffering. The high crime rate that we have, the lack of service that our residents are getting, the high taxes, and very soon, our taxpayers, they're gonna, they're gonna be hit with another 2% tax increase. Those are the conversation. Our community are struggling. We have families that are losing their property because they can't afford it to pay their taxes. And we're talking about salary range. I don't agree with salary range. Let me explain to you why. Once we say yes to this legislation, and the range is gonna be from 100 to 160,000, I have no more power. The administration could say, you know what, you're making 100, I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase it to 160,000, and I have no say. If we're gonna have, a, if we are, if we're gonna have another dialogue, we could come back with this legislation. Let's talk about another formula. But I'm very concerned with the salary range. The community spoke loud and clear. And all I want to say to all of you is thank you, because that's the way people are feeling out there. The community is suffering. They're struggling. They want safety. They want services. And that's the conversation that we should be having at this moment. But with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes to close the public portion. Thank you. Councilman, Councilman Mims. And so I'm gonna say more before I vote. And I said, um, said some things two weeks ago when I voted. What's really sad, and I thank the telecommunication workers that did come out and everyone that spoke on tonight, but I also wanna thank every employee that called me to meet with them and talk to them because they were afraid to come because they didn't know if they would have their job. And they were afraid to come to speak on their own behalf. And they said, we don't know what to do, crying. Some of them are sleeping in cars. They have no place to live. And it is just a sad situation. I wasn't in the meeting on Saturday because my daughter is getting married, and I was not in that meeting. But to hear it said that they would not increase salaries for our employees but the same entity is who this is gonna go to if it's approved for them to approve it. So how do they say we're not gonna give it to the employees, but we'll give it to this, the administrative staff and the people that are identified? I wasn't in the meeting, but I think that's, that's really, really sad. And it doesn't matter if it's five people over a thousand people. We are in a, we're in a city where there should be equity and it's, it's, there should be fairness. And what's e like what's is just alarming, and, and it's heart wrenching, because we've had probably almost 30 shootings over the last few days. Over the last few days, I'm not talking about weeks and months. Over the last few days, and I don't know if you've been on the other side of the phone with those family members calling and screaming because they don't know what's going on. They don't know who to turn to, and then they find out later that their loved one is no longer here. People that have no place to live, people whose taxes are going up, rent is through the roof. These are conversations every day, even before this was presented. So to see this before us, it, 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 really, it really hurts my heart, really, to the core really to the core to see that in the midst of employees who have worked for this city for decades, decades, they've been here way longer than any of us. And my thing is, where is the fight for those people? Where is the fight for them? Where's the advocacy for the people that we call them, where they're dumping all over the city? We promised cameras, and they're dumping in the same spots. I have to call, DPW, they're dumping again, they're dumping, who has to go? DPW. When it came to the pandemic, 
Who was right there? The nurses and all the people in the health department. 911 calls, dispatcher. We could go on and on because we talk about DPW, but it's a whole bunch of people whose salaries are very low throughout the city and the 1,400 plus employees that work here. But what's really sad to me is that these are Patterson residents that this is being done to. They live here, they're suffering through it, and the medium income in Patterson is $24,243. Did you hear that? That's the average income of people that live here, 24,000. That's less than some of the raises that's gonna happen. We are the legislative body, and we're here to approve or disapprove legislation. And like Councilman Mendez has already stated, if this is approved, that's it. You give a blank check. You give a blank check out. And at that point, there's nothing you can do until later you say, well, we, oh, we gave it, let's retract it. Well, can you count to five? Can you count to, we, we may not get there. So my job as a legislator is to make sure that I advocate on the behalf of the taxpayers, the employees who place us in this seat. And I know it's public portion, but you know why I'm gonna vote no? I'm voting no for every person that could not come to the mic because they thought they were going to lose their job. So I'm voting no to close the public portion just in proxy for all the employees, all the taxpayers that could not come to this meeting. My vote is no to close, close the public portion. Councilman Rivera. Something I have never done in four years is misinform the public. So let me give you a few facts. Just, just entertain me for a minute. I got two minutes. You guys are great. Um, so, someone mentioned 2% levy. A 2% levy is mandated by the state. Any, any, and it, not necessarily have to translate on an increase to a homeowner. If your rateables go up, if there's more construction and your rateables go up, the 2% tax levy doesn't translate into an increase to a homeowner. Now, you want to talk about increases? A lot of the increases that you have seen in the city of Patterson in the past few years are not under our control. Our, your tax bill is made up of five parts. You have school district county, two portions of it is county, you have the school district, and you also have the library tax, right? So you have to look at the whole bill. Something that we have done as a, as a council, when, I took, when we started four years ago, DPW didn't have equipment. That's what we were told. We asked why the service is not being provided. They didn't have equipment. This council here has made sure, has pushed the administration to make sure they get whatever equipment they have asked for. This is what this council, this is what's under our control. This council pushed uh, for the cops to have body cameras. This council, we pushed for it though. That's what we could do. We purchased them and we purchased them and some of them are using them. We have approved all the resources that we asked the administration that, that they, what they needed to provide the services. This is what we could do as council members. We're talking about this ordinance here. Let's get back to this ordinance. Oh, you know, now it's under our, our control. We approved the, uh, the, the administration of almost a $300 million budget. What do you think? They don't give increases to, <laughs> to whoever they want? We don't have no control over that. Once the budget is approved, now they have the legal authority to spend money without our authorization when it comes to salaries. We don't have to approve increases. We're talking about a handful of people that this conversation we had in finance, this ordinance was entertained when I was president and I never let it get to the floor. Never, so it's not something new. You could laugh all you want, some of my council colleagues, but I actually know what I'm doing, I actually know what I'm voting on. That's what, that's what I know. I could tell you for a fact that this right here, the only ones that will get an increase automatically are the mayor and council and they're able to opt out. And it is so minimal, it doesn't affect a resident at all. That's how small it is. But the same way I see people lining up here, you have all your right to lined up. I'm just, curious, I'm just curious where we have been in the past three years when we're getting double-digit increases from other agencies, from other entities. Where, where are these people that are coming here to protest of 
potential increases, because we're not voting on increases for the cabinet today. We're voting on ranges. Now, if the mayor decides to do that, DCA has to approve it also. Hold them accountable, you have a budget. With, I believe with six votes, you could reduce any item on the, on, the, on the budget. If the administration decides to give the BA an increase, let's say, of $50,000, like some are saying over here, when it's time for us to approve the budget, you could re reduce a line item. They cannot transfer money. They could only transfer money the last two months of the year. And the state law says that you cannot overspend any line item on your budget during the year. So that takes that away from them. But you know what? I just wish that my council, and I wasn't going to take this tone, my council members take some time to understand what their duties are and stop misinforming the public. Because it is sad. It is sad. Why is it that some of my colleagues have to respond when I say, I haven't said any names. If, he doesn't, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't worry about it. My vote is yes. Councilman Velez. Councilman Velez. I just want to calm the, the <laughs> dispatchers, DPW union members, health department members of any union, 19 unions that we have in the city of Paris. <clears throat> we challenge this administration the previous administration, and since I've been here since 2016, challenged that administration. To be fair and just with anything that they put on the table in negotiation. You could go on the record and look what we said every time we ask to be fair with every contract in the city. That's the only thing that we could do. Be fair. Talk to them. Madam BA could testify that I make my own calls personally to her to bring every contract that's already settled or to need, be, to need to be settled to bring it to the council to approve. But that's retroactive. We, want, we, we don't want to get more in depth. So we do our part as legislator of this city to make sure that across the board it's a fair and just process. I recommend it once to create a committee of laborers to be at least informed what was spoken or, or the conversation taken in two sides. We cannot do that because that's in an administration decision. Dispatchers, I think I'm the one that calls at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And they know me. Sometimes, listen, we understand the frustration. And Madam Clerk, just give me a, a few seconds. Madam President, please. We, we feel you. We all out the, in the same boat. But the administration has to come forward with your request. I say in the past, and my colleagues could know this, know this, if you settle for less, it's not our fault. You know what to do, Teamster. You know your bylaws. And I don't have to remind you of your bylaws. Every union has bylaws. You know what to do. I leave it like that. Last but not least, I want to clarify the record here because this ordinance has a statute, a New Jersey statute. And based on that statute, sorry, I, sometimes I bring the Puerto Rican accent. Okay? So salary, wages, or compensation fixed and determined by ordinance may, from time to time, be increased, decreased, or altered by ordinance. So the same way this is here, 
The same way this could be resent with a cause and justification to do the same. So I'm not going to debate with my colleague what he just said because a lot of things are saying here just to make noise. But the action is different. The action is different. People say, where are the people that are supposed to be doing for you guys? I will ask that question. Where is my right when they have to do the same thing? So goes back and forth. DCA tell us role has two, uh, the roles have two ways. And I think we have learned a lot this past weekend. Some people will now agree, and that agree not agreement is subject to us one day. And remind it, everyone here, one day we all going to be ending in court the way some people acted in this side. OK? And let me tell you something. One thing I got to say, you know why people here use profanity language when they come here? Don't blame them. They got their free of speech. But if we use it in this side, that's what they're going to use in the other side. So respect, deserve respect in every level. And dispatchers and union, don't be afraid. We're not, we not in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s that the law did not exist when retaliation was in front of them. Everybody look at that picture back there. So let's go back to what he said and let's put it to practice because we cannot live intimidation just because we, we just want to put intimidation out there. I dare anyone that comes to this podium, that comes to the Rights of Portion Act, that is the law, to take retaliation against anyone that comes to that podium. I'm going to say other things later on with this ordinance uh, because I'm simulating some stuff today. So my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. So everyone here has seen we are almost two hours, all right? So I don't want anyone coming back and saying all oh, the council meetings. As you can see, this closing portion was a vote yes or no to just close the public hearing. So everyone has put their statements forth. We're about 35 to 40 minutes just on this side of closing. I appreciate every person that came to the public hearing and spoke. That is your right. So there's no time limits there. I, 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 and I truly want to say this you know, to the dispatchers. I actually know some of you. I really appreciate you, Ms. Brittany Hunt, as being the spokesperson, and Mr. Petekin as well, and everyone else. Um, I can say this, my vice president, Councilman Cooley, he spoke, he said truth. We, the council, cannot do anything pertaining to your bargaining unit. What we do is at the end, once you ratify, then we vote on it. Now, I will say this to you, what we can do is we can advocate on your behalf and ask the questions, but I'm not gonna sit here right now and make it seem like I could do something for you because that is a lie. Now, I will say this to the administration as they've heard here today, I'm sure that there's not one individual on this council that does not want to make sure that you guys are given what you deserve. So I want to thank you for the work that you continue to do, and I want, you, I want to thank you for continuing to stay in Patterson. And with that said, I'm not going to say any more because there's more time, and like I said, we're in just one item. With that said, Madam Clerk, and it's two hours into the meeting. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes to close the public hearing on item number one. Thank you, Madam President. The vote is seven in favor, two against. The public hearing is now closed for item number one. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, roll call on item number one. Roll second call on reading. item number one for second reading. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So now on this item, I want to make it very, very clear to the public that's here, to the six ward residents and my constituents. This is not giving an increase to any elected official. Starting tomorrow, Al of Delzies, I can only speak on my behalf right here, will get the same exact salary that I have today. So if I don't get an extra dollar, that means I don't get an increase. That's basic. This item does not raise any elected official's salary unless they give it to themselves. Now, why, do I, why did I put that amendment in there? 
when we receive this, that means we automatically get the raises, including the mayor. Why did I put that opt-out amendment? Because the residents could hold their elected officials accountable. If the mayor wants to take the salary increase, you could vote them out in four years. If any council member wants to take the salary increase, you could vote us out. But I could sit here and let you, and to, listen, to my six ward residents, we're entitled to our own opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. And I have it right here. Any council person or mayor may elect to waive the increases. That's not Al saying rhetoric, because you're going to hear rhetoric. I'm reading to you what's in the legislation. Those are facts. And I will sit here and go public record to my residents in the sixth ward. I will not take an increase during my current term and when I get reelected in 2024. So put that on the record, and I will put that. You can use that. That's public record. I will not take the, the, the salary increase. And then I heard, then I heard when this is passed, we lose all our rights. We lose the right to control the power of the purse strings, which is not a fact. If the mayor decides to give an excessive increase and we disagree with it, we could control that department head salary line item and reduce it. We were going to do it once before when the mayor tried to give an increase, and guess what? The administration retracted. So we don't say, hey, we passed this, and they all get increases. If the mayor decides to give it, we budget time. We say, whoa, $160,000. We're going to make a motion to amend and bring it down to 130. Six votes allow you. Once again, we're entitled to our opinions, but and we're not entitled to our own facts. That's the power of the council. We learned that. I knew that before coming on the council. And the DCA, that one slide, when they put it up there, they said, what's the council function? The most important thing that the council has in its, in its power is the power of the purse strings. The money comes through this body. So, Madam Clerk, once again on the record, this is, does not give any increase to an elected official unless they choose to take it. And I want everyone in this room in 30 days, because it says here, effective 30 days after this, see who takes it. Because we heard people talk before about the AIDS, and then they all took the AIDS after a year. My vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, um, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, we've been going uh, with the increases. You know, everybody can have their own opinion of what they, what they read it. You know, we can read things differently. Now, do not think that if we pass this, that they're not going to get no raises. They're going to get a raise. There's, there's no doubt about it. And I just said, you know, you know, I have some of my residents here from the fourth ward. You know, my, my concern is I need inspectors on the weekend. I need people to, to, to you know, the people are not putting out their garbage. you got apartment buildings with 12 units. People have to live next to trash. They have to live next to rats running through. I need inspectors on the weekend. I need somebody to pay, come to you. You know, I sit home at night, and it's like I'm on vacation because I hear music all night long. You hear it. Like, you have neighborhoods, and I said, the gentleman back there about forming a neighborhood association. I said to my neighbors, we're going to have to come together, 15 of us. You got people moving in, in this city from everywhere. Everywhere. And they're bringing bad habits. They think they can play music all night long. You know, if I had a birthday party, I'd let my neighbors know. I'm having a party at my house. I know how to shut it down by 9 o'clock. It's just something is terribly wrong. And the police department, I know, is in overload. I sit next to my, my phone on the chair in my living room, I, the six next to me, because I'm getting texts half the night about noise. And dispatcher, I know you get all the calls. I know you get all the calls for, 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 for noise. And I had said before we needed to have the more quality of life. Um, cars, units out there, we, we have to because it's just not, it's just too many things happening. And I said, you know, I didn't think it was good timing. Sometimes you got to think of good timing and bad timing and all kind of timing. 
But we need to understand that um, with so much stuff that's happening and the people are really looking for the quality of life to get better. You know, I ride through the streets and, and I see streets just paved and it got sinkholes. You just got paved. How, how you got a sinkhole already? I got to jot down the addresses, jot down the area, but, it, but, it's, but it's happening. I have a senior building on Cal Street that can't get no peace. The poor seniors have to listen, and I send every other night, I'm sending car, uh, police there. And that's why I say you're in overload. You're in overload. I think that once that, you know, if we can get a better grip on what we need to do for this city, and we need a better grip, and to the dispatcher, I, you get it. I know you do. You get it before anybody else gets it. And I can hear them. They're cursing you out. They're doing everything. Because they think it's you and it's not you. And I appreciate all of you for everything that you do. But there's so much things that we need to be able to get done. Um, those are not hard stuff. Get that inspectors on the weekend. You know, we need that. We need the cars at night. We need all of that. Um, you know, people can interpret it any way they want to interpret it. They can, you can interpret this resolution any way you want to interpret it. But with that being said, and I had said before, I know, my husband used to call me Cop Cotton. Go ahead, I get out of my bed at two or three o'clock in the morning, waiting for a sergeant to show up somewhere. Cause somebody's in the backyard thinking they're having a disco party somewhere. And I have to wait there to, you know, they can't sleep. And it's about peace of mind, you know, people are aggravated right now. They're truly aggravated. And so with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is no. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm going to be as quick as possible because it, it doesn't even make any sense to labor this out. The decisions have already been made. So we, we started going through the budget approval um, last week. And there was a, a, an item there where the administration talked about specifically a tactic in which to keep the budget in balance, supposedly, right? And this line item is specifically called uh, uh, managing vacancies. So, which means, clear interpretation, intentionally keeping positions vacant to keep the budget low so they could turn around and give themselves pay increases. So when you talk about vacancies, Housing, zoning, trainee, thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. You know, these are facts that can't be denied. Dispatchers, crossing guards to keep children safe. Let's not hire a crossing guard, because God forbid if somebody's kid get hit, gets hit by a car. Police officer, thirty-three thousand dollars. We're managing vacancies. These, this is the managed vacancy list. It's pages and pages. I know it's kind of tough to see it as it's just flowing by. But we talk about council, the, the, the finance guru, right? He kept this off the, the agenda the last go round and acknowledges that this council has been very generous. It has given the administration all of the tools, that word is used frequently, that what it should need. The money for equipment for DPW, the money for body cameras, the money for, in fact, that wasn't this council, that was the former chief because on his way out, he signed off on the forfeiture funds against this mayor's opinion. And we teamed up along with that chief to make sure we purchased those body cameras. It took him then three years to put them in play, to put them in motion. We had a young man murdered on North Main Street with officers that were there with no body camera on. Obviously the training was in deficit because you got an officer who's been on the job for six days and he wasn't trained that he can't turn his body camera or shouldn't turn his body camera off, or whatever the, the specifics are. So when you talk about us giving them everything they needed, if we gave them as a council all the funds that they need to get all the equipment they need and they're still failing horribly, why would we allow them to give themselves raises? Where's the performance evaluations? It's one of the things they talked about in coming forward 
when this administration started, there has not been one performance evaluation, not of employees or not of administrative staff as well. Why are we giving pay increases without uh, adequate, appropriate information to support the necessity of these pay increases? So I want to talk about a couple more facts on how things are done with political intent. Yes, why is it getting rushed? Oh, because it's going to be a change in, you know, the, 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 the pieces on the board are going to be changed. So some people held out because they're trying to get certain things, but when now that they have been in privy to a $50,000 increases or getting certain things done in the community for specific areas for, for their, you know, gratification. So I, I, you know, I'm willing to support that now on the way out. This is disgraceful. This is disgraceful. We should not, you should not be taking a pay increase. I would refuse to take money if I failed you at doing the job. I own a business for 21 years. If you came and you ate in my restaurant and you were dissatisfied with your food, your service, I would not charge you for the services that I failed to provide. And I would hope you would come back again so I could try my best to do a better job the next time around. This right here is, is, is embarrassing, so it makes no, no point to, to labor it out. Madam Clerk, my vote is no. Thank you. Councilman Kelly? Th th thank you, Madam Clerk. All the explanation about this ordinance has been given already by my council colleague. And I think it's the right thing to do. And my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. I think that um, we should definitely, um, maybe tomorrow, we should go back into the tape and, and just listen to the concern of the people that came into the mic, the concern and the cry of the community. When we go out there, people, they cry for service. They cry for police protection, police presence, police response. That's what we pay for as a taxpayer in the city of Patterson. That's what we pay for. I think that everybody know how I feel about this legislation. I think that in my concern is that once we vote on this, we're giving the power to the administration to decide where we're going to put this range. If, if, that, if this will be on my decision, the governing body in a week is going to change. We're going to have new council president, another elected uh, councilman, council members in this body. A and it will, be, it will be ideally to have a m very sensitive discussion and add more suggestion. Personally, myself, I'm extremely concerned about this range because after that, you have no power. It's going to be between the administration and the DCA. And let me just share the DCA position. On the last meeting, I recommend the manager from DCA to come into the council, to come into the workshop, to have a conversation with the people, with the resident of the city of Patterson, with this governing body. Why? At that meeting last Saturday, we were talking about a rebate for our taxpayer. How can we put together a rebate program? So the state senate budget committee, they submit the budget at the state, $50.6 billion. They, they include $24 billion in additional fund, federal fund, COVID money. And on that, they have $2 billion for rebate to homeowners. Now the state, they take all those decisions, but when it comes to us, they make it so difficult. And I hope that I, that I hope to see the manager of the DCA here on, on this council in one of the workshop for us to have a, a conversation as a community because we got to find a way to make sure that our people stay in their home we got to make sure we got to protect the tax taxpayer and we got to protect the people that live in the city by making their life better so with that being said my vote is no madam clerk thank you councilman mims and so a lot has been stated and i'm not going to belabor the point i'm just going to state what's what's going to happen we're the legislative body. This is coming before us on tonight to vote for some increase and for others ranges. That's what's before us. But once, if it gets approved, it's a blank check to the administration that they can go straight to the top of the range and we have nothing to do about it unless when the budget comes before us, we need six people to take it out. Six to take it out. That's a fact. It was stated here. 
Tonight, you heard it for yourself. I just wanted someone else to say it, so I'm reiterating what was stated. That's what's gonna happen. For me, it's not about whether someone is doing their job. That, that's, it's not it. When you see the medium income range in the city of Patterson of what our residents are making, when you see the highest unemployment rate for our city, when you see all the situations going on with shootings every single night, the other night, five people were shot. In one instance, last, was it last night or the night before, two people shot, someone else killed. I mean, the stories are on. I'm sitting in my house and I'm thinking it's fireworks and right around the corner from me, two guys were laid out on the ground, they were shot. This is what's happening. In our community, it's really a sad situation. That's why you don't hear me. I don't have to attack another council member when I'm voting. I'm stating what's, what the facts are. It's not about, oh, well, if you get four more years, don't bring me back. I, for me, I, I ran for office to help our community, in which I've been born and raised. I've lived here all my life. When I call, when things are going on, and the employees answer the call, they respond. So when I'm sitting here, I have to make sure I'm advocating for the same people that I call all day, all night. That's why Ms. Francis calls me Mighty Mouse. Because when people are calling, you're, you're running and you're out and about trying to get these things done, and sometimes it's repetitious. And so for me, it's not about, and I'm gonna be here, to, I'm gonna be here next week, I'm gonna be here the week after, I'm gonna be here because thank, thankful to the community, you just reelected me. And I'm gonna be here. It's not about a salary because what's here is automatic that everybody will get an increase. Then you can opt out if you don't want it. Like, I mean, come on, if that was the case, we should have did that not just for the council or the mayor, we should have did it for the ranges. We should have amended this ordinance and said, if they go to the top range, it will not be approved. That could have been a part of this, a part of this document on tonight. Then we would have saw that it wasn't just for what is being presented. But I'm gonna say this again. And um, camera, please zoom in. <laughs> After this vote, I want you to watch the budget. Because I'm gonna tell you in advance, it's gonna be there. And I want you to remember, because anything can be said on tonight and we can say it all day, well, it's not what we did. We did it first. Because when we vote on this, we started the process of the blank check. And so we, me as a legislator, I'm speaking for myself, and good conscience of every family member who, who has been a victim of these senseless shootings and violence, as someone who reaches out to the employees every single day for all types of issues and concerns, and as a, a your council person who hears the cries of the increases. Just on last week, we had an introduced budget, which we council took it woman, back. Can you please wrap up? I will in a minute. I'm the only person you said something to, but I'll No, I'll actually, be done I said soon. the same thing to Councilwoman Cohen. No, she, she spoke, thing. but I'll, I'll be done shortly. I'll be done shortly. And um, the ranges, which may change, but they went from 300 and something dollars extra a month to almost a thousand. Now was it all the city? No, it included school tax and so many others. But guess what, some people can't afford 25 more dollars. They can not afford five more dollars. Because I've spoke to employees that are sleeping in their cars. They don't have a place to live, but they get up every morning, go in our city's bathroom and wash themselves up and go and be about the city's business every single day. Every day. And, and, and let me say this in closing. People are afraid to come because when I said it, they were texting me. They're afraid to come. So don't be fooled by someone that will say, oh, they're not afraid to come. Yes, they are. I can show you my phone. When I made this statement, my phone is like the Christmas tree. They said, Mims, thank you because you're absolutely correct. That's why they're not here in person because they were in fear of retaliation. And it should never be that way when employees or anyone wants to fight for their rights. Because our city, our residents, and everyone, we deserve better. 
And what my vote is, I'm gonna stand by my vote. My vote is for the employees, it's for the residents, it's for the taxpayers, it's for every victim that has in encountered anything in this city that could have been prevented. My vote is absolutely no. Thank you. Councilman Rivera. So, so th this is what's interesting. Let's watch the budget after this vote. So we approved 300 million, approximately a $300 million a year. The mayor creates positions left and right. I am part of a personnel committee that we created not long ago because of the nonsense that we saw going on. But I remember watching these council meetings from that end, how a previous mayor was crucified for having one chief of staff. And this mayor, when you approve, or, or any mayor in the future, when you approve a $300 million budget, you give him the authorization to use that $300 million budget. We're talking about an ordinance, talking about micromanaging. You have, he has 1,400, approximately 1,400 employees of whom he could give increases to justifiably anytime he wants, not on job performance. If they have additional duties, they get an increase. There was an instance that in personnel, yeah. there was a gentleman that got like a $35,000 increase and I was fighting like crazy. I didn't see too many people here join that fight. So we're making, we're making something, yes, could he increase a department head salary to retain the employee? Yes, but he was here last week. Now remember, if the mayor's smart, He'll be careful how he utilizes this because he could mess up the relationship between himself and the council. This is not the last thing that's gonna be proposed before the council, right? Before the council. We ask him here, Mayor, that doesn't mean that you're gonna go and give everybody a max, no. Or, or give everyone on this list an increase, no. He cannot. And if he does so, then I hope, I'm not gonna be on this end, but if I was, I'll make sure that I make him pay for it by not supporting a lot of his things because this is an insult, and once again, the mindset of some of our colleagues is, we have a $300 million budget. If you understand the law, once you approve that $300 million budget, the mayor has the authority to spend those dollars. The mayor in any city of the state of New Jersey or county, once the governing body approves a budget, he has the authority to spend those funds for the purpose intended. You have two lines in the budget for every department, salary and other expenses. It doesn't specify the position or who the salary is tied to. It just has one big lump sum and that's how it works. So once again, I am glad that in the last four years I didn't misinform the public. I took responsibility for my action and uh, my vote is yes. Councilman Velez. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Last week, Saturday, we was in front of a DCA, five individual from DCA, high ranking from DCA, and our fiscal monitor. We asked a lot of questions pertaining not only this, pertaining other things that are important for the community. They are the fiscal monitor. You know what they tell us? We the one that give you 18 million plus in TRA, and $50 million in aid to the city of Patterson. So we monitor you guys. We need to put the house in order. In other words, it's telling us that doing this ordinance is putting the house in order. Before this ordinance came to us, it was vetted through DCA. DCA made the recommendation what you see here. We didn't put these numbers. The mayor did not put those numbers. May I, please? The mayor did not put those numbers. The, the DCA saw the numbers and say, you need to put order in that ordinance. Blank check. Keep, keep President, speaking, keep speaking, Councilman. Blank check is if we leave the ordinance the way it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Board of Education raised their taxes year 
year after year, up to this year, raising taxes, the articles on those taxes raised was increasing salaries to their top employees. No one says nothing. Nobody say nothing. There was an employee from the city of Patterson sitting in that chair over there that left here to get three figures in the board of ed. Nobody say nothing. There's people in this administration that live in Patterson, Madam, Madam, um, cons, um, you, do not, you, you, they you, are. You, please you have the floor. Well, well, you are addressing me. I, I did not address No, 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 let's not start. Councilman so, Lewis Velas, you have the floor. Thank you, and I want to be respectful because I don't want people saying out there that I'm disrespectful to females, but this is what DCA said. This is what DCA said in that meeting, and I wish everybody was there. We could agree or disagree, but when we're in this side, we need to do what we had to do, is let's lay. We need to move the city forward. And we put in order where order is deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, I still gotta run in 2024, and I know my residents love the boots on the ground that Councilman Velez bring to the table. So I'm proud to vote yes in this ordinance. Thank Madam, you very Madam much. Madam President. Okay. So there's been a lot of statements made, all respectful. Each one, uh, each council member here is elected by the people of Patterson. In the at large, the top three voters, uh, top vote getters get in. All right. I want to thank the community for giving me and allowing me, and I thank God for a third term as your councilwoman at large. So I'm going to speak about facts. Okay. That salary, and I'm actually going to correct our, 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 our uh, chair of finance because this does not come to the council uh, to finance while he was president. I'm going to tell you when this came. When the previous corporation council, not the one now, not the one previous, but the previous. So the one that was here when the mayor took his seat. Within less than a year, it was bought to finance, and I was the council president, and we said, as a committee, because it was not me, it was a full committee, we said, absolutely not, we will not entertain that. It was kicked around the following year. We said, absolutely not, we need to measure. Then guess what? Pandemic, okay? And we were like, absolutely not. At that point, it did halt. I won't lie to you. And then it came back to us a few months ago and we said we are in the middle of election and we don't know who the mayor is gonna be. We will allow at that time, doesn't matter who, I said, and we will visit this. And you know what I did? Members of the community, I didn't take their, the, the ordinance and say yes. I made my phone calls. I sit down with DCA monthly and I took it all the way to the lieutenant governor and this is on record, and anyone can call her office and say, did you have a conversation in a meeting with council president? Did you discuss that salary ordinance? Did you agree to that? Because Director Suarez is over DCA, and the fiscal monitor, Michelle Mead, reports to her, but she, Director Suarez, who was with us on Saturday, along with the fiscal monitor, reports to the lieutenant governor. And you know what the lieutenant governor said to me? I don't agree with some of these, uh, uh, these increases. Meaning, listen to me, this, this is a salary ordinance with ranges. The increases, because at the time, the mayor's uh, uh, a salary was a different salary, and the council salary was a different salary. And the argument was, we said, well, because I'll keep it real, in finance we discussed it, the council has not had an increase in over 10 years, we are now a class A city, we have over 180,000 residents, we have so much more going on, this is a 24 seven job, I don't care what anyone says on this council on this side, this is not a part time job. Everyone here, you've heard, they get calls at all wee hours, and they're doing all types of jobs, jobs that we, okay, as a council, when you heard it correctly, you, we, the eight of us were there, Councilwoman was not there because she had a prior commitment that she put on record prior to us having uh, uh, the meeting, okay? But we all, and I just lost my train of thought, but I want to bring it back to this. 
The conversations were had. Okay, I'm sorry? Yeah, no, 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 I know. The conversations were had. This was not of just, okay, now the, 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 the mayor, oh, I like him, I don't like him. And that's one of the things the lieutenant governor said. You can't have a range for a mayor. Oh, because I like this mayor, he got elected, he gets this amount. But this one I didn't like, but he got elected. It doesn't work that way. In terms of the council, I bring it back to that, that's what I was saying, is that that is the way the, rain, the, the, the salary came to the number. So somebody said here, you know, I, 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 the council only 6,000 some change, right? And then you have the others. Everyone keeps using 50,000. And I don't know who's getting that number. The ranges are that yes, it could be a potential, but I'm almost sure, because if there's one thing that I said is these ranges were based on transitional aid cities, these ranges were, when you look at Jersey City and Newark, when you look at the different positions, BA, Corporation Council, and I don't, wanna, I, don't, I don't want to make this about the individuals, but there's individuals that are sitting there that yes, that those are their titles. And I wanna say to you all, I respect the work that you're doing in this city. Madam BA, you and I have had many confrontations, but you know what I do respect is that now four years later, I can actually say, and to Corporation Council, who has only been with us for a year, and Mr. CFO, which is another that I go back and forth with, at the end of the day, it's about coming to the middle. So I'm speaking with facts. You don't believe me? Contact the Lieutenant uh, Governor's office, and you're gonna see that I did my due diligence. And with that said, nobody's pushing my buttons. This is not about the mayor, okay? I believe that right now, where we are, we should support a salary ordinance. And with that said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is five in favor, four against. Item number one is hereby adopted on second reading. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. So at this time, um, I, there's various people here are waiting on, on items, so I'm gonna take those because I see here that they've been here for almost three hours as they got here at 6.30. So I'm going to, um, I, I'm actually gonna take the consent item, removing item 11. So let's do the consent item first. Yes, Madam President. Consent agenda. Yes. Next item in the agenda is our consent agenda items. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the council and will be enacted by one motion. The items listed on the consent agenda are numbers 5 through 22. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda 11. by the request of any council member and if so removed, it will be treated as a separate matter. Is there a motion? Can I have a motion? Uh, very, okay. Items five through 22 moved by Councilwoman Cotton, removing item 11, and second by Councilman Kalik. Before, before Madam Clerk, you call the roll call, just so you know, item 11 was moved, uh, Councilwoman Cotton, item 11 was removed because there was some substantial changes, name changes, and there was a few things, so it needed to be removed so it can come back, okay? Okay, roll call, Madam Clerk, on items five through 22, uh, exception number 11. Yes, Madam President. Roll call on items five through 22, with the exception of item number 11 on the consent agenda. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? So, <clears throat> before I vote on this consent agenda, uh, Council President, let me point out a few um, facts on that item. One, I'm not even sure how that made it to the agenda. The reason it's being pulled is because it was a big screw up. It, this, is a, this, is, this is an action to transfer the license, the ownership, while the license still had not been re renewed. And it had not been renewed because we had not entertained it because of all the illegal activity that was going on over there with them breaking the law, which is also uh, the same location that, that had been, um, the person had been accused and convicted of selling um, uh, used parts as new parts. There's mm -hmm. a lot of illegal activity, and I want to make sure I, I don't scarf over that because that, that, that location needs to be addressed. I've been reporting it over and over to the administration. There's been zero enforcement. They're open 24 hours a day, Sundays. They did illegal construction over there. They, were, they, they, they got a, a letter of cease and desist from the zoning Department, but the building subcode div division didn't issue any fines. I mean, this is just 
you know, again, business as usual, just like the, the new furniture store across the street from Blimpy's that opened is putting all that stuff on the sidewalk that's connected to the one across the street from here, you know, it's, when is enough gonna be enough? When are we gonna start enforcing the laws and making and holding people accountable? I, I wanna thank anyway, you for that, uh, Councilman Jackson. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Khalid. Yes. Councilman Mendez. My vote is yes on the consent agenda, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims. Yes. Um, Madam President. Yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Items five through 22, with the exception of item number 11, is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Item 36, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next item is item number 36. And item number 36 reads, resolution addressing an entertainment slash show license renewal for Custom Bar Restaurant and Lounge located at 710-712 Madison Avenue in the Fifth Ward, Finance Resolution 22411. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by uh, Councilman Mendez, second by Councilman Kalik and Councilwoman Mims. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 36 for approval. Roll call on item number 36 for approval. Councilwoman Tom. Uh, let me ask a question. Is he, is, are they open? No. no. Oh, oh, what do I need an anniversary? They've been, they've been closed for over a year. I know. So, so they're opening, so, but they're re they still have to renew their license. Oh, even they, if it's been expired. Operating? Even if they're not operating, they still? No, they're gonna open, but they can't open without okay. having their renewal. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, because I know it's been closed. Over yep. a year. Okay, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Mendez. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to add that it's a great uh, pleasure for me to see this uh, establishment renovated. They're making a big investment, and it's going to be a great att attraction uh, for a resident to visit this great restaurant. So, and I'm very happy. I can't wait to see this restaurant open and creating job, because that's what they've been doing, creating job and opportunity for Patasonia. So my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Mims? Yes. So let me say this, uh, this, one, this restaurant was closed due to the pandemic. It was one that was affected financially uh, through the pandemic. It was closed, and that's what the, uh, the aftermath of uh, COVID-19. Now, Bocarito Bistro is a chain, a chain that comes from New York to invest in Patterson. That's what we want, people to come invest in Patterson, and everyone, everyone is welcome to have nice bocadito <laughs> and menu in the fifth ward of the city of Patterson. <laughs> My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Rivera. Councilman Rivera. <laughs> um, good luck, and my vote is yes. Thank you. Madam President. So as all of you know, and my colleagues know, especially in finance, that when any entertainment, bizarre licenses, whatever it is, I always question. And Councilwoman Cotton, to what your question was, that's the first thing I said, hold up. You know, I've seen this, I actually, because of the name, I didn't realize that it was the same. So it's Costan, but also known as, it's going to be now known as Bocaditos, Bistro. And, um, so the first thing right away, I wanted to know when they closed down, you know, what was going on, and in terms, they went through a whole process, and I wanna thank the uh, fire department, the fire chief, I know the inspectors went out, they have their CCOs, I mean, they basically kept it as a restaurant, just a different uh, style. And I do appreciate when individuals that are, because they employ Patersonians, so I know that some are Patersonians and some of, half of the owners are, are, are uh, in, in New York and own other businesses as well. Um, I, on a, on a personal, I'm just going to say, you know, um, I actually didn't realize, but the owners of Mama Sushi in Paseca are actually the same owners of, of um, Bocaditos. Bocaditos. And, and with that, you know, 
I, I, I see the way that their business is conducted in Passaic as now I'm working in the city of Passaic, still for the college, but in Passaic. And um, I figured that I would do my due diligence. And with that said, you know, I appreciate and I know that this is something that they do have to renew if they want to open. Because, you know, who's going to open up and do a grand opening, right? And you can't have no music. So with that said, what I am going to ask, as I see the owners here, very respectfully, respect your neighborhood, all right? The neighborhood, there, there, there's not a lot of houses in the area because in the front there's no one, but some in the, in the back, I'm gonna please appreciate to abide by our ordinances. If you confront or see any situations, please make sure that you have enough security, close on time, make sure that you're IDing individuals. I want your success, okay? Your business success, the, the individuals that you employ, if you're successful, we're successful. Successful. With that said, Madam Clerk, my vote is ye yes on item 36 for approval. Thank you. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 36 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, uh, they can visit tomorrow the licensing department? Yes. Okay. You'll get a phone call. Yeah, they'll okay? give them a call. Okay, Madam Clerk, at this time I want to also take now item, I see Councilman McCoy here, I see the f chief here, so let us. Move on to take item, oh God, I just lost it. Item 29. Please read item 29 into the record. Yes, Madam President. Next item is item number 29. Resolution on the Patterson Code Chapter 129, Bazaar, addressing a license for Bill McCoy Foundation to conduct a festival. Finance Resolution 22404. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez and second by Councilwoman Mims. Um, Do you have a discussion? Yes, Madam Clerk, uh, uh, Madam President. Discussion by Councilman, um, oh my God, Mendez. Sure, okay. you, just, you just mentioned that, uh, I see the director special here. The mm, chief the, is and the here chief who signed is, off. The, and mm -hmm. the chief is here. Um, I have a concern with this application based on the amount of people that is an application. Um, the application say that there's gonna be uh, 1,500 people, 1,500 attending to the event, and they only requesting five police officers from 6 to 10 p.m. So director. Councilman Mendez, if I may, please. Where is Corporation Council? Okay, it, it is, is my understanding, um, and yes, but I, I need, because I wanna make sure that, you know, on this side, of, we protect the council. And that uh, and let, let me just you, are unable, you are not able to sure. have a discussion. Let you need to recuse yourself from this item as you have put on record that you have a concern with this and you have other pending uh, a litigation. So I would, I would just be very careful. Sure, Madam, there, and our can, parliamentary is here. Should the councilman recuse and not have any conversation yes, pertaining to this Indeed. application? Madam Clerk, I would ask that just to put it on record I'm You're a parliamentarian. I, I You're the know, one that I'm when, when I need to recuse myself, yes. you say, Councilwoman, Council President, you need to recuse yourself. So yes, I'm asking. Corporation Council, I think, wants to. If you have a situation with the applicant or any situation, Council you President, have to recuse yourself. May I? Corporation Council. Thank you, Council President, for the opportunity to address this issue. Uh, if I may, I respectfully request an opportunity to speak with the Councilman of the Third Ward um, individually about a, a possible issue. Um, once I have that conversation with him, he's free to make the decision that he thinks is in uh, his best interest. Yes, Corporation Council, and I, and I just want to be, for my concern, uh, Director, I want to recuse myself. Uh, I have a personal situation with this applicant, so I'm not, I'm re always recusing myself and not voting on. Um, so, but I just put my concern on the record when it was about the safety of the event and the amount of police officers. So I'll step out. So, but that's my concern. If you want to have the discussion, and I, I just want to make sure that we cover this section in terms of safety of this event. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Mendez. So I am going to, um, on that note concerning, and I'm just gonna just, no mentioning of names, but concern on bizarre licenses and, and security. And, you know, we just had an application here. An application here that this council said to me, and it was incomplete, and the application, and I knew because the year before they came before us, and I knew that the amount of people, and that application only said 200 people, and only four officers signed, only four off-duty officers. That event this weekend had 1,000 people, 
and had members there and even the mayor there. And you know what I did? I said, because I don't ever want anyone to think that it is personal, I left it alone. You got the chief here, you got the director here that can say if I made any phone calls, the only thing that I said is we must be fair. Let us stop being hypocritical. When certain individuals come, we vote yes on one thing, no on the other, because I don't like you, but I like you. Stop it. All right, across the board, this council decided that they wanted to keep that other entity's application, even incomplete, and you know that it's true, Councilwoman Cotton, and that application was complete the day of, and I said, as the council president, I requested the information. Where, did it, where was it? It was handed to me right here, it's on TV. I reviewed it, I looked at it, I said, I still have a problem, and I even said to the chief here, I said, I want to shut down if there's more than 200 people. It wasn't shut down. So you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. I've put it on the floor. I don't think we need to have any more discussion. This application has been vetted. It went through the entire process. Every checklist is checked off. Every contract is there. The chief of police is here who signed off on it. And there's a letter to say that they've complied. The director of the uh, 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 public safety is here as well. So with that said, council members, I don't know if anyone has anything else to say. Council I'd President. like to take it to a roll call. Council President. Councilman Jackson. I would like the chief and the director an opportunity to answer because I've known when I'm sorry, I answer I, what? Like, which part? With regard to the number of, of, of participants, you know, when I when I have okay. a, a block party at my establishment, I was I was required director and chief. to have mm -hmm. a, a, a certain number of officers, and it was based okay. on the number of participants. So if we're gonna restore any kind of order. I mean, it has to be, we can't pick and choose who can. I mean, it has to be a set uh, 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 ratio or a set practice that we're gonna utilize. Okay, so, 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 so Councilman Jackson, I, and you have the right to ask that question, all right? I did ask that question already, but you're right, they should put it on record, right? But I'm gonna say this, where was everybody on Saturday when there was over a thousand people, okay? Well, Council it, President, it's not about it being calm. That's again, not. No, no, no. I'm just saying because nobody questioned the ratio. I'm talking right now about the police contract and the amount of people. No one. Am I saying that this group is disruptive than the other? One? It is not about that. It's about process. We're talking right now, so Chief, I need you. Where is it? Is there a code? Is there a statute? What? Where does it say that you need an officer for every 50 people? What, where's that rule? Where is it written? That does not exist. Can you please close? Please, please. It's too loud outside. That ratio does not exist. Okay. All right. Now, would you like me to say a few words about uh, this actual contract between the police and the... Absolutely. I want okay. you to put it on record. We're getting ready to vote. Okay. I received the contract from my extra duty assignment officer, and I read it over. And uh, initially it was for four officers. So I called the Honorable Bill McCoy, retired councilman. And we had a conversation and I expressed my concern that maybe it's a little, maybe it's a little light, you know, um, what do you think? We went back and forth. He brought a lot of excellent points up. First of all, it's a family event, okay? The type of music that's played is not the type of music you would typically dance to. It's reggae, it's R&B, it's jazz. Again, it's a family event. It's not indoors, it's outside. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an event such as um, uh, a, game, uh, a, sports, a sports rivalry where, you could, where there's a propensity for violence. It's not certain events that where there is a propensity for violence. It has a history of being uh, an event that has, that has almost no problems. Now, it was originally for four officers. I spoke to the, uh, to the retired councilman, and we agreed to make it five officers. In addition, the councilman agreed Officers, to please close the door. Please continue. And the councilman also agreed to bring in count, uh, uh, constables. He will have four constables. And being the, the type of event it is, I saw an opportunity for our community policing uh, 
uh, division to get involved, and they will be there as well to help build bridges between the community and the police. And so I would say we would ha will have at least about, I'd say approximately 14 officers, and if we need more, I'll send more, and I, I stand by my decision. Okay, very well. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, roll call on item 26. 29. Roll call on item number 29 for approval. I'm Councilman sorry, 29. Abdelaziz. Councilman Abdelaziz. 29, 29 I'm sorry. Yes. Councilwoman Tan? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? You know, I have attended this event a lot in the past years. They even have a gospel fest, I believe is the last day. So we have fun and we could enjoy it too this year. My word is yes. Madam President. I've had the pleasure to <laughs> go and attend quite an amount of years uh, attending this, this event. Uh, and I've been part of the Sunday Gospel, Saturdays in the afternoon. It's been a family event. They bring, you know, young artists. Uh, and I really do uh, enjoy. Uh, I always go for my festival. I always ask uh, Mrs. McCoy, where's the best festival being made? She directs me, a jerk chicken. But on a serious note, listen, I'm all about different communities, celebrating, and um, to my knowledge, and again, chief and director here, we have never had an incident. Um, it is unfortunate that there is, or had, there was a, a, a incident that was not elevated to anything but a, a confrontation. Um, but with that said, I cannot stop, and I gotta, again, keep it fair. And you know, with that said, you know, I am looking forward, hopefully I'll be here, because the plan was to be in Puerto Rico that weekend. Um, but with that said, I may have to change those plans. Uh, so with that said, uh, my vote is yes to support item 29. Thank, Thank you. you. The vote is six in favor. The vote is six in favor, two absent, and let the record reflect that Councilman Mendez has recused himself from item number 29. Therefore, item, item number 29 is hereby adopted. M much love. Thank you very much. Councilman McCoy, would you like to say, just quickly, not, not three minutes, maybe one? Because I know you signed up, but I know it's, it's a late yes, day. I did, and, and thank you, um, honorable council members. Uh, this is an event that I'm extremely proud of, uh, that my family has, has supported, and the community has supported, and has enjoyed uh, for many years. I know that council members have attended, and I was a little bit dismayed, having served on the honorable council for some time, to see that the item was initially removed from the agenda. But I want to thank you for restoring our faith in our city government, that fair is fair, and that we will treat everyone as equal. Uh, we look forward to a great event. And every single one of you are, are invited to be a, to in attendance. Um, it's a great event. If you want to start trouble, you want to create a problem, you can stay home. But everybody that wants to come out, enjoy the music, enjoy the family event, you're absolutely welcome. It's free to everyone. You can stay there two days and don't have to pay a penny. The only thing we ask is to support our vendors in, in buying some food, and that will be great. We're also having our uh, Independence Gala on July 23rd. We're going to be at the Leneves. And so we have an invitation for you as well. And we, we encourage you to come on out and to celebrate with us. Jamaica is a great event, but the greatest countries in the world is where I live the United States. And as an American citizen, I'm proud to support the Constitution that allow us to be fair and equitable. We're not a fascist state. We don't allow our elected officials to control our police and tell the police who to arrest and who not to arrest. So I'm glad tonight that to see that our faith has been restored. And I thank you for your kind consideration and for your vote. God bless and have a great night. Thank you very much.
Okay, and you know, with that said, I believe that we've taken care of all the licenses. So I'd like at this time to open up the public portion. We still got more business, but it's almost 10, so I wanna go ahead and open up the public portion. Huh? No, no, we gotta do public portion, I'm sorry. Hold on, no, Barbara's here? Where? Right. Well, Barbara, what's your item? Hold on, hold on one second. 10, 28? It's just a one item? I'm sorry. Let's just hold on one sec. Let me just take this director. She's been here since 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, director, Madam Clerk, we're going to take item 28 before the public portion. Okay, Madam President. Number 28. Thank you, Councilwoman Cotton. <laughs> Next item is item number 28, and item number 28 reads resolution returning home investment partnership program funds from fiscal year 2015, 2016, and 2017 awarded to RPM Development Group for the Hinchliffe Residential Project. Community Development Resolution 22403. So moved. Moved by Councilman Velas. Do I have a second? Discussion? Oh, you need a second. Let me okay, second, second by Councilwoman Cotton. Discussion by Councilwoman Cotton. Yeah. Uh, my only question, um, Director. Can you turn on your microphone? Yeah. My only question, Director. Uh, on this resolution, it's saying 2016, so seven. No, no, 20. Um, 15. Oh, 15, goodness. 16. 15, 16, 17. Yes. Now, what about 18, 19? No, these were the funds that we reallocated from. The uh, I can't hear you. These were the funds that we took from the Okay, we're going to have to close right. the door, please. I'm saying, are you including 18 and 19? No, I'm not. It's not included in no, this. I'm sorry. But when, you, when I read yes. this resolution. It is 18 and 19, yes. Huh? It is 18 and 19. We're replacing. Councilwoman, she's saying yes, that it is 18 and 19. We're replacing 15, 16, and 17 with we're 18 what? and 19. So we're, so we're taking 15 and 16 and 17 off? No. What are we doing with those years? 15, 16, and 17 belong to the housing authority. Right. HUD would not allow me to move them to the Hinchcliffe Stadium. So right. So we're just putting them back to the housing authority and giving Hinchcliffe Stadium 18 and 19. So do the housing authority still have some, are they still going to continue to get them? They're, they're supposed to be still continuing the veterans housing. No, wait a second, Barbara. When I read this resolution, it looked like it's five years. That, that you're giving, you, you got five years, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Yes. How many years, how many years is the Housing Authority um, is going to keep for veteran housing? 15, 16, and 17. They're going to keep that? Yes. But when you read it, it don't, it, it, it don't sound like that. Well, if you look at the next whereas. Which at, on uh, uh, 27? Yes. No, 20. Um, the one after the budget for 15, 16, and 17, we right. reallocated and gave the Hinchcliffe 18 and 19. Yeah, but I'm not even on the uh, uh, community development uh, committee. Uh, no, let me, don't, don't, I don't need your help out. I know, but when you read it, it says 2016, 17, 15, 16, 17, they awarded to. Yeah, they tried keeping that for Hinchcliffe. And they tried. They're taking that back because they said no, because that's a veteran's project. And it had already been approved by the council. No, we've been, we've been approved that veterans right. project. Right. Al, be quiet, Al. I'm saying we have been approved that veteran housing. I mean, I need veteran housing. We, and this city need veteran housing. As a matter of fact, we got one veteran housing building in our city. We're still building. And that's Park Place We're over there. We're still building the veteran housing. HUD would not allow me to use the old funds for the new project. Right. Put it back. Okay. Let them continue to do the veteran housing and give the new project, Hinchcliffe, the money that you have available, which is 18 and 19. Right. Okay, right. so we're putting it back. Well, right. let me ask you something, Barbara, Director. I'm sorry. Um, are you trying to help the housing authority with the veteran housing? I, yes, we provided them with $1.5 Right, and we're waiting for that. Yes. Well, the veteran housing community out there, that the veteran housing that they want to build is, will be in the fourth ward. Veteran housing... It's probably been going on four years now. Longer than that. And, right. About five years because they're trying to wait for money from the New Jersey Mortgage Company. They're trying to wait for more money. Well, you actually need more money. You can't build housing for less than $20 million. So you actually need more money, so you need that. So I just want to make sure that you would not take it, no. the money for veteran housing no, out of that. No. 
Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Sorry, Council President. Okay, uh, Councilman Jackson. So, um, Director, uh, how much exactly are we retracting back from um, those three, the three previous years? Nine hundred and fourteen thousand four fifty one and sixty four cents. So slightly under a million dollars. How much are we going to be returning back into the pro into the program with the following two years? I'm not understanding your question. So you're retracting the the previous three years. Yes. That HUD that. You, your department, the BA, the mayor, and this council voted in approval for it. But, the, but HUD said no. Chastised us once again for poor decision making. Was there a. It's not uh, poor decision making. They wanted there, to make sure we did not lose funding. Was, but because the Housing Authority had already started the groundbreaking on this project, I couldn't move it. Was there a consultant involved in the decision process? Yes. To give the, so are we getting any money back for this poor decision made by this consultant? No. No. Now, so the question I had, um, that I, I'm trying to understand which portion did you not understand? Slightly under a million dollars is being returned for the, pre for the previous three years that was disallowed by HUD. Then you said this, we will, we will be giving the next two years to the pro to the project, correct? No. The funds for the 914000 was already given to the Housing Authority. We asked HUD to allow us to take the older funds to fund a new project because the Housing Authority was still trying to figure out how they're going to get the rest of their funding. Right. HUD said that was a good idea, but by the time we got finished doing all of the council and the consultants and Housing Authorities going back and forth, they said no. Take what you have for your new project, which is your, still your 18 and 19, and fund them, which that's what we want to do. And the I Housing Authority what, will continue. I, I, I just asked you, you, I said that was the two years, 18 yes, and 19. 18 and 19. And I asked a very simple question, what is that amount? $914,000. It's identical to, exactly. the, to the previous <laughs> three years? Because that's what we gave the Hinchcliffe Stadium, $914,000. That's what. It's a $1 difference. Right. So, so, but we're, but we're missing the point. We're funding a project that already got almost close to a hundred million dollars. We're taking a million dollars that could potentially have built to Councilwoman Cotton's point veteran housing, it could have been supplying other housing. We're putting it into a project where an outside developer is walking away with a 15 million dollar developer's fee, and we're and they're well over budget, so we're now we're looking to find more money to continue to fund them. Just looking to point that out. I mean, I understand exactly. So we're saving a dollar. I understand, Director, it's not that much of a concern it's to not, you. It's not that, I, it's not that much of a concern it, not to you. That. I'm just saying I don't understand. HUD has told us you have old money. You have a project that has been sitting on your books for over six years. Either they're going to move or they're not going to move. We've asked the Housing Authority numerous times, what are we doing with the veterans' housing? Still has not gotten an answer. So I informed the council of what HUD had said to us. They said, use your old money. It took us a little while to get everybody in play. It didn't happen as fast as we thought. They locked the grant. So I cannot move the money. They said, go back and give your Hinchcliffe Stadium, which we approve and we love, Give them new money, which is 18 and 19. You still have 20, 21, and 22, but you need to spend money. You need to build housing. You guys have already given permission to build on Hinchcliffe Stadium. It's just the wrong funding cycle. Yeah. It's a swap. It's a correction. Yes. Now it's going back to what you're saying. It's going back to the right. So, right. I'd so like us Council to President. We just had a long Jackson. retreat on decorum. I got interrupted by the director. Now the six ward councilman doesn't seem to understand the process of decorum as well. Councilman Jackson, you so have So I was very patient to wait for both of them to finish. Okay, so I understand that. So housing is dropping the ball on the community. So is the Department of Community Development by allowing this money to be utilized 
for an outside developer to pocket $15 million. I'm just wondering, I'm trying to mention the parts that you're leaving out. The fact that we're taking a million plus dollars and irresponsibly turning it over to a third party developer who is getting over a hundred million dollars and walking away with $15 million. I know you're only concerned about your portion and how much the, those, uh, 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 those lovely uh, consultants are being paid, but it's my job to look at the overall picture and how we're providing slightly over 100 plus units for $15 million developer's fee, how we built the 300 space parking garage that is still not addressing the parking accommodations for the stadium alone, let alone the, let alone the 250 seat restaurant and museum and the other 150 parking spaces we just gave away to the other developer, third party, private, outside developer that's gonna make, continue to make money on the community. I know that's not much of a concern of yours, but it is a concern of mine. So I'll just let it rest there. Okay, thank you very much. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Roll call in item number 28 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, I just, I just want to say to the community that um, if we do not spend this money or put it somewhere, um, I've been here in 2013, 2014, with HUD did reduce our allocation because the money was not spent. And they will, they don't ask for the money back, but what they do is that they ask They'll just, if they're gonna give me four million, so they'll give me three. Mm -hmm. So I still lose the million. That's what I, 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 I wanna be concerned. And, 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 and they look at project as shoveling the ground, however you wanna call it, but um, I just wanna make sure too that that veteran housing piece was still in there. Uh, as I said, cause we only got one veteran housing um, um, unit in our city, uh, which is on East 18th Street, which is called Park Place. So I just wanna make sure that was still there too. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So let me be clear to the public. Just because we're being irresponsible and not spending the money, so well, if we don't use it, we're gonna lose it. It doesn't negate the fact that there's a, there's a necessity for us to be responsible. So over the past week, I've been reviewing, you know, multiple uh, contracts between the Housing Authority back in, you know, when when uh, uh, the housing authorities was first formed and they were, they were in place to actually build and provide and manage and maintain public housing when they provide jobs and things of that nature. But since we've gone in the opposite direction and we haven't, we haven't been responsible, we're now putting it on the shoulders of outside investors and outside developers to do it so they, they could privatize these public dollars and pocket $15 million at a time developer's fee, we still doesn't negate the fact that we, we're not here to be responsible. And everybody knows this, the Hinchcliffe Stadium project, listen, is well, way, way, way over budget, overpriced. And it's all, it's, it's, it's all a money grab and it's about people making money, $15 million developer's fees. It's, Madam Clerk, my vote is no. Councilman Kelly. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, I voted against the initial resolution in what you came up in 2020, I believe. I'll still vote against this uh, resolution. My vote is no. Councilman Mintz? Abstain. Councilman Rivera? No. Councilman Velez? If we read the body of the resolution, HUD tell us to put things in order and correct it, so my vote is yes. Madam President. My vote is yes. The vote is four in favor, three against, one abstain, one absent. Item number 28 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Okay, the public portion is now open, Madam Clerk. Roll, um, first speaker, please. Uh, Councilman McLeek, if you can please uh, take over, I, I, I need to. Yes, Madam President. The public portion is now open. We have 27 speakers, Mr. President, and the first speaker is Ms. One Elster. second, okay. 
Cabrera. Good evening, Cabrera. my name is Elsa Cabrera. I'd like to thank the council for allowing me to be here this evening. This is actually the first time I am standing before all you beautiful people. Uh, once again, Elsa Cabrera, I am a product of Patterson. I was born, raised, educated, have invested, and have two businesses in this great city of Patterson. So I am Patterson. Due to the love that I have for this city, uh, over the COVID pandemic, I decided to incorporate a nonprofit organization called Give Thanks and Give Back. Uh, the mission of our organization, and I have some of the members and volunteers here with me this evening, is to give back to the community um, by saying thank you. And what we do is we provide educational resources, food, baby care products to the community free of charge with the help of supporters and people like you. Um, so I'm here to invite everyone to our event. It's the first annual Baby Sprinkle, which is taking, which is gonna be, I'm sorry, which is taking place on July 9th, which is a Saturday, from 2 to 5 p.m. We will provide free baby care products to all the attendees, light refreshments, food. Um, we will have also the participation of the Board of Social Services, where they will be providing information on Medicare and SNAP benefits, as well as postpartum depression um, awareness, and we will have mobile vaccine units that will administer the vaccines. Um, I'm sorry. Um, there are a few people that I need to thank. Um, and in no particular order, please. So don't feel any type of way. Council President Maritza Davila, Council Members Alab Delaziz, Luis Velez, Dr. Lilisa Mims, Mayor Sea, Board, Board of Health and Human Services Director Joel Ramirez, DPW Director Billy Rodriguez, Passaic County Surrogate Judge Soyla Casanova, Sheriff Richard Birdnick, Prospect Park Mayor Carula, Passaic County Board of Social Services Director Talisa Coleman. These people specifically have always said yes to me and I appreciate all the support that you have given me since the beginning of my um, organizations, um, since I incorporated the organization, excuse me. Um, I would like everyone uh, to know, to please follow our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram, which is at Give Thanks and Give Back, where you'll be able to see some of the pictures of the events that we have held for the last two years. And we, con we hope to continue holding events with support from the people like you. I have invitations for each of the council members um, for, uh, I'm sorry? You can give oh, them. Yes, thank you. Jerry, um, and I'll put some clerk. flyers outside on the table as well. I will end by saying this, helping people by charity is the most human thing we can do. And I quote Oprah Winfrey. Thank you once again um, for the opportunity of being here this evening. And I hope to see you on July 9th. The event's gonna take place at 370 21st Avenue in front of my business, Mantella Services. So I hope to see everyone there. Thanks again for your support and your time. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, my sister. So nice to see you here. Mama Mantilla, I love you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker, Ms. Raquel Amador. Did Raquel leave? She left. She left. Next speaker. Billy Prim Primpri. He's gone. Billy, he's left. Next speaker. Next speaker, David Bauman. Who? David Bauman. David. Left. Okay, he's gone. he's gone. Michael G. I'm not sure of the last name. Is there a Michael G? Some. Okay, next speaker. Um, Miss Harris, Francis Harris. She's gone. A lot of these people spoke Wy in the public hearing. Wileen, Wileen Rogers. Thank you, sir. Wileen Rogers. Gone. Akeem Dunham. Akeem Dunham. Next speaker. Willie. Can you please stop? Willie Peter King. Peter King? Peter I'm King? sorry? Willie Peter King. Willie Peter King, he has left as well. And okay. we have Batani Hunt and Lenore. I'm sorry, with the commotion I cannot hear. Okay. Miss Hunt left, okay. Next speaker, uh, Miss Wahida Mohammed. Miss Mohammed. No, she's here. <laughs> Thank you. And he'll get called by me tomorrow. <clears throat> What's the guy's name again? Good evening. Good evening. Now, <clears throat> when you mentioned call DCA, you said that without giving us a number. So you do that when you start talking again. The real thing about the retaliation 
when we know that when young people, any, anybody that works for this city that comes to this mic and says anything that this administration does not like or approve of, they will be retaliated against. And all of us know that. So we can stop telling that lie that there shouldn't be and we don't do this and we don't, yes, that's what happens. The other thing is every single time that we have come to you guys and said to you, we want you to reconsider stuff. You know what you do? You do just the opposite of what we're asking you to do. Which proves to me, like the council president just got up and act like, okay, I don't even want to hear what you got to say. Because I'm going to do whatever I want to do because I got five. Yeah, but you know what? That five is going to get you in trouble. And I know you're supposed to take over when the president leaves, but that's neither here nor there. That five is going to get you in trouble. Because every single time you think, because you got five, you can do whatever you want to do. But sooner or later, that five is going to get you in trouble. And I know you don't believe that, Alex, because you feel like whatever you've done, you know, your people love you, so you're only concerned about the six wards. We understand that clearly. You make that perfectly clear, that you don't have anything to worry about because the six ward is taken care of. As far as you're concerned, uh, Flavio, only God knows how glad I am that you're leaving. Only God knows. Because I don't care what people say about you and these numbers that you're so good at. I remember when you got on that council, I was so sure that because you knew the numbers, you were going to bring that money that you claim the other surrounding areas were not paying their fair share to Patterson. Remember that? Oh, yes, you was gung-ho about the monies that we were going to get because you were going to hold them accountable for whatever it was that they owed this city. Run the tape. I know you don't remember that now. But anyway, it really, really angers me when you all sit here and act like whatever the people that put you there means absolutely nothing. Because now you got four more years. You got four years that you can do this and four years that you can. Honey, listen, God only knows where your next breath is coming from. So stop sitting there like you got it like that, because you don't know when and where that's going to happen. So you all better be clear and concerned. And most of all, you better realize who it is that you are messing with. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, next speaker, Mr. Gilmore. Mr. Gilmore. Mr. Gilmore. Might not clap when I finish. Oh, good evening, once again. Good evening. And I'm here to dovetail as to what uh, Wahida Muhammad said, because let me tell you something, retaliation is alive and well. <coughs> Re uh, retribution for bringing things forward is alive and well. I want you to hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. Mr. Gilmore. I'm not, compete, I'm not competing with them. Let them finish. Mr. Ming, we'll, we'll take it. Um, we'll take a five minutes break. Mr. Ming, Madam Clerk, we'll take a five minutes break. Yes, sir.
Mr. Ming, can you hear us? We'll take a five minutes break. Yeah. Then Corporation Council. Why why can't they hold their signs up? What alley? What what alley?
With that said, we're ready. Are we on? Okay, Mr. Gilmore. Excuse me, uh, Councilman, Councilman Jackson, I need you to hear this as well, please. I'm starting over again, so I'd like to um, reiterate before the situation erupted behind me, and no, no disrespect to the family, and y'all can stand behind me, I don't care, because I stand with this family. You can come back and stand with me. The mic is on. Okay. So, as I was beginning to say before, retaliation and retribution is in full effect. You saw it just now. You saw it just now. So, having said that, employees that are afraid to speak have a right to feel fearful, to be fearful of speaking and speaking out for their rights in or the activities related to their jobs in or how they're affected and how people uh, harass and go after them and lie on them in their performance of their jobs. It happens. It happens all the time. It happened to me. I am a witness. My First Amendment and 14th Amendment rights to speak were were, were denied in this council, at this podium, as subpoenaed or summoned by the council member, uh, uh, Mike Jackson, to speak on the uh, erroneous abatement of tickets to the art factory. Now, here again, I don't give a damn about returning to this job, really. It doesn't make a difference to me, because if I do, I will return on my terms. But my second district federal court case is be coming, to, coming to fruition pretty soon. <coughs> Three times denied discovery in interrogatories. Three times beyond the election it was pushed, okay? Because they don't want that I, what I got to say to be on record, I, re I really don't care. I reported <laughs> bribery taking. I reported illegal conversions. I reported uh, uh, situations of uh, uh, tickets not being written. I reported and, and documented uh, uh, public safety issues and what happened to me. It's real. It's absolutely real. And all of it's going to come out in the court case. Because I'm not in no rush to settle. I want to go to court. Uh, how many times have I said it? I want to go to court. I've called the Attorney General's office. Okay? I've been to the FBI. I've been to the prosecutor's office as well. They didn't do shit. Let's go to court. I have the letters and documents and, 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 and uh, uh, memos that I've sent. I got them. Let's go to court. Put all this other stuff aside. Let's go. I'm ready. I don't know what we're waiting on. Okay? That's what I got to say about it. There's, he who has nothing to hide, thank you, hides nothing. I don't have nothing to hide. You understand? And I'm not going to subscribe to all that other stuff about God brought us the mayor and this and that, whatever. Whose God is that? Okay? There is, and I close with, retaliation and retribution for people coming forward. Not just ha what happened here tonight. <clears throat> Happens all the time. There's very vindictive atmosphere in this city from certain people. When you write tickets or you do what you're supposed to do and you try to do your job to your full performance, they don't want you to do it. They dismantled my office. We were doing thousands of tickets a month. 
uh, 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 inspections. From 14 inspectors to two. How do you do that? So you talk about raises and this and that. We had a revenue generator. Tickets for violations. Thank you very much, Mr. Gilmore. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker, Ms. Freeman, Valerie Freeman. She left. She left. Council Next speaker, Len President. Lenore Byfield. Byfield left. Next speaker. Council Elvis. President. One second, Councilman. Elvis Durham. Mr. Durham. If I may, Council President. Councilman Jackson, I would like for the public portion to complete, and then you can have the floor. This is relevant. Now we have, we have a Councilman deal. Jackson, I am asking for the public portion to complete, and then you have the floor. And I'm asking while the public is here, because Count it's very relevant. Councilman, so. at, I'm, are we almost done with the public portion? No, we have five, eight, 10, 12 people more, if they're here. I have okay. 12 on the list. Mr. Dorn. might not be here. How y'all doing? Good evening. Um, just got a big announcement. Y'all already know, <clears throat> always talk about jobs. More jobs, less problems. Um, we have smoking crab and, and seafood. Smoking crab and seafood is coming to like Center that. City Mall. The big grand open is Thursday, July 7th at 12 p.m. Thursday, July 7th at 12 p.m. inside Center City Mall on 301 Main Street, downtown Patterson, New Jersey. Everybody is welcome to come to this number one seafood restaurant. If you never heard of smoking crab and seafood, Google it. This is the best seafood restaurant in the world. And they're gonna be high end. More jobs, less problems. Um, I'm also, I also want to say thank you to um, Councilwoman at Laws, Lisa Mims, my favorite, one of my favorite Councilwomen in New Jersey, Councilwoman Ruby Cotton, for supporting the revival that came on the first war. See, um, I'm about to do a lot of great stuff on the first war. Um, just want to say thank you, and I appreciate it. And to everyone that couldn't make it, but did acknowledge the revival, like my council president, she did acknowledge the revival that was coming through Patterson. I want to say thank you. Um, also, my home church, Redeem Fellowship Center, is having a pre-women's conference, pre-women's convention, Sunday, July 10th, at 4 p.m at Redeem Fellowship Center, 292 North 8th Street, Prosway Park, New Jersey. My pastor is Pastor Brenda Davis Gilbert. You know her, um, Council President, y'all went to college together, I believe. Um, we're in Patterson, right? Some college. Um, Passate? What school? I know it was some school. Um, but it's the um, Women's Conference is coming very soon. And also, I got one more announcement. We got Summer Jam coming, y'all. I was fighting for Summer Jam to come to Patterson for a minute. So we got three locations. I'm just going to talk about one location. And it's coming to Councilman Louis Velaz War. Councilman Louis Velaz. Um, Summer Jam is coming to um, 62 Park Ave. Hold on, just give me a minute. That's 62 Park Ave, right? 62 Park Ave, that's New Birth, Greater Community Outreach. 62 Park Ave, and that's Saturday, July 16th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Summer Jam will be in Patterson, New Jersey, and it's coming to the fifth war, okay? And we will be on the first war. I will have more information when we come to the first war. That's Mike Jackson war. I'm coming to your war, Councilman Mike Jackson. Thank I'm coming. You. God bless. Thank you very much, Mr. Durham. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Council President. 
Councilman Jackson, I've asked that you please let and me I'm finish the poll. And I'm asking once again. I'm asking once again. Councilman, it's very relevant. Councilman Jackson, I am asking you to let me finish the public portion and first. The clerk said there's a lot of people. I think no, it's very we will relevant. Let Councilman Jackson, you are going to have the floor. Madam Clerk, that, next speaker. Council President, but I'm asking about the inappropriate condition right now that I would like to address right but now. But Councilman Jackson, I am asking you as the president of the council presiding right now that we will continue with the public portion and then you will have the floor. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Next speaker, Ms. Christian Garcia. Mrs. Garcia. Crystal. So why are they getting them, Council President? Can I have two, 20 seconds? Yes. It, I believe, it is my opinion, it is, this is the people's house for the public. It's very inappropriate <laughs> to create a hostile and, and intense situation to have two police officers standing at the door where people need to come in and out. And that's what's escalating the situations the way it is. You should not, people should not feel intimidated to come into this space and come here and address the council. That's an intimidation factor, and it only comes from people who don't understand the conditions of this community. Okay, it's Councilman. It's very important. And I'll, okay, it ain't Councilman, about just Councilman, standing Councilman, here. Councilman Jackson, I'm going to say this to you. It's duly noted what you stated, but you should also know that these officers, I've been here for eight years. And for eight years, we've always had, this is not because of anyone that's here today. These officers have always been here. That's not true. They don't that stand is, at that the is, door like that. Councilman, they don't stand okay. at the door like that. Where is Ms. Garcia? Stand over there where is Ms. The where is they stand Mrs. They always stand by the positions. door. Where is Mrs. Garcia? Is she here? Okay. Mrs. Garcia? Good evening to all in attendance. 147 days and counting. I respectfully request an extra minute of time. Tonight we need to talk about the abundance. First of all, hold on, pause. To put it on record, right? Before this family even came in, we were told that we can't do this. We can't do this, I gotta hold it down here somewhere. Where in fine print it was a, or it was a mandated order from this council to say that we can't do this. How? All the years, if you go back on the record, it shows that people are along there holding whatever the hell they wanna hold. When it was political season not too long ago, they was holding Andre Mayer, um, the, all the, everybody else, right? So how can not I hold my brother-in-law's poster? Don't tell me I'm doing too much because you ain't seen too much just yet. I'm telling you what I want to tell you. Remember that. Not what you're supposed to know. Okay? Now let me just get back because I always get sidetracked it with you guys. 147 days and counting. I respectfully request the extra minute. Tonight we need to talk about the abundance of influence that surrounds the Felix de Jesus case, especially all the conflicts of interest. The following information that comes to our attention, Mr. Feliciano's stepfather is a former municipal New Jersey judge with ties to Patterson. We also believe that Mr. Feliciano's mother works in the Office of Emergency Management as supervisor telecommunicator for the city of Patterson. We also believe that Mr. Feliciano has a sitting, a sitting family member, as we know, on the current council, which graciously identified himself last week in the city council meeting. We deeply appreciate this transparency with the public. With all these conflicts of interest, issues, having people in very powerful, influential positions with the city and local municipalities, how does the De Jesus family reassure themselves that all three organizations investigating the Felix De Jesus disappearance, the Patterson, Heldon, police departments, along with the State County Prosecutor's Office that continues this investigation, that we don't know what they're investigating. 
will not allow any other office or outside interference influence the outcome of this investigation. Why is it that the IA investigation is taking so long to conclude? What is it that they're investigating? The only thing that should be investigated is those body cam policies. Why hasn't the prosecutor's office requested assistance from the FBI in this matter? Using an outstanding, an outside federal agency can add resources to the case, assisting with zeroing in on what really happened on the night of February 2nd and assure that any outside influences remain outside. We cannot have the fox in charge of the hen house. Or is it that the authorities already know what happened and they're stalling the results of the investigation because they know it will cause civil unrest in the community? We need the FBI to get involved with this investigation. We also would like for the city council to show the video of Felix de Jesus being handcuffed, detained, as per se, you know they say, and then pretty much thrown into the patrol car and driven away, not arranging any type of proper protocol, away from the bodega on February 2nd. Many questions have been raised about the timestamp on the video because the date shows the 3rd of February. And time is approximately 1.55 a.m. Felix went missing on February 2nd. We don't understand why the police body cam is set to Zulu time, which during the winter is five hours ahead of Eastern Standard Time. Many of you probably didn't know that. The Z behind the timestamp on the video identifies Zulu time. This could be standard operating procedure or could it be that the camera was set incorrectly? We don't know. So on the night, so on the, night the local time of Felix's encounter with the police was around 8.55 on February 2nd. In closing, the De Jesus family wants to remind the public that we are offering $20,000 for the safe return of Felix to the family or any information leading to the arrest or convictions of any and all persons involved with Felix's mysterious disappearance or demise. Can we please play that video on this camera so that everyone can see this rogue police department, how they not, did not follow them proper protocols? In closing, I wanna leave you with, if I tell you I don't wanna get in that car and you still drove off, what does that leave you with? Okay. Have a good night. Thank you very much, Madam America. Clerk, next speaker. Yes, Madam President, next speaker, uh, Mr. Giovanni De Jesus. Giovanni. Good evening, Council. <clears throat> Good evening. So, I only get in four minutes of video, right? But it's been past 15 minutes, and these cameras are recording behind me, these officers' camera. Why only we get in four minutes? Where's Mr. Jerry? Yeah, he left. All right. So, now, last week, I asked if I could see the video there. Maybe not this week. Maybe next week. Whoever. But now... Like everyone says. Good evening, council members. I hope that you guys seriously consider the lack of support that the Jesus family has received in the four months following the disappearance of my brother, Felix. Please understand that the leadership isn't defined by title. Leadership is provided by actions. Action that lead to accountability and transparency. Be assured that we will not rest until I find my brother, and we're gonna get justice, and, and get answers and closure. I want my brother back. I think we gotta step this a little bit further down. Please, like, if we have to go vote for it or something, we've been asking for the past months, months and months. My mom is sick right now. She's in the house, stressed out, you know? It's a lot of things going on, but yeah. The cameras are still recording, still recording, and I'm only getting four minutes. Something gotta happen here, please. We need help, we need justice. We need these cops to be whole accountable because I don't know what they're investigating. The IA, I don't know what they're doing. Prosecutors, I don't know what they're doing. We contact them, they investigation. Everything's under investigation. It's way past three months, four months. His son just graduated the other day. You know how heartbroken is that? Huh? Father's Day? Huh? It's, 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 a, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. Like, I have to deal with this, man. I miss my brother, my father. 
We miss him. We need him back. And like my wife just said, we got 20 grand to bring my brother back safely home. Please, guys, help us out. Community out there. Somebody, if y'all know something, anything, contact us. Y'all got the Facebook. Y'all got the numbers. Y'all got everything. Please just contact us. Good night. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Stevie Jimenez. Stevie. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Eugenia Byfield. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Lester Ellis. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Councilman McCoy left. Justin Rucker. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Miss Billy. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Kimmy Freeman. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. I'm not sure of this person. It looked like. I'm not sure if he's Ella. I can't read this name. Um, Andres Rodriguez. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Ortiz Jonathan. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. There's no one else on the public Move portion, to close. Madam President. Move to close the public portion by Councilman of the Lazise. Hold on, she said, hold on, Council President. She said I'm her sorry, name so you, there. okay, so maybe that's the name. My apologies. Oh, that's to, Eva right here. That's the one I couldn't. <laughs> Eva Razak? Yeah, okay. I couldn't read it. Sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Razak, she couldn't my, read. Sorry, my friend. Our apologies. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good, Good evening. Afternoon. Good night, everyone. Good evening. Um, the reason for my being here today is it's a little different, but now, wow. I have to say this, guys. <sighs> Feeling the pain of everyone in this city is heartfelt. And I have to say this because it's really touching. When somebody's, oh my God, when somebody's pleading for help for a family member, it needs to be taken as we are here because there's something that there is, is family. It could be your brother, it could be your sister, it could be your mom, and things in Patterson, hold on mommy, and things in Patterson, people feel that they get brushed away, that you're nobody, that nobody's listening. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we are taxpayers too. We might not contribute as much as others because we don't have it, but we do, we need to, I don't know, I, how would I say this? If I was the mayor in this town and I don't have money, because I'm a broke bitch, but I survived with saying it, no, and bitch is being in total control herself, is not being the bad bitch, the being, the being in total control So, You would say there's no, there shouldn't be what, what's going on in our cities. Last week, I was coming out of the Walgreens, holy macaroni, if I wouldn't have turned around, the guy that was behind me, he was gonna rob me. And I turned around and said, yo, my man, don't get this cane twisted because it'll be around your neck. But it's harmful when you're walking into these cities, into, the, into our city, and people in the stores are scared. You're going outside, you're getting robbed. People are missing. Families are screaming. People are starving. The city is not listening. Why? We're screaming. We're, help. We're asking for help. And you know why I got something to say? You right when Ms. Mim says there's a lot of people in this town who don't want to get up and say anything because they're freaking scared. Guess what? I'm not. I'm not. You know why? Because the world makes you feel that way. Why should you be scared? Why should be people starving? Why should be people having more than others? When there's food, when there's a seed, you plant it and it grows. City council members, I pray to God, and I really mean this, and I know I may not be nobody in this city, but I'm Ava, and I'm an asset in this city because wherever I go, I bring something to the table. I'm just not being cute because I have green eyes, and I get in trouble for standing my ground. If we, and I say we, council members, everyone, go through your wards, see what's really happening instead of sugarcoating or people playing to play, and I don't play. We're going through a serious crisis that our people are nervous. You have these seniors at home that are terrified to get out the houses. My mom is one. Mr. Bellis, there's a, a, a building uh, a, a building that's being built right next door to my mom's house. Are you kidding me? And it's hell because that block is a hot potato on, on Pearl Street. Am I right or wrong? 
On Pearl Street, that's the block that's really hot. And I used to live there. I used to live in 111. Bobby, we got to be mindful, guys. And the mayor, mayor, where are you? Mayor, you got to be here. You know why? Because people elected him. And if we are saying this to you guys, and there's only so much that the council members could do. I don't mean to be fresh with you guys that are sitting there, and my friend is long, I don't mean to be fresh. The mayor needs to be accountable. Do you want people to vote for him? Get your pants on right, come to this meeting, stand your ground with your people who voted you in, and let's stop. Hold on, baby. And let's stop the shenanigans, because I got something to tell you, you're playing with family members who are enraged, and do you see what's going on in the cities? A lot of people not caring, they're not respecting. That's, that's, and I got something to say. For those who don't know me, I'm gonna say this today. I am very spiritual. I get information from heaven, from where I get it. We're all in a rude awakening in the city. And there's a lot of people who are gonna come down, they're gonna get in so much trouble because they feel they're up here. And they look at people like this, oh yeah, oh yeah. We got you there. So that means that it's a mutual respect among us. What can we do for you? What can you do for us? And let's all do it for each other. Please, in this city, please. There's enough abundance to go around. And listen, I've been out of the loop for a long time. Why? Because I've gotten crucified from a lot of people that, oh, you're running your mouth? We're going to do this. Well, yeah, come do it now. I'm not scared. My kids are old now. Bring it on. It's true, if it's my day to die, it is. Bring me some flowers. <clears throat> but it's true, please, council members, I respect each one of you guys, and even though I'm not from your ward, if you ask Ms. Stevie to help you, or get donations and stuff, Ms. Davila, you know me. I, I, I go above and beyond for people, but please, 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 council members, don't let things just slide by anymore, because you're going to be held accountable. And here it is, what you do in darkness, Come to light. Please, God bless each one of you guys. I don't want you to feel that I'm attacking. I don't want to feel Thank like you're you. attacking. But please, let's be mindful and let's be a little bit more compassionate. God bless. Thank you. And something else before I leave. I don't know who's doing all these apartments, but I got to go here. And I'm not being racist. Probably is going to sound it, but I'm not. Here it is. Here it is. Who the hell is giving all these, I'm going to go here, all these women from our, our town, all these Section 8 apartments, what about us? What about the residents from here? All and right. you see all these, wait, all these people with cars, liquor stores, stores, and they're getting Section 8, and we, hello, we that live here are not getting these apartments. Why? And we're stuck with rent because we're paying high rent. Thank you God very bless. much, Ms. Reza. Have a blessed night. Sorry, Thank you. I'm not Have disrespecting. Thank you. I just Have a good night. Thank you very close. much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Move to close by Councilman uh, Velez. Have a second. Have a second to close. Second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close the public portion of today's regular meeting. Yes, Madam President. Roll call to close the public portion of the regular meeting of June 28, 2022. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Ms. Mohammed, the number to DCA. I'll wait till you get a pen. Six zero nine two nine two six four six zero nine two nine two six four two zero and call for monitor Mead. She is uh, the fiscal monitor for this uh, for the city of Patterson. Thank you, M Mead. Michelle Mead. You all. You vote. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman Cotton. Um, I just want to say to to you all, everyone out there, um, I wish I had some answers. You know, we ask and we ask and we ask, and we, 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 don't, and I, we don't have no answers. Um, the answer's gonna, it's gonna come out, something's gonna come out. So, um, with that being said to, to the family, you know, I pray every night that you get some type of answers. I wish I could give you some, but I don't have any. Um, I just also want to say that um, I had, to, I know, I know, they just like, you know, they say you don't interrupt, but they, I don't know. I just, 
I'll, uh, you know, I'll wait till my closing because we still got a lot of things to, to vote on tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, um, my vote is yes to close. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You know, listen, I'm gonna just say this. <clears throat> fair is, is fair is fair. And no city ordinance or no order written by the police chief can trump the, the, the Constitution of the United States. People have the right to express themselves how they feel fit to express themselves. They have the right to convene. They have the right to protest. And when you send a message by, by singling out certain groups, it, 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 send, it, it sends a poor message. When we had the uh, Garrett Heights uh, Tenants Association here every other week protesting relative to their pilot, they stood against that back wall. They had signage. They were out of, they were, they were you know, uh, speaking out of, out of context, out of order. They were hostile at times. When you had the, the uh, fire department just a couple of weeks ago came in support of their fire chief or whatever, whatever it was, they stood all around that back wall and wrapped all the way around there to have armed officers standing at the gateway of the door does not send a, a sound message that they're there for protection, especially when you have a confrontation that took place. Now I don't know who, who I don't know who put this who put this request in or who put this mandate in, but I'm a part of this council and I should have had they don't get the influence. The council chambers, the activity in the council chambers is controlled by the council. No one else. If the mayor wants to have a meeting in this room, he must send a letter of request to the clerk that requests the council chamber, the council president through the council to give him permission to have a meeting in this room. This room is controlled by the council. It is the room for the people. That right there sends a clear disdain, especially when there's an issue. Standing on the side, sitting down, actually actually interacting with the community is what this what should happen but that right there that's that's a form of bullying that's a form of bullying if i want to intimidate somebody i'm gonna stand there just in, in an intimidating fashion that's not that's not proper especially when you have young people coming here it's a young i don't even know how old the young lady is but that's a that's a poor message to be sent i'm not sure how this this thing the whole thing uh came about but I'm in total agreement. And I will say this, one, I didn't have to be disclosed. I went to the family's house to let them know that the officer involved was my cousin. I, I, I say that with full, uh, uh, without any issues. I don't run the police department. I'm not in charge of training. I'm not in charge of conduct or code of conduct. I stood away from all of that stuff. I'm in support of what I believe is right. No one will, deserves to, to, to uh, not be considered, and if they have a concern, they're residents of our community, they, their concerns deserve to be addressed. How, however fashion, if I'm right or wrong, if I'm in the person, a person that's in the wrong, then I should be held equally accountable as anyone else. And Council President, I think since you, you, so, you, know, you, you uh, curbed my concern, I would like to get an answer on who put in a request for this new mandate or update, because I wasn't informed, I didn't get a, an email or some type of you know, notice that this new process that was gonna take place in the council chambers was here. I saw, I saw the young lady sitting in the seat, and we've had numerous times when this council's full, people standing against the state of the city address, and you're absolutely right, everybody was standing back there, city officials but some people are treated differently than others, and that's what this is all about. Anyway, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councilman Khalid. Thank you, Councilman Mims. Uh, so much has went on, so much has been stated, but I, I mean, I have to agree with Councilman Jackson. I have watched the meetings, I've been in the meetings, and I've sat on this council for four years now. I've seen many people, even up to recent, <laughs> come election season, they've been on all over the walls, they've been upstairs, they've been everywhere. 
I mean, everywhere. I have never heard of, of the law that was, or what was talked about tonight. I have never, I've, I've been here. They have sat there, because you know, most people know when you stand in a certain, in, in the certain section, they know if you stand there, you get TV time. So they notice where to stand, you know. But I've been here where, I mean, it's been jam-packed. Even recently, jam-packed walls, seats, hall, upstairs, it's been jam-packed in here. And, and I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I continue to pray and I try my best not to really, but when I, tonight, I just, I, it just bothered me because we've all have been privy to see it. Every person sitting here and out there, we've seen it been jam-packed. Jam we've seen it. And with signs and that, we've all seen it. We've all seen it. So I just have, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I I'm telling you, I, I didn't, this is my first time hearing of that law or mandate, whatever it was. I've never, I, even, even if it is, if, if there is such a, if, if there is such a thing, I have never seen it in, like never addressed here. I just have never seen it. And people have had signs for everything. I've seen signs for all types of stuff. People have said they made their commentary and, and, and all type of stuff. So. I, I'm not sure, but what I saw that went on tonight that caused us to be in a place where the cameras had to go off, I'm just, you know, my heart goes out to the De Jesus family. 147 days, not knowing where your family member is. I'm a family member. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an auntie, and You've been very peaceful. I'm gonna say that. You've been very peaceful. You come just asking for answers and, and everything. You you have come and I you know just keep fighting for your family because that's your purpose. Purpose. Stay the task. Keep advocating on behalf of your loved one. Don't get distracted on that because he needs your advocacy. He needs your love, he needs your prayer, he needs you, you know, asking for answers and, and asking the tough questions. He needs that. So no matter what what occurs, it's a hit, right? You take that hit, but be like a weeble wobble doll and bounce right back up and get back on your advocacy, because that's your focus. Don't be distracted, don't get off course, stay the course of doing that. There were other people that spoke at the mic, but I, I, I'll address those things later, but that took me somewhere tonight, and um, I'm praying for this family, but I have definitely seen in the years of visiting the council, sitting here, this chamber packed out. Election time, what you gotta do, look, let me tell you what to do. Oprah, <laughs> go and get an Oprah request of the meetings. And you'll see it for yourself. I mean, it's been years of people coming here. Years. They've been coming here, standing around the walls, up in the count. <sighs> God help our city. My, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. That's my Rivera. We're clothing the public portion. Um, so I, I'm in agreement. You know, this family has been very peaceful considering what they're going through. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being in their situation. Um, it's very, very sad what is going on, but I also have been in this council uh, watching also since probably 2000, maybe 10 or 12. And something that has been happening probably in the last three years is people just shouting in general, not just you know the past few months, I'm talking about in the last probably three to four years. I see people shouting from, you know, from that side, and, and we shouldn't have that. We got to maintain the quorum, um, you know, the respect got to be from both sides. But regarding the signs, this has always been there for the past. So I don't know what is being said. Don't know the detail, but I don't see nothing wrong with what is going on with the signs. We always had that in the past since I could recollect. Watch it. even when I worked there. I worked there in two, I worked there in two thousand and. 
and I believe it was 2007 or before, maybe 2004. And since that time that I've been attending council meetings, we always had this going on. But the only thing I don't approve of is the shouting that I've heard in the past four years because I've seen people actually in the past, the council presidents in the past, asking the police to remove people, right, that were being disruptive. Because we have business to run, you know, we have, uh, so I just want to add that, I'm, you know, this is my last meeting, but when something is right, I stand by it, but when something is also wrong, I cannot approve and say otherwise. Like I said before, I'm not here to misinform, but people should not be shouting. You go to any other meeting, Board of Education meeting, you go to, uh, you know, Board of Commissioners meeting, you go to any other, and people don't shout and, and interact. You know, so I just wanted to add that it's nothing, it's nothing about this group today. I'm talking about what's, what's been going on in the past four years. We need, we need to change that. So my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Understood, understood, understood. My vote is yes, too close. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman So there's something I always said. There's something I always said. You had to be persistent. You cannot start something then in the middle of the road, stop and then start it all over again because it turns into a miscommunication. I apologize on behalf of whoever did that decision to probably miscommunicate that situation, back alley situation. I will recommend the administration because in the past, and all the council members knows, even Councilman Mac Jackson, even though he pointed in the past there was no problem. Also, notice the chief, tell them people, go to the second level because the lower level is packed. So if it, that's the rules, they have to be continuous, persistent in doing the same thing so we could avoid this miscommunication. And on behalf of whoever did it, I apologize. Second, second, Eva, you know, we go way back, your father, you know, me. We go way back. We go way back. Oh, okay. oh your beloved father, you know. And um, that building that you say that's being constructed in Pearl Street is already constructed. It was approved. It was, yeah, I know, 125, something like that. <laughs> Correct. It was approved by the zoning board based on the codes and everything. So soon it's going to be uh, occupant, so the fences that you see in the front is going to be removed. The only situation I have there is 137, the after hours party and all that. That's my concern. And concern. That, that's the police issue. They know how to attack it. They even address it with Attorney General to go after the landlord of the property. Directly, I could say that free because somebody had to get the mess at some point, right? The landlord or the tenant, they had to put order uh, in that pro situation. Um, there had to be an oasis in the middle of this situation. There have to be an oasis in the middle of the desert. Um, corporate counsel, you don't need to respond me now, probably at the end. Last week, I made a request based on the conflict of interest and based on the situation to give confidence to the family that everything is being done properly, that this case investigation, if it's not concluded, comp I don't even listen to you. Oh, you are? Okay, so if it's not, if it's concluded, we want a, 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 a detailed report and disciplinary action of this case, if it's completed. If it's not completed, I want my request uh, to move this case to Bergen County, okay? To have, to have transparency in the process of the investigation. If you said, and way back you stated, that the prosecutor's office is in charge of the investigation in that part, the a, the attorney affairs in charge of the other, but if the attorney's affair is already completed 
and prosecutor's office still had the open uh, investigation to transfer the case the way it is or the finding to reinvestigate or finish the investigation in Bergen County. And then that will bring probably some relief and some more answers. Okay. And that, and that, and to the, to the family, to the family, to the family, that give you also the opportunity to go to Bergen County and also to the city clerk or to the county chambers to address them too to make sure they do the right thing also. Okay, so Council President, uh, Madam Clerk, my word is yes. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, so first I wanna begin by saying that I got up after five hours of being here, sitting, and I do not exactly know what happened, but based on what I'm hearing from my colleagues here, I think you guys have been coming here weekly, and I don't think anyone has ever told you you cannot have your signs, and you guys are here. Okay, so, so but I, I please, let, let, me, let me complete. I, I don't know why that has occurred, okay? Um, and I will be addressing director, the chief. But I don't, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't actually, yeah. I know I'm on my time, but I need to know what happened and why. I mean, there's never been a moment that this council on this side or even through the administration, unless I don't know something and this council doesn't know anything, we have never ever, I don't, I, and you guys have been here weekly. So what occurred while I went to take a five minute break Councilwoman Cotton and I, I don't know. And so I need to know before I vote because I don't want the family here to think this is your chambers, you are allowed and you're correct. I agree with my colleague that if this investigation, as a matter of fact, I would take it even further. Even if it's not complete, it is obvious to me that you still don't have answers. You have the right to request and say, I want the internal affairs investigation to be removed from the city of Patterson and our prosecutor and taken somewhere else. That's the right that you have. And I'll stand by you with that. Because you know what, day in, day out, we get here. See, I've already told you, when you come here and you express yourself, I'm listening. I don't want anyone here to think it doesn't go on deaf ears. Unfortunately, I cannot do or say anything. What I will say is don't know what happened here today. All right, so I apologize, all right? Your signs are here. I have no problem. This chambers has no problems. You continue, you have that right. You have a loved one missing that I'm praying every day, every day that he is found safe. So with that said, I just want, and I'm not sure if Corporation Council, maybe I should address Corporation Council if I, I, I can ask what occurred before my vote, what occurred and why the officers felt the need to, to from what I hear, that you couldn't hold your signs? Is, is that Corporation Council? I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, that, that's not my understanding, Council President. My understanding is that uh, they're permitted to hold their signs, they're encouraged to hold their signs. It's not about their signs, but rather keeping the back way clear so that people can walk in and out because my understanding is that people that have walked in and out have been cursed at and things have been said to them so in order to make sure that there's clear access for people to go in and out um, you know it, the chief my understanding is uh, asked that the back wall be cleared so people can walk in and out people are free to have their signs okay. people are free to display their signs people are free to show their signs in the front row, in the last row, standing up, sitting down, in the middle. Okay. And I just want to reiterate, my understanding is that this is not, this is not a content-specific rule, that they've, the police officers have been enforcing this rule pretty much all night for anyone standing in the back wall. It's not targeted okay. to any particular person. Thank you so much, Corporation Council. So you heard it here now. No, 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 listen. Uh, please. We no, 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 I'm not saying, really, please, please understand. I stepped out, okay? And there was no, I didn't see any issues, okay? What is what you call me? Okay. 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 Okay, so Ms. Garcia, I mean, okay, so Ms. Garcia, let me let me just say, because I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to vote, but I just heard loud and clearly 
This is not something that is written anywhere. If I heard correctly, and you're recording, and this all council members here, it was the chief of police who, the chief of police, if you heard correctly, it was, it came through the chief of police to keep clearance from the back. So, so with that said, I'm not saying right, yes or no, okay, please. All right, but I, I needed to understand because I didn't know what happened. As I stated, and I'll say it again, you continue to come here, but I am going to say this, that I think there should be a request, all right, that it's made and possibly because you have already, um, um, you have yourself some legal representation to have them put forth and try through the prosecutor's office to see if this internal affairs investigation could be removed from C Patterson. Council okay? President. So, no, I'm on the floor. I have the floor right now. Uh, so I'm I wanna, I wanna, I wanna just, just thank you for, for making me understand because, you know, truly, when I got up, I, I did not know what happened and I came back and, and so I, I, you are not doing too much. I, I don't think the family is doing too much. I wish that we can do more. So with that said, to Council everyone President. else here, to Ms. Reza, I am in the middle of voting, my dear. Council President, may I'm I? I'm sorry, I thought it was you. My, no, I, I'd rather him say it because no, the request, you. we um, talk about the request. Uh, in order to, thank you, Council President, for the opportunity. Um, uh, Councilman Velez made a request that uh, we submit a letter to the uh, Bergen County Prosecutor's Office regarding uh, uh, transferring the matter to them. Uh, we're happy to do so, but as I spoke to Councilman Velez, um, rather than it come from Councilman Velez, we just okay. need uh, the council to agree that it would come from the council as a body of the whole. Okay, uh, we'll move good. it forward. Okay, thank you very much. So, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes to close uh, the public question. Council President, but address it. It's going to be uh, uh, as council, all of us. It, it should be. Okay, so this all of us will take, it, it'll council. be, if you can prepare something and each council member sign off, off so, yeah. so everyone is in approval of it. Yeah, I'll draft it on behalf of Thank the Thank you very much. Thank you. We will have that draft then, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So we're gonna continue the city business. So uh, Madam Clerk, you have to read the vote, so we're done and we're able to move forward. I'm gonna read the vote. Okay. The vote is eight in favor. One absent, the public portion of the regular meeting is now closed. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, council members, we have four ordinances, uh, second reading. I think it's three um, and left. We, still we have, have three left. Uh, one, two, three, which some of these will, will I know will go um, quickly. All right, so Madam Clerk, we're gonna go ahead and move forward and move uh, to item number two. Next item is it, next item is our second reading ordinance and item number two for second I, reading. Uh, one, one second, Madam Clerk, I cannot hear. Next item is our second reading ordinances and its next item is item number two for second reading. Public hearing is required. Once. She can't read it into the record if there's people speaking. You ready? Okay. Our next items are second reading ordinances. Item number two for second reading, public hearing is required. An ordinance creating Patterson Code Chapter 172 to be entitled Cannabis Licensing and Operating. Administration Ordinance 22047. Is there a motion? So moved. I have moved by Councilman um, Abdelaziz. Abdelaziz. We have a second? Second. Second by Councilman uh, Rivera. The public portion is now, the public hearing is now open on item number two. Thank you. Like I said before, when I first started, it was gonna be a tough evening tonight. But let me stay uh, on, on, on the same accord on this particular ordinance. When we go back and we look at what the social equity federal legislation states in terms of the adoption by the state of New Jersey is that one of the things that they had to do was uh, look at the disparaged communities disproportionately punished for cannabis, marijuana, whatever, over the years and give them an opportunity to participate in the new legislation for uh, the recreational activity items. 
We know that in Patterson and or other places, they've had already established with the uh, medical marijuana disperse, dispensaries the uh, opportunity to participate in that area. They had a head start in that uh, area to pick up and to promote the recreational, which we saw happen not too long ago as it was approved. We know that there was, and a lot of back and forth went on the maximum amount of taxation could be 2%. I said it then, I'm saying it again. I'm not arguing that. The issue is that we have state legislators, Senate and Assembly District, that can go down to the legislat legislature and lobby for those particular communities like Patterson and other disparaged <laughs> communities in the, sit in the state for special compensation or dispensation on raising the taxable amount on the, uh, those activities. If you're only getting $40,000 on $2 million collected since it started, $40,000 on $2 million collected, that's nothing, nothing compared to what may or may not be needed to seed minority companies. Not only there, in terms of uh, seeding uh, the companies, but technical assistance. We know that these new uh, uh, businesses and opportunities need to have technical assistance. In Patterson, and I challenge anyone to tell me different, who is the go-to person in Patterson to get information and technical assistance on startup on recreational uh, marijuana activities with that $40,000 that's already been collected. What did, what did you do with it? Where's the accountability for the money, those monies collected? I think it's a fair question. You know, when we had the presentation, the nice uh, 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 PowerPoint, what happened after that? Where's the opportunity? Where's the, where, where, where's the help? You know, this is a problem. You know, you drop something and then it goes no further. So this is, this is, this is what I'm bringing forward. Somebody needs to champion. We need a champion, and not only there, but other areas as well. But right now, $40,000 off of $2 million collected. Who's talking to Benji, Shavonda, and other folk? related to forwarding this opportunity. <laughs> I, I, I just don't see it and nobody's telling us anything and I think it's a valid question for, for our community, black and brown folk, because to me, it is insufficient to go by, and I haven't been there yet, but I think I saw a video or a picture or something where, and somebody has said as well, they, they, they shuffled out the Spanish kid and the black kid, and I think somebody else I know works there. That's not enough for an hourly wage person to be your, your representation for helping uh, the, 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 the disparately, disparately treated community. You got a black person and a Spanish kid, and that's it. That's not working. Where's the ownership? Where's the training? Where's the joint ventures? Where are the businesses that are generated off of those activities? Mr. Packaging. Gilmore, you, you're over your time. I've allowed more time. Can you please wrap yes, up? I, yes, I am. I waited all night to say this. Uh, where's the packaging, the promotion, the designing, the graphics, all the other businesses that are generated off of this industry that has now come into town? Minority business opportunities and partnerships. That's what we're looking for. We're getting the short end of the stick every time. Nobody's championing these issues for us. And God help us, the NAACP, you can forget about that. They ain't doing nothing. So, uh, and or the Negro Committee. You know, there's this, the Negro Committee, you know, with uh, Fulmore and, and the rest of them over there. They ain't doing nothing. So I call it like I see it.
Thank you very much. Move to close. Move to close the public hearing by Councilman Abdelaziz. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close the public hearing on item number two. Who seconded? Uh, Council President. Oh, Council President. Okay, I'm sorry. Roll Mr. call to roll close the close. Mr. Gilmore, wait up. I have a response for you. Roll call to close the public the hearing public on week. item number two, Councilman Abdelaziz. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. So you stated anyone speak to our state legislature. So I spoke to one of our assembly members this past weekend. And you're right, the 2% is what the state legislature allowed municipalities. That's all we could do. But there's a 6.625% tax that goes to the state. And the state, that money's earmarked. It doesn't go to general funding. That money's earmarked for cities like our city. Right, and that's not only 6.625% of what cannabis sales in Patterson, that's the pot from Cape May to uh, Sussex County. And that money will be earmarked for programs, right, social equity programs <coughs> that the state will give to the city of Patterson and, and our assembly people and our state legislation senators in this cut right now it, uh, have some plans. And I, I, would re I would ask anyone, to reach out to them, but there is a carve out. It's 6.6, .6, every sale, 6.625% goes into that pot just for social equity programs for black and brown communities that were hit the hardest on the war on drugs. My vote is yes. Councilwoman Carton. I'd like to say one thing real quick. Under the new reorg, when the, the council is reorged, maybe we can get a blue ribbon commission or a couple of council people that can be assigned to make sure that there's equity in the social equity program. Yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. My apologies, Councilwoman Cotton. Yeah. No. Oh. Councilwoman Sierra yeah, what, next. <laughs> I didn't, she didn't call my name. No, I did, but he oh, was, did. He, he was, was speaking. So, um, yes, before so you role. step out, uh, Mr. Gilmore, um, I've gone to California recently and Illinois, and um, in each state I went to, California, I went to a cannabis, it was retail. Um, California, uh, when I spoke to the people in California, uh, their tax was 30%. And, 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 you know, when you look at this, like you said, um, you got to have our state people understand that the two percent is nothing. It's nothing. Clearly, seeing how much money could be made and is going to be made, the two percent. I go to Chicago, in the middle of downtown, Chicago, in the middle by the Sears Towers, it's a retail store. But of course, when you go into them stores, you know they take a picture of you, they copy your ID, they got security, they got everything. Just two percent, and 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 um, I did get the information from the California man. Uh, he's going to help me with other things that could be put in place to for for us to get more money. Cause just two percent, compared when he said thirty percent. I go to California, David and Miss Wahida, and who's sitting inside? But a young lady from the city of Patterson is working in the cannabis retail shop coming from Cal Street, she said. And they're making really good money, meaning the workers that's, that's working in, in this industry with them. So, Mr. Gilmore, I hear what you said. I, I, be, I, I have the contact for the California man to see how we supposed to get more money. Mm -hmm. 30 so 30% ain't nothing. 30 I mean, 2% ain't Massachusetts nothing. And 30% in, 30 in California. So I need to put that out there. Uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. I don't understand how we get still asking how. It's very simple. We write it into the ordinance. We write it into the ordinance that it is a mandate for anyone that wants to do business in the city of Patterson for recreational marijuana that there must be some inclusion. We have the capacity to do that. We're not talking about the two percent that was set aside for taxation that has to go through the state because the state going to get all their money. We're talking about 
the provisions that the council had the power to create. We could have wrote anything. You gotta paint the front of your building yellow. You gotta put whatever out there. We could have, we had the ability to, to do that. This was a fake out. The state came before us and said, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna require every applicant to have a certain percentage of minority ownership. Where's the minority ownership at this place in Patterson? None. There is none. But yet again, council folds its cards and yields to everybody else that wants to claim that we can't be. Nobody has discredited the fact that we had the ability to write in the legislation, if you want to service the community of Patterson, you had to partner with a local group that has Patterson's best interests in mind. We're, gonna, we're losing yet, yet again. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Donations to uh, political yeah, acts. Check that. Yeah. No, we're just closing. The public portion. We'll close the public portion. Yes, to close public portion. And um, Velez, we're closing the public, Councilman Rivera, I mean, not Rivera, Councilman Velez, we're closing the public hearing on item number two, the cannabis ordinance. Yes, Council President. Okay, so you say yes? Yes, Councilman. Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. President? Vote is yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. The public hearing is now closed for item number two. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number two for second reading. Uh, Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Tani. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I understand what we have to get. There's some things in here that are art and written in here, but um, we have to get started. And we have to get started. There are things that's in here that we can uh, go forward. Like I said, uh, speaking with the people in California, um, of different things too that could be put uh, add in place and referring to the state, you know, back and forth. So, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Councilman Jackson. No explanation even needed. I mean, it's, it's gonna get shuffled along anyway. Uh, I don't understand, you know, when our, the, the elected people and start standing forward for the community and remaining consistent. We have an opportunity to make sure that this, this uh, if anybody wants to now benefit from this, the retail sale of drugs, that minority people have been consistently villainized and criminalized in doing, that they must partner with a local entity. But yet we're gonna skip right over that and allow people to come in our community and make millions of dollars off the backs of people that have been inc uh, inc incriminated for doing it for so many years. Madam Clerk, my vote is no. No, thank you. Um, Councilman Beams? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Velez? After taking a trip to Atlanta City and sitting down and uh, in the cannabis uh, uh, classes or, or whatever they was doing over there, uh, I got more knowledge of uh, what's going on. The state is the one with the cannabis commission that pulled the rules. Um, if they want to be inclusive, not inclusive, they have their own rules. The only thing I could say right now is that the administration met in the middle I had a sixth license for each. Uh, we put it to three. Just as a pilot, they could come back and add more if it's working properly. If the revenues are coming in, of course, we want a six, six, right, of each. Um, regarding um, amending this ordinance, there's still room for improvement. We could come back and amend and add things that will benefit the community in every aspect zoning, um, use this zone, or whatever, we could amend it. So thank you, administration, for meeting in the middle for the request that I 
that I request the three license for each. Uh, my vote is yes on this. Thank you. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Council President? I feel like every time I go to the bathroom, it's like everything just. We fast, that's why. No, 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 so I, I wasn't, all right. Um, my vote is yes. The vote is six in favor, one against, and two absent. Item number two is hereby adopted on second reading. Thank you very much. Uh, we have police. Let's just do this real quick. Um, I believe you are 45, right? 45? Okay. Um, we're happy to have you here. Number 45, Madam Clerk, for the record. Please yes, read into Madam the record. President. <laughs> Next item is item number 45. Resolution authorizing the city of Patterson to enter into access and license agreements with the producer of the series on patrol live. Police resolution 22-420. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Moved by uh, Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Mims and Cotton. Uh, does anyone have, if you could just do a quick sure. synopsis, okay? And, and I also, and, and I know Eamon's going to get mad at me for this, but um, if you think about live rescue that we did. You guys have the confidential document in front of you, okay? Believe it or not, this is the same uh, company and it's going to be the same similar type of show uh, with the police department. I will be out there every Friday and Saturday night with a tour commander or a deputy chief in a car. We will be going to different jobs. We're not going to be going to uh, someone, God forbid, dead in the highway. We'll be going to accidents, we'll be going to fires, we'll be going to you know, some of the community policing events. We're gonna go to whatever we can, but the good thing is transparency. We just seen what we talked about here tonight, and we have this individual that's missing. Well, guess what? Just so you know, Mr. De Jesus was on live rescue. He was an individual that was picked up, got out of the ambulance. I went over and said, let me help you to Mr. De Jesus put him in the ambulance, drove with him in the ambulance to the hospital, and took him there. That transparency. Uh, we have director our cameras. Dick to yeah, this. I mean, I just wanted to let you know. So the, the, show is, uh, the show is going to be Friday and Saturday nights. We will receive funding like we did the last time. The city will be paid. Um, we'll negotiate that price. I don't want to say the number because we're and well the paid and there's 25 cities involved, so I don't want to compete with anybody. But uh, last time, I know I was the highest paid city. So, okay. Council Roll call, Ma Madam Clerk, on item 45. Yes, Madam <coughs> President. R roll call on item number 45 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kelly? Yes. Um, Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Velez? Uh, the only thing is uh, I, I just noticed here that the, um, <coughs> I don't know if it's like that, Eamon. Please just check, uh, Eamon, just, Eamon, just check because uh, the last page has uh, everybody's signature if we voting on this to approve, uh, the council is supposed to be signing this agreement just in case, right? No? No. Okay. Hey, you know, I know you do a great job, Director. Thank you very much. And I know that um, you know how to lobby when it comes up to revenues. I, I, just, I just hope you'll so. talk to my wife about the Friday and Saturday nights for the I next know. year. Director. <laughs> He's on, on roll call, Director. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Turn your microphone off. I'm tired. I'm tired tonight. <laughs> I like when you call me Lou. Yes, Lou. Go ahead, Councilman. My, my, my vote is yes. Councilman Mims, we are voting on item yes. number 45. Yes. The vote is yes. Madam President. Yes. 
The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 45 is hereby adopted. We, we should do one with DPW. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, God. You imagine doing the clock? Uh, let's vote on 43, then 44. Actually, no, we have director here, so let's do 44 first, then 43. 44. He's got right. another one up here, too. And then we have director, we have DP, he'll be next. Oh, 43. Long day today. Sorry. Next item is item number. Director, really? 40. Did you get nervous? No. All right. So I don't think there's any questions to this. All right. Just, just stand here. I don't think there's any questions. We're going to read into record. Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Next item is item number 44 resolution authorizing an extension of contract with United Way of Passe County for the financial consultant services to implement the Palace the Financial Empowerment Center. Department of Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services, Resolution 22419. So move. Second. M moved by Councilman Velas and second by Councilman Gleek. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 44. Uh, 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 before he goes. Discussion, Councilman yes. Velas. Um, Director, we spoke off, off, offline, um, but reading the service agreement, this is the one before because this is say January 19, but in the second page, it's uh, in page number two, in the compensation, 143, 500, um, 500, yeah, 143,500. We don't own nothing, right? It's what? Sorry. You are correct, Councilman, we do not owe anything. We've already paid the money. This is just so that we can finish the contract until the 12th when the councilors are going to start transitioning to the new nonprofit. So they, they, to finish the scope of work with Correct. whatever they so have. So they can still have access to the systems, which is not owned by us, it's owned by the CFE. Before we move on to the other, can you bring them um, to ask them some questions? The new nonprofit? Sure, I, I can Thank extend you. an invitation, All absolutely. Right. Uh, based on, on my request through the chair, chair, I know we're gonna change to another nonprofit, so we wanna know how this is gonna develop and the benefit of the powerment center that the community take advantage but we want to know how they're going to be settled absolutely okay thank you yeah, but they, we vote now with the roll call madam clerk yes madam president roll call in item number 44 for approval councilwoman yeah. we vote now 44 yes ma'am oh my vote is yes councilman jackson yes councilman Khalid. yes Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Hopefully, um, Madam Mayor, just in case, uh, my comment is to come back later. But we're not using ARP money for this type of program, right? Correct? Okay, so the email that you send us today regarding <coughs> the ARP money for um, that program that we was lottery that getting the, are we good? Uh, that came to the council for approval? No? No, that's, that would be part of the ARP allocation for, as part of the introduced budget. Yeah, okay. that would be a guaranteed income program. We would encourage those people to use the Financial Empowerment Center as we did this time around. Okay, so I'm gonna vote, but I, gotta, I got one question, Council President, for Madam B.A. based on that statement. My vote is yes, but I'm coming back with my, my, okay. my question. Okay. Madam President? Yes. <coughs> Council President. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 44 is hereby adopted. Council President, okay. before Very you move good. forward. Very good. Item 43. Uh, Council President, Next before item. you move forward, Madam B.A. stated that um, it's going to be into this to the budget, the AARP money for that type of program. Um, Can we? But, but no, this because. This is like you, you're asking like some new business. Can we just complete? We, we still have two directors here, please. And we'll, we'll at the end, please. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much, Councilman Bellis. Right. I have three other items. What? Oh, you do? Oh, 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 yes. oh, oh, oh. oh and you, go, you don't have to go to Chicago? How, how about, you know, you stay here till the end with us? I'd love to. All right, so you Feed are me. 38, 39? Yes. And? 37, 38, 39. Man. Yes. Madam Clerk, yeah. in that order, 37, 38, and 39. Next 
item is item number 37. Item number 37 reads, Amendment to Resolution 21, colon 554, authorizing the City of Paddington to enter into a memorandum of an understanding with certain entities to provide for and advance a COVID-19 health literacy program, health and human services, Resolution 22-412. So move. <coughs> Moved by Councilman Velez. <coughs> Do I have a second? <coughs> 37. Second. Discussion. Second by Councilman Jackson and Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, and item 37. Just a question. What's the company? Director. Yes. Um, through the chair. So it's to, add, it's to add New Jersey Community Development Corporation as NJCDC? Correct. So uh, that's the only one? No, you, it's the only one you have already approved a resolution where I'm, I sent the information to the clerk but the resolution you approved prior uh, was to enter into the same agreement with St. Paul CDC, Oasis, New Destiny, Boys and Girls Club, Four Cs, Health Coalition of Passaic County, Patterson Alliance, and Passaic County Community College. So, so okay. you've approved those partners. This was the only one that we were missing, that it was swapped out for a prior one. So can you give us later on through email a scope of work while they're gonna use the money Yes, absolutely. For Please, yep. uh, to, to, you know I get a lot of, cases I could refer through you to see what they have for them yes, so absolutely all right roll call madam clerk roll call in item number 37 for approval councilman jackson yes councilman Kelly? yes councilman mims yes councilman Blaise? yes madam president yes what is this the vote is five in favor <clears throat> Four absent, item number 37 is hereby adopted. Item 38. Next item is item number 38, resolution authorizing award of contract to New Jersey Community Development Corp for financial consultant services to implement the Paddington Financial Empowerment Center. RFP number 2022-38 for Department of Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services, resolution 2241. So move. Moved by Councilman Velas, do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 38. Uh. <laughs> Roll call on item number 38 for approval. Councilman Jackson. Can I have a discussion before you go to Okay, the, so so yeah. let me, so I'm going to sure, acknowledge the discussion yes. because when I say, you know, a yeah. first and a second, someone has to say discussion I so know, we can no. start it. But I, I am going um, yeah, to say this yeah. and, and to, to director, um, and I know that any time that this entity is part of an application, it's scrutinized, right? And I want to put on record because I read something I didn't realize that um, the director or the CEO of United Way is, is going to be leaving us June 30th is her last day. Yes. It's my understanding that the agreement was with, uh, for the Financial uh, Empowerment Center, it was through the partnership, because you need to have a partnership with an entity like um, United Way uh, that I guess there's some changing, because I just, just put on record why this entity now has become part of, or at least we want to be able to work with this entity with the financial consulting services. So the contract with the United Way was for one year, the RFP was put out, the NJCDC scored higher, and this is why we are at this juncture. Okay. So 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 this is this is this director, hey now. Mm -hmm. That's why it call me off guard and I ask you when you guys are gonna do this, please bring them for we could ask well how's it gonna be the scope of work. Well you already had an RFP. In the beginning of the conversation the workshop was that United Way no longer is gonna transfer uh, the duties or whatever to NGCDC. Now I learned that it was the RFP involved. You understand what I'm saying? That's why it threw me off. Um, you know and, and, and it was pitch and sell 
United Way no longer is going to be doing it. They partnered with NJCDC, yeah. and it was a, like an automatic transfer. Now it was an RFP that two of them participate. And how many letters were sent? How, how, how was this seven. published? Seven. Se where's they? Oh, seven. seven, yeah. And and only two came back? The RFP's respondents were only two. Uh, is there any way, uh, just a question, just to be transparent. Is there any way when, when I don't know Harry Savalos, I uh, know where we're going. I know that in the past we say at least put the number of people that we send, the people that respond, and that's why we have it here, right? Was there any way that they could disclose those that pick up, even that they didn't return it? Harry can answer that. He was gracious enough to handle this process for us. Correct. <laughs> and he does a great job on that. Yes, I don't he have does. no doubts on that. But it's to add more transparency. How many people picked up with names and address, or at least names, and listed a list in the back? Like, for example, you have two that came back, right? But can we list also that the one that not came back just to uh, save, you know, information to us over here? Because sure. I could Pretty be out there, right, for example, and let's make believe this identity in Patterson in the fifth ward, pick up the package and did not return nothing, didn't participate, but at least we know that they pick up and it was them that they want to participate. But it could come back and say, I'm walking out there and the same organization say, hey, you know, I submitted everything and then, you know, nothing came back to me or whatever. I just want to know if that, it could, they, if they could disclose the, in, the whole participants list. Well, that is going to be, that's the reason we had this conversation before that's the reason I think the first paragraph, first word asked me reference how many packages were picked up. Uh, in this case, I think it were seven. And they, we disclosed the participants under the law. They, whoever participate, one, two, three, they, they disclose and the summary in the second page of the resolution always. Do do? This was and the reason why. I mean, I can't stop. You know it. what I'm saying, right? Yeah, no, we don't got you. Item on the workshop. No. The workshop right now, an item that we're going to take action. Yeah, but Council yeah. President, what happened is that, uh, and how we don't have no problem. The the item and director, you did a great job, all right, but probably you forgot before you go into Chicago to tell us that the RFP was already done. That's That was the, the situation. And um, knowing that, yeah, correct. So that's it. Yeah, because uh, the, let's say a case of 41 proposals, which we had that, they pick up the packages. You want 41 names that they are re really the minimum for because they, the only ones that be named by law would be the ones that are being credited the, for. Wait, the one who submit, submits the uh, RFPs. Okay. Those yes. are the ones who should be listed. Okay. All right. All right so thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. Uh, roll call, you know, Councilman Jackson. You put it difficult for me. So 40. <laughs> So, uh, no. Council President, maybe you can help me out here. Uh, yes. Since you said this was discussed, what was the uh, what was the, the grading rubric? I think that question should be asked to the director what the rubric is. No, but you said that it was already disclosed. We discussed this. No, in, uh, I said we discussed the item. I didn't tell you in detail what we discussed. So, if you want to ask the director, yeah. he's right here. You can ask him for the rating rubric. All the RFPs come with a scoring sheet from the purchasing department, and that is what the people who score it go by. Why, why wasn't the score sheet included in? in we can solicit. We can facilitate that to uh, Madam Clerk, but because I'm, I'm very curious of how an entity that's never done this before scored higher than an entity that was that this is that this is their 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 area of expertise. Well. The United it's Way not had them, not done that before either until we partnered with them. They used to do a tax. They would fill taxes out for low-income individuals, but not necessarily uh, financial counseling at this level, which is a national model, and we're only one of like 32 in the country. And so 
Councilman Johnson, to what you're asking, it's my understanding that the staff that is currently they will transition on to the NJCDC. Because I don't know that NJCDC per se, or, or maybe they do. Uh, I'm sure that through the process, you know that they've. Would, that I'm would sorry, have Madam rate. President. They've already had a conversation. The nonprofit manager has had a conversation with leadership at NJCDC that we facilitated. We've already facilitated for the counselors to meet the leadership at NJCDC. Their resumes have been exchanged and sent over to NJCDC. So all of the normal transition process has begun so that we don't lose services to the residents of the city. Yeah, but that's my point. I mean, you have an entity that's now gonna take on the hiring of, of the total operation of another entity but yet they scored so, higher. So, so the way that it works is we have a city manager and a nonprofit manager. The nonprofit runs a day-to-day -day with the staff that's there, but we also have the CFE fund, which is the team that started this in New York with Mayor Bloomberg, and they oversee this with us. So there's check-in calls every week. So the same thing will occur at the NJCDC. The staff is gonna be the same. It's just going to be who the nonprofit agency that houses the program is. All right, whatever. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call. Sure, Madam President. Roll call and item number 38 for approval. Councilman Jackson? No. Councilman Khalid? Second. Yes. Councilman Mint? Abstain. Councilman Velez? A hundred, a hundred fifty-eight, five hundred dollars is going to go for the first year. It's a contract for three, right? Hey, we need to empower our, hopefully they don't empower them to how to construct a playground, but hey, you know, we could do more, right, with them. My word is yes. Madam President. I want to thank this Financial Empowerment Center because they have helped over 500 families fix credit. I mean, they are available in all with no fees attached to it. So I just want to thank uh, uh, NJCDC for becoming partners, okay, with the city and with the Financial Empowerment Center. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is three in favor, one against, one abstain, four absent. Item number 38 is hereby adopted. Okay, 39. Next item is item number 39, resolution authorizing social service allocations for the period of January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. Um, Health and Human Services Resolution 22414. Uh, so moved. So moved. moved by Councilman Velas. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call item 39 for yes. approval. Roll call on item number 39 for approval. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Velez. We haven't approved the budget 22, right? Not yet. Okay, so I just want to let you know that this two hundred and two thousand dollars come from the twenty twenty two budget, and it had not be approved. So, um, Madam BA, the last uh, request uh, that we did is that to try to identify money for another expense that probably is not going to be expended to see if we could put more money in this type of uh, program, where we could get more or have more participants in this type of uh, programs. My vote is yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 39 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Thank Director you. DPW, we're going to go with 40, 41, and 42. We have all that. In that order? Sure. Yeah. Council members, just to make you aware, we still have, I believe, two items on um, second reading, and I think that we are able to take them both together and open the public hearing together because they're both in ordinance to establish 
handicapped parking spaces. All right. Madam Clerk. Number 40. Next item is item number 40 um, for approval. Resolution authorizing rejection of old bids and authorizing the solicitation of new bids for the collection of solid waste for the city of Patterson bid number 22.17, Department of Public Works, resolution 22415. So, so, so move. Moved by Councilman uh, Velas. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 40. Uh, I, um, Madam, Madam President, this is new for them, Suburban? Have did they done this normally, right? Well, uh, we're rejecting. We're the rejecting. The, we are rejecting. I know. I know. But look at the cost as why. So you have one, uh, you have one, two, three, four, four. If they are already custom to bid, they should submit all that. You know what I'm saying? No. The price is cheaper. I don't. Look, the bidder did not include acknowledgement of receipt of um, addendum. The bidder did not provide consent or sorority. The bidder did not provide pricing okay, so for Okay, so Councilman, you don't have to read the whole thing. We yeah. have here the, Go I ahead. can't believe that we are doing a workshop on a regular session. I cannot. So the Chair, Can Council President. Can you please President. address the Councilman? Uh, what? Uh, Thank you. you. Council, Councilman Bailey, what you're reading is the reason why we reject and not consider the older bidder, no, no suburban. Oh. There were two participants. The reason why it has to be spelled out in the resolution, specifically why it's not here required because we're not going to award the contract to anyone. No, the first company, EV, I believe it was, nor Suburban. Yes. And they, they, we have to be specific of the why, and that's the reason the detail and the resolution. So this was not said in the workshop, that's why. Okay. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam Sorry. President. We'll call an item number 40 for approval. Okay. Councilman Jackson. The same thing. Number 40. No. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Jules. Hope we have more participants. My vote is yes. Madam President. Yes. And low price. The vote is four in favor, one against. For absent, item number 40 is hereby adopted. 41. Next item is item number 41, resolution authorizing payment to rock equipment rentals, LSP, for the rental of sewer equipment for the Department of Public Works, Public Works, resolution 22416. Move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Mims. Roll call, Madam Clerk, and item 41 for approval. What are we renting here? Oh, so okay, yeah, all right. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number 41 for approval. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? And we're taking from capital and, and count number one, number two, and mixing it together? Yeah. All right, my vote is yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 41 is hereby adopted. 42? 42, please. Next item is item number 42, resolution authorizing contract extension with Suburban Disposal Inc. for a period of six months for the collection of solid waste for the city of Patterson. Administration resolution 22417. So moved. Moved by Councilman Velez. Recommendation. Second, uh, second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 42. I'm getting, I'm getting, Madam, I have to put this on the record. Uh, Director. Um, I'm getting a little bit complaints, not like Jackson get us a lot, but <laughs> there's no reason, no taxpayer in the city of Patterson had to give 10, 5, 20 dollars to take nothing. You're absolutely right. Nothing. Taxpayers, you're not obligated to give not even 10, 5, 20, whatever you will have to give them to take items from your sidewalk. If they don't take it, call me. I'm boots on the ground. I'll be there with the director. Send me the address. I will send the address to the director. I will thank, you thank you very much, Councilman, for putting that on record. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 42. 
Yes, Madam President. Roll call in item number 42 for approval. Councilman Jackson? Did you say yes, sir? Thank you. Oh, Councilman Kelly? Oh. Councilman Kelly? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Mims? <laughs> wow. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm, I'm alone. I'm alone. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, amen. Amen. God is going to get picked up. Hurry up, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Jules? <laughs> I'm honored. Yes, I was gonna vote no. <laughs> you always make me laugh. Madam President. Yes. It's gonna snow. Sorry, Councilman, I can't go back. Good night, Councilman. You're very emotive. <laughs> Madam President, I'm sorry. Madam I President. No, uh, he reconsidered Are you cha his vote. You changing your vote? It's no? <laughs> okay. Give me the All right, let me change your vote, Councilman. We celebrate for three Makes seconds. Me laugh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mad Madam President, your vote now. I've said yes. Thank you. The vote is <laughs> four in favor, one against, and four absent. Item number 42 is hereby adopted. Okay, very good. This thing um, is dry. Madam Clerk, that's 243. 43. Oh, next item is item number 43. Resolution endorsing the statement regarding rejection and condemnation of the remarks of officials in the ruling party in India against the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and demand for actions. This is sponsored by Councilman Kalik. City Council, Resolution 22418. Second. So moved. moved by Councilman Kalik, second, second by Council President Davila, Councilman Velez. Anybody else want a second? Councilwoman Mims. Jackson? Entire count? No, no, just the street. Okay, very well. Roll call, Madam Clerk, and item 43. Roll call, and item number 43 for approval. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Thank you, Madam Clerk. There was a demonstration last Friday, June 24th, in front of City Hall. Some of my council colleagues were present. You've seen the sentiment of the people. The reason that sentiment was that um, there was a statement remarks made by uh, some parliament members in India against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'm a religion, of, I'm a follower of Islam. I totally condemn it, condemn it. And also I believe by showing the support for my council colleague, you guys reject those remarks as well. And my vote is yes. Thank you. <coughs> Councilman Mims? Yes. The principle of theology is to respect <coughs> everybody's belief. And I support this resolution. Council, as soon as I read it, I, I joined it. So my vote is, and, and thanks God I was not there because if I was there, I'd make it vocal. True and real. My vote is yes. Madam President. Yes. The vote is five in favor. Four absent. Item number 43 is hereby adopted. Okay, Madam Clerk, I want to take uh, second reading three and four. Uh, they're both same item. It's an ordinance establishing handicapped parking spaces in various locations throughout the city. Uh, I'd like to take them both and we'll open the public hearing for both. Three and four, please. Okay. Next item on the agenda is um, a second reading ordinance. It's item three and four. Item number three and both. Three and four requires a public hearing, and three is an ordinance establishing handicapped parking spaces at various locations on city roads. Three, Nicobaca Avenue, 52 Patterson Avenue, 73 Patterson Avenue, 106 Sherman Avenue, and 12 Redwood Avenue, Department of Public Works, ordinance 22048, and item number four, um, for second reading, public hearing is required, an ordinance establishing Handicapped parking spaces at various locations on city roads. 305 Caldwell Avenue, 58 Dayton, Dayton Street, 727 East 26th Street, 14 Jane Street, 39 North York Street, 33 Redwood Avenue on Henry Street side, south side. 560 Summer Street on the west side and 289 Totowa Avenue on the south side. Department of Public Works. Um, ordinance number, hold on, Council President. 
don't look at this like that. Yeah. You see that for you? Number four. Uh, let me just look at the number. And that's ordinance number 20, Department of Public Works, ordinance number 2204-9. So move. Second. It's moved, moved by Councilman, Councilman Bellas and second by Councilman Kalik. The public hearing is now open for items three and four for second reading. The officer want to say something? Seeing no one move no. to close. Seeing no move to close by Councilman Kalik and second by Councilman Bellas. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank Roll you. We, we understand Clark. your concern. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close the public hearing on items three and four for second reading. Yes, Madam President. Roll call to close the public hearing items three and four. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Velez? Definitely, yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. The public hearing is now closed for items three and four. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Roll call on items three and four for second reading approval. Yes, Madam President. Roll call on items three and four for second reading. Councilman Abdel, I'm sorry, Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. 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 Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Items three and four is hereby adopted on second reading. Yeah. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, we're going to go through 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Can you repeat again, Council President? In that order. What, what's the number we re beginning with? 23. These are the ones that are left. We're going to go with 23. 24, 20, in order. I thought we did 23 I we, already. I thought we was back in Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have no, 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 this no, is no I have 23 separate. Yes, 9%. 23, 24, okay. 25, 26, 27, and then 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Wow. That would be the ending of the agenda. I understand okay, next that. item is item number... 23 on the um, non-consent agenda. Item number 23 reads resolution authorizing the award of contract matrix consulting group for consulting services to provide operational assessment for several departments and divisions. RFP number 2022-40 administration resolution 22398. So move. Second. Move by Councilwoman Cotton and second by Councilman Velas and Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 23 for approval. Roll call on item number 23 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 23 is hereby adopted. Item 24, Madam Clerk? Next item is item number 24, resolution authorizing a contract with Enforces Inc. for annual subscription and maintenance services related to CAD RMS system for the Division of Information Technology. Administration resolution 22399. We'll move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Kalik and Councilwoman Cotton. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 24 for approval. Roll call on item number 24 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 24 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Item 25. Next item is item number 25, resolution memorializing the life and legacy of Ray Light Senior. And this is sponsored by um, Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims, Councilwoman Ruby and Cotton, and co-sponsored by the remaining council members. City Council Resolution 22400. Second. So move. Moved by Councilwoman Mims. Second by Councilwoman Second. Cotton. Second. And Velis, roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call on item number 25 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say to the family of Ray Light Sr., um, he was uh, absolutely a wonderful person. Having an opportunity to, to work with him, and I, I didn't have a job, but I was the parent council, I mean, I was the president of the, of the PTA at Eastside High School when he was there um, back in the 90s, 1999, when he was the uh, parent coordinator there at uh, Eastside High School. And uh, I can just say that he was absolutely a wonderful person, uh, 
and and for me to to work with someone that I know that love the community, that love the kids, love everything that he did. Um, it was just, he was extraordinary. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, to the family, uh, you have my deepest condolences for him. <coughs> We're gonna miss him. And I can say that um, with doing the Ray Life Senior Field, it was absolutely wonderful. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So my deepest heartfelt condolences to the, uh, to the Live family. Um, I had the privilege of playing for uh, Coach Live when I played for All Wags um, baseball team many years ago and have since then developed and had a, a really good, great relationship with Mr. Live. So um, my heart goes out to his family and I'm happy to support this. This item, uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Khalid. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Um, Councilman Mims. Yes, so I believe it's so important to give people their flowers while they can smell them. He was able to see the field in his honor, the plaque be installed, and to throw the first uh, baseball on the field. And I remember one of the conversations that was had with him about the great work that he's done in going to the viewing and um, watching it even after to hear people like uh, Brother R. Eason and Chief Moody and Assemblyman Wembley talk about how much of a giant he was to our community and to recreation and so many people of all backgrounds he helped to make sure that they were able to play, have uniforms and, and it just goes on. I remember him saying after everything was done he looked and said, thank you. And I've replied to him, no, thank you. If it were not for you, many people, many people's lives would not be saved. So long live the legacy of an icon that the city has known and loved for years, Mr. Ray Lai Sr. And my heartfelt condolences to his family, his wife, his daughter, and his son, and all the other relatives. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Benes. My deepest condolences to the family. I apologize, I was not able to attend to the funeral service. Um, I was not in town, but I was the first male PTO president at Eastside High School after Councilwoman <laughs> Cotton left the uh, presidency, remember that? Yes. And he was a, a well-orientated, a well father for all of us in that high school. So um, I could rec recall a lot of good things. So my word is yes. Rest in peace, champion. Madam President. I'm so happy um, that we were able uh, to support um, the dedication and to see him there, um, to see him in church, uh, the family. I'm just in, happy that I'm, I'm, I'm part of history. Um, I also, you know, I want to say rest in heaven, and um, I want to also say happy birthday to Mr. Cotton. I'm sure that you both are up there enjoying each other's company. So with that said, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Item number 25 is hereby adopted. Very good, 26. 26. Next item is item number 26, resolution memorializing the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Samuel Jackson of Exodus Baptist Church. This is sponsored by Councilwoman Cotton and Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims. City Council Resolution 22401. Second. Second. Number 26, Councilwoman. I'm sorry, you, you 26. Is that mine? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, moved by Councilwoman Cotton. Do I have a second? I second it. Second yeah. by Councilwoman Mims, Velas, and Davila. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 26 for approval. Roll call on item number 26 for approval, Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, to the family of Reverend Dr. Samuel Jackson of the Exodus uh, Baptist Church, I want to give you my deeper consolences. I want to recognize his life and legacy along with Councilwoman Mims and I. I um, uh, he's on 12th Avenue, but he was truly a community person um, there at the daycare center. Um, 
So I'm honored to be able to uh, memorialize his life and legacy. Madam Clerk, with that being said, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mims? Uh, the work that Reverend Dr. Samuel Jackson did can never be forgotten. He helped so many of our youth in the fourth ward, um, especially in that playground area. My vote is yes. Councilman Vilex? My vote is yes. Madam President? Yes. 46 in favor, three absent. Item number 26 is hereby adopted. Item 27, Madam yes. Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Next item, item number 27, resolution memorializing the life and legacy of Miss Alice Adriana Pallison Rogers, sponsored by Dr. Mims and co-sponsored by Councilwoman Cotton, City Council Resolution 22402. So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Mims and second by Councilwoman Cotton. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 27 for approval. Yes, roll call on item number 27 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's, uh, you know, give my condolences to the, the life and legacy of Miss Alice Patterson Rogers. You know, there's, there's people that are passing that has given us, or have given me so much knowledge, and I know I've stood on their shoulders to be able to sit here today. And hopefully, I'm going to have somebody stand on my shoulders so they can sit here in the future. With that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mims? So, uh, Ms. Rogers, I kn I've known her for a very long time. When her daughter reached out during um, the funeral arrangements to get this done, I told her absolutely. Her mother was such a sweet gem um, and will definitely be missed from our community and from the Agape family. My vote is yes. Councilman Velez? Rest in peace. We're losing a lot of champions, though. You yeah. know, and, um, and I know they're going to be missed in the community. My vote is yes. Madam President? Yes. 46 in favor, three absent. Item number 27 is hereby adopted. <coughs> number 30. 30, please. Next item is item number 30, resolution on the Patterson Code Chapter 129 Bazaar addressing a license for Bronx Inc. to conduct a carnival in Westside Park. Finance resolution 22405. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> moved by Councilman Velas and second by Councilwoman Mims and Cotton. any questions yes, have asked I, I, the I others a, but just have, to look at the question. application it only uh, indicates 75 people in attendance and i want i want to just uh, uh, bro, uh bring this up they have a letter and i want to encourage them the bronx shield of state county is a minority law enforcement association comprehensive law enforcement officer who live in Passaic county so they don't need police they going to be supplying their own their own police <laughs> Officer, right? Yeah, Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why. That's why I want to put on the record, just in case uh, uh, you you guys see that they are volunteering their time mm -hmm. for that Officers purpose. So, I just want to put on the record that police officers. Bob, they don't need. They don't need a, a contract for a EMT. Um, actually, uh, I don't I'm know. If they, they are. They are trained. They are trained for I'm just EMT. Kidding. I see them with bats. Say it's EMT, probably. Bronze, they, Bronze they not EMT. officers. No, the no, department officers. The, the no, Bronze Shields. Bron that's, that's why I'm sorry, Bronze Shields. I'm really Bronze Shields. Okay. So I don't thought it was Bronze Shields. Okay. I don't know why I Madam get Bronze Shields from her. Roll call, please. Bronze Shields. Roll call on item number 30, approval. Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I want to say to the Bronze Shields, I've been, they've been at all the schools cooking for their fields day or uh -huh. right yeah. before um, school get out. You know, I see them at all the schools, and they provide all the, 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 the hot dogs, the hamburgers. Yes, they do. They, they were just everywhere uh, in, in the month of June, uh, cooking at all of our schools. And I want to say to the Bronze Heat, I appreciate you guys. 
because you, your, your organization is just a community organization that helps everybody. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. <coughs> yes. Councilman Khalid. Yes. Councilman Mims. Bronte, thank you for all that you do in our community, making sure <coughs> where there are needs and, and gaps that you're always there to fill them, no matter what entity, organization, or whoever they are. So our city appreciates the work that you do, and I definitely support it as well. And there is, in this application, there's a partnership, there's a partnership, Councilman Jackson, with the Bronze Shield as well, right, as far yeah. in it's a statement as it relates to making sure that there is police presence and public safety. Thank you, sir. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman um, Velez. Listen, I commend the Board of Director Bron Shields and Bron Heat. That's why I say Bron Heat, Nobody because uh, they, always, they always give. They always give back. Oh, nobody's listening? Uh, they are. The fire department are up. <laughs> and Bronx Shields. Also, uh, Dalton Price is a, a well community oriented individual from Patterson. So, okay. all of them. So, hot dogs and hamburgers on. And that. You vote? My vote is yes. It's a carnival. Madam President? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> The board is six in favor, three absent. Item number 30 is hereby adopted. Very good, item 31. Next item is item number 31. Resolution on the Patterson Code, Chapter 129, Bazaar, addressing a license for Ela Problanita, Jerry Pereira, to conduct that? a rodeo finance. I don't know, Councilman, I just tried yes. to pronounce it. Resolution 22406. Where's that one? What, what's the number? Um, that is it's the bazaar rodeo. addressing the license for La Poblanita Jaripeira to conduct a rodeo. A rodeo. So more oh, yes. Okay. Uh, on a, hold on, hold on for a minute. I, I have a discussion about something. Oh, okay, so oh. wait. So it was moved by Councilwoman Mims, Mims and it was seconded Second. by Councilman Velez. Discussion, Councilman um, Madam B.A. 31. 31. The insurance. Have we checked the insurance and everything? Okay, because as far as I know, these same people, they used to do the rodeo in Passaic. And I believe for some reason Passaic banned them because there was an, uh, this was This is not the same group. Ma major accident there. Is that the same group? Yeah. Who was the other group? And we had the rodeo the, here. The, this is the I, one I know we have. I know we have. This is the one that did it back here. I know we have. This is a dangerous sports I'm, <coughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, like, percent, you know anything about what of those uh, rodeo group getting banned in Passaic? Okay, well, I just want you guys to just be aware of what's going on. Okay, if, if a big accident or something happened and it comes to the city, then we'll be liable for it, Council President. Thank you. Uh, president, I, I'm sorry, well, president. Hold, hold on, hold Councilman, on, yeah. because this went through finance and it went through workshop, and so it's here. And so, are you saying for us not to? This is what I heard. Is oh, no. no, I understand, but I, I think you need it. If it is the same Thank company, you. same Party people, time. might be other people, they used to okay, do the so same I thing in Passaic. Passaic banned them due, due to an accident. Almost somebody got killed. No, you, is, that, is that the right name? No, I'm, I'm, I don't know either. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Somebody got killed. That's but this this is a dangerous game. You know, the rodeo. Have you been to a I horses. I'm not talking about horses. These are big bulls. Right. right. Yeah. These, uh, these are big bulls. <coughs> yeah, this is a big you bull that you jump in Los Cuernos. See that one? Yeah. That one. Anyway, it seems like they have all the paperwork in order. Let's just move forward, Council uh, President. Uh, Council President, I don't see the how many police officers they're going to have here. The what? Police officers. Where is it? 
Hold on. I see the EMS. And they attract a lot of so people. So these people are from Patterson, just so you know. That's fine. All right. Well, they will get to the police department later. Councilman is correct, there is no police contract. And they're gonna have rides too. No, they're not having they they're have not it, they're having performers. They have performers too. Right, singers, but not rides. Yes. Yeah, they have they're rides. The oh, rides. Unless the bulls are the rides. That's probably what yeah. the ride is. Uh, nobody could jump on it, only them. Certificate of liability. <laughs> yeah, the Patterson res. And, and let me tell you something, vendors, whatever independent or managed by others, they need to get you see the, the, contract is there, the, the police is there. Where? The police contract is there, I see. Where? Oh, All right, let's, let's, let's move page forward. Page number uh, 12. Police chief designee, it's right, the assignment officers. Yeah, they signed that. It's there. All right, oh, Madam Clerk, yeah. roll call. I didn't got this on Friday. This was done today. Sorry, we're going to call it item number 31 for approval. Councilwoman Khan. How many police do you have? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Drez? Hold on, I want to see how many police they have before they vote. No, I don't. Uh, it's not here. I want to make sure the animal control is higher there because then one of those bulls get loose, man. It goes after it. <laughs> Council President, you know that last time it was packed. It doesn't state in there how many police officers they have. So I'm, I'm looking at that right now. So I don't know, council members, do you want to? When is this? When is this? This is. Oh, they, we got, for, they could come for the next meeting on the 14th. Our next meeting. 12. The workshop will be on the 12th. We could do a special there. No, that's not bad. I, I think, uh, Council President, um, we're doing the roll call. Let's finish okay. the roll okay, call. Okay, let's do because this and is this also. Is also, we should get in touch with the police chief to make sure that we have enough security. So, so Madam B. A. So, so we're in roll call, and it'll be conditioned. So we're going to go ahead, right? If we do not have, okay, by tomorrow, and in email you see the, the one Contract. that is okay. The con, because we see, I see the contract and I see the payments and all that, but I don't see the number. Okay, I don't see a number there. Okay, we need we need that clarified. <coughs> if we don't, then we're rescinding it. Okay. Council President, may I? Corporation Council. Thank you, um, Mayor. Uh, suggest that perhaps the proper way to be to conditionally approve it, subject to okay. them providing yeah. this. That way, you don't have to take another vote and another reso later on to receive Very it. Very good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, was gonna, I, I was going to say that. So, as for as the record, Madam, Madam, uh, it's my time to vote. This is subject to. Uh, give me the verbiage again. Conditional approval. Subject to. Uh, Render. Uh, wait, 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 wait. It's subject to. Amount of police officers. Of the police contract. Subject to the applicant providing a police contract mm -hmm. specifying the number of police officers there that will go. be present. Right there. Well, is that an amendment? It's an amendment. Okay, so then you, you, that's the condition you're going to add. Yes, that's correct, Dr. Mims. So then we have to go start the roll call again. I, I'll defer to the. Uh, yes, uh, the amendment has to be done first court. before we actually vote okay, on this. Can everyone take their vote back? So everyone I can, res I you know, the 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 um, Okay, so Councilwoman has removed her, her motion.
motion, and Councilman Velez has a move to second. Yes. Well, we can keep the motion and second on the floor. Right. That's fine. Another thing is, but the vote we that we already yeah. has, I'm sorry, Councilman. Sorry. So, 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 Madam Clerk, can you please put on the record how we'll proceed? Right. So, the motion and second is fine. So, at this time, Councilman Cotton, Councilman Jackson, Councilman Kalik, and Councilman Mims will just withdraw their, their, their votes. And so, thank you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman Mims. Okay. So, now we can put a motion and a second to amend this resolution. And the amendment is subject to the applicant providing contract for the amount of police officers. Is that what it is? Yes. yes. That is correct. Uh, submit evidence contract and amount of police officers. The contract officers. for yeah. the number of con officers. In writing. Also, Council President, I just want to make sure um, that they, if they have also a liquor license through the state to um, advise us, because okay, so that- Just so yeah. you know, and that, because I, I did my due diligence on that one, okay? That is a process, they're going through their process, that's ABC, that has, that bizarre, that goes through the state, that goes through the approval of the chief and the clerk. So this application is not subject to that. If they get approved, that's the state, that's through the chief and Yeah, through. but that also, is a matter of how many police officers they're gonna have. Because right, and what happens is- and that's good, that's a good- that's, be, Because that's what happens is it gets approved now, they go next week, get the light, one day license, the contract of the police is already done, the police don't know they have a- a, 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 a Yeah, but that's being signed out, just so you know, that gets signed, know so the happy. police will know, because the chief and ABC to has to sign Correct. off on it, and Madam Perk. Okay, very good. So, Roll call, so, Madam Clerk, so, on item 31 so with that, amendment. Yes, Madam President. So oh. that application is something totally different. Correct. From Correct. This. Yeah, no. Yes. Correct. Okay, so I need a motion and a second to amend the re to, for Move. the resolution. Second. Like, Moved by okay. Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Kali. Roll, Roll call, call to amend item number 31, um, and the amendment is. Um, the council is requesting in writing that the applicant provide a contract for the num number of police officers present at this event. So, Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes, Corporate Council. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, <coughs> four absent. The amendment and item number 31 is hereby approved. So a roll call note to adopt it with roll the amendment. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 31 for approval with yes. amendment. Yes. Roll call for item number 31 for approval with the amendment. Councilwoman yes. Cotton? Yes. She will have an announcement for it. She already did. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Um, Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 31 is hereby adopted with the amendment, as amended with the amendments. Number 31. Very good. Well, number 32. 32. Oh, we got more. Next item is item number 32. And item number 32 reads, resolution certifying that all members of the City Council of the City of Patterson have personally reviewed at the minimum the required section of the 2020 transition year audit finance resolution 22407. Move. Councilman, this came to workshop and this came to our home and now we're here to approve or deny. So this is to approve, to certify that all members have read, to the personally audit. reviewed, the at minimum the required sections of the 2020 transition year. So, Madam Clerk, I am moving this item. Oh, I say I move. Oh, okay, so second. moved by Councilman Velez and second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam second. Clerk, on item 32 for approval. Okay, third. Um, so it's moved by Councilman Velez. Oh, yeah. And second by Councilman Kalik. 
second by Councilor my colleague. Okay, continue with the roll call. Yes. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Roll call on item number 32 for approval. Council Momentan? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 32 is hereby adopted. Jennifer will be bringing around a sheet for item number 32 that all the council members Everybody who are present oh, to sign. Oh, say I, I, I thought you were Okay. Madam Clerk, very well. Jennifer, if you can do that while we around. go with item number 33. Okay. Yes. Next item is item number 33, resolution to approve a corrective action plan in response to an audit received for the 2020 transition year finance resolution 22408. Second. Moved by Councilwoman uh, Cotton and second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on item 33 for approval. Roll call on item number 33 for approval, Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say to Javier, the CFO, um, the issue that we had in 2020 with the Monkey Hill Association, you was able to get that corrected, Madam BA. Um, they, they received the tax bills really late, so, but I'm happy to see that it was corrected. Um, and that was the only action on there. Thank you, Javier. Yeah. See you, Thank you, Madam VA. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Clerk, my yeah. vote is yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilman Khalid? My vote is yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. A lot of improvement. Only one corrected. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a training process, huh? Let's start with one. At least we're moving forward. My vote is yes. Madam President. Everything you said is what I was going to say, so I will not repeat it. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Uh -huh. CFO. It's yeah. nice to see that there's only one yeah. item yeah. on the corrective action plan. Yeah. With that said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is five in favor. For absent, item number 33 is hereby adopted. Very good. Item 34, Madam Clerk. Next item is item number 34, resolution authorizing purging of taxes on Block 3507, Lot 34, also known as 325 Hamilton Avenue, owned by Unisporex LLC, finance resolution 22409. I'm trying to think of- Number 34. Okay, so, so, so uh, first of all, we can't even discuss it. Who's okay. gonna first, I'll move it and second. Um, uh, move by Councilman Kalik, I'll second it. I'm just gonna quickly just say this. This is for uh, an action taken back in 2017 and the first half of 2018, Mr. CFO. Yeah, That's that. correct, the property was demolished by a fire. And it was, uh, let's just see here, I just lost my. So this was 325 Hamilton Ave. 325. Okay, it was destroyed by fire and demolished, okay, in 2015. So we continue to uh, erroneously build them? Yes. Okay. Uh, ma Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Roll call on item 34 for approval. Next item is item number 34 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton? Councilman Kelly? Yes. Okay. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Page what, two. What, what's the amount? 111,000. 111,000? And it was destroyed by the fire and it was demolished. Councilman, we weren't voting. I know, but they got money for the demolition and also got money for the um, for the property, right? My vote is yes because it's already here. Madam President, so this was due to uh, the delinquency fire. that was caused to the account of the subject property for taxes that were not owed, and on June 27, 2018, tax sale certificate was sold to the city for the second half of 2017 and the first half for 2018. So the tax assessor and finance director have recommended that the correction be made and that the taxes, interest, and cost billed in error 
as contained in the aforementioned tax sale certificate be purged from the subject property account. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Wow. <clears throat> the vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 34 is hereby adopted. Uh, 35, 35 is the same uh, clerk to redeem a tax lien certificate. Actually, this is, this is not purging taxes. It's Next item is item. Certificate. Roll call, I mean, not roll call. Madam Clerk, item 35 for the record. I believe this is the Next. last item, council members, on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Next item is item number 35, resolution authorizing tax collector to redeem tax lien certificate number 21-00570 sold to third party investor on taxes caused by leased on city owned property at block 4801, lot three, finance resolution 22410. Move by a question. Move by Councilman Velez, do I have a second? Second, discussion. Discussion. Okay. This is the Livy's property, am I correct? correct. Mr. CFO? Yes. Okay, uh, Councilman Kalik. Can you give me the summary of this uh, resolution? Um, we took over the property, then we built them, then we sold uh, those those into liens, and once we took over the property, they should have been. But we just so basically, we're paying those uh, lien holders money, so we could have the complete possession of their property. Correct. Right. We should have never. We should have. Uh, once we took over the property, the property should have been exempt. We should have never built anybody. Okay. We should have never sold liens on. So we sold the tax lien to somebody, and we own their property. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Roll call, madam. Roll call, madam. Clerk. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Councilman Dallas. No, uh, through the president, ma madam press, I, I know this was not in your, I believe so. Yes, it was. But you telling me that Levy's is a profit. It was a restaurant. And they were tax exempt? Once we took over, they should have been tax exempt. Once they took over. Once the city took over. The city took over in 2018 or 2019. So, so based on the article that I read, the city always was the owner of the property, but they and they didn't pay rent. They paid rent. But they was behind, but they paid rent. They was behind, but they paid rent. Okay. Well, at one point, they didn't pay. Okay. So um, what was the amount? Is it twenty-nine thousand one hundred and ninety-nine? So. Well, wait. That was to yeah. May thirty-first, twenty twenty-two. Yeah. For the entire amount to be paid to fig to redeem the subject tax sale certificate amounts to fifty thousand two hundred and seventy-five with fifty-five cents, calculated by May thirty-first, twenty twenty-two. Correct. So, so, Madam B. A. Um, now that this is going to be in zero, or CFO, right? No, but Madam B.A., because you already gave me the numbers. Madam B.A., what is the plan as you as a business administrator of this site? Moving forward. No, because now it's a dumping site. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, are we going to fence it? Are we going to RFP? Are we going to do a, uh, a, a, a uh, how you call that when you go in the highway, a rest area or something? Right. You know? Council President, if, if I could respond. Madam BA. Um, I, I do know that this is one of the items that um, our economic development director has some ideas on. Um, in particular, we have this funding now that we're going to be doing citywide plans and some planning. And one of the ideas was to, and as part of the redevelopment plan for this area, to have that be included in that plan. Um, I can get an update for you on that and, and have him you know, we either report to the Economic Development Committee and share this with the council. And that property is not in County Road, right? Oh, uh, yes. My, 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 um, my Bryce County? I, I'm guessing. I, I don't know. Yeah, because it, it, crossed, know. it crossed three, it, three yeah, towns, correct? It's a yeah. large, right. Yeah, correct. It's a county road. But, All right. But the property, the city owns, like, on both sides. There's correct. a lot yeah. on the other the side. side by so the I'm little park. Yeah. Yes. I'm noticing people are parking trailers, tractor trailers, and uh, companies in front of it in there. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it looks awful. Mm -hmm. Great fall is here. Yeah, I can ask for an update from our yeah, director. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they give a. Let's see if they give a three million dollars. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. 
Yeah. Yes, Madam President. We'll call an item number 35 for approval. Councilwoman Tan? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 35 is hereby adopted. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion to close? Move. Second. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Kali. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close the regular meeting of Tuesday, January 28th. Long, long time, we don't come out. Yes, Madam time. President. Roll we'll call to close the regular meeting of um, June 28th, 2022. <laughs> Did I say January? Cotton. I don't know what you said. I'm sorry, June 28th. I think I said January. Uh, I don't remember. Don't forget to give her those foresight. Okay, okay. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Khan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just have a few announcements I would like to, to say, um, if I may. Um, um, oh God, the Sigma Beta Club is having their 22nd, no, 18th annual 2022 scholarship luncheon on July 9th from 11 to 7, from 11 to 4 at the Brownstone. Um, Ronald Jackson, who is the principal of, um, not principal, but the football coach at Kennedy High School, I believe that he's the president now, so. If you're interested, it's the 18th Annual Sigma Beta Club uh, Scholarship Luncheon. And I, I wanna say to the Sigma, thank you guys so much. You know, you guys put all those bicycles together for me, for the Ed Cotton Foundation that we had the second uh, giveaway bicycle for the Christmas holidays. These guys were really wonderful at putting this together. Also, I just wanna remind you everyone for upcoming events of Ruby Vision, We'll be having her annual luncheon in August. I know it's not July yet, but it's August 13th. If you want to see tickets, anything that I announce that you need to um, call, you can just call my office and you can ask for me. Also, um, on um, uh, don't forget about um, oh goodness, I know. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, I, I, I don't forget uh, Ruby Vision will have their annual. Uh, uh, fundraiser on August the 13th at the need. If anything, if you would like to get tickets from me, please do so. Um, I just want to remind the, my people of the Fourth Ward, um, National Night Out is coming up again the first Tuesday in August. There's always National Night Out. Last year we joined together at Barber Park. I would like to do the same thing again. If we can partnership together, we can get more organizations to come together and we can be together all at Barber Park. Please reach out to me. Um, you will be getting a letter from um, uh, Ms. Della Fisher McCall about National Night Out, so please, if you can, um, just reach out to me. Uh, also, I would like to say to, um, um, golly, oh, don't forget about um, um, the real, no, the, the um, swearing-in ceremony. Even though I didn't win, my, I didn't win, but I can still say the swearing-in ceremony, which would be uh, July 1st at International High School. Uh, also, I would like to um, give my husband a big shout out. Uh, happy Heavenly happy birthday. birthday. His birthday is, is after 12 o'clock. So he's June 29th. Um, uh, he have, he would have, he's gone now for two years, but we all miss him. We love him dearly. But you know, every day people call me and tell me all the good things that he had done for them while he was here. So. To my big Eddie, happy heavenly birthday to you. Um, um, and he would have been 74 today. So, um, council colleagues, um, I, I knew I should have wrote something down, but I forgot. Anyhow, uh, Madam Clerk, um, oh, I know what I wanted to say. Uh, Flavio, he left already. Council I know he can see me. I just want to say to him, you know, I'm working with you. Uh, for this past four years, you know, we had our, our differences, our ups and downs, but what I always say, when you come on the city council, you work with everybody, no matter what. So he has that new baby at home that he needs to take care of, and, and, and it's not easy having children and, and being a council person, and especially little ones, um, it's not easy. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, to all my council colleagues, have a good night. See you third Friday, Madam B.A., uh, uh, Chief Financial Officer, and of course my legal man, amen. <laughs> I always say my legal guy. <laughs>
<laughs> With that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Kelly. And you too, Madam Clerk and Jennifer. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Happy birthday to the champ in heaven, Ed Cotton. Also, I want to thank our council president. It's been a tough year, you know. I believe today is the um, last meeting before the reorg on Friday, about 2.30. I want to thank you for your patience. I also want to thank Councilman Rivera. You know, he was here for four years. I mean, if you look at, you rewind the four years, I had a lot of disagreement with the uh, councilman at large, Flavio Rivera. Also, I learned a lot from him. We should agree to disagree, you know, but definitely we'll miss it. I know some of the council members won't, but I think we'll uh, miss him. And once again, thank you, Council President. I appreciate see you, your words. See you, Thank you. Um, see you on see, Friday. See you on Friday. Mm -hmm. And my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman um, Velez, we are closing the meeting. Oh, yeah? Just a reminder. Oh, <laughs> she came back. No, she called the line. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, happy birthday to the champion, Ed Cotton. And look at this. I just cleaning picking up Flavio Des, and I find this, IBF <laughs> convention, you know? Yep. I know, that's, uh -huh. I know. So, you, you know, Madam, Madam Clerk, just make sure this we'll, is we'll Flavio's. Put it, we'll put it if yeah, this. I was trying to clean his desk before he leave, but you know. Um, to the community, there's a lot of announcement was done today, but there's one important that I want to invite the community. If you cannot make it July 1st to the International High School, you could watch it to Channel 77, Optimum, and Channel 32 Files. But please, come down. We got a 250 seats, right? I believe so, at that school. And um, let's celebrate the uh, re-election re 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 of Councilwoman Dr. Lisa Mintz, and also my sister for a long time, Councilwoman Marissa Davila, and also giving welcome to Councilman Uding. Um, it's, it's gonna be a good inauguration, and congratulating the mayor at the same time in his re-election. As I say, elections are over. There's a big tax tax out there that we need to uh, improve in our city, hopefully from July 1st on. This administration understand and believe that to treat this four year like it was the first term of the mayor. The two years that he's claimed that he had only because the pandemic was here, is a testament what he had to get done. And I know the experience is there. Hopefully we can move forward. Council President, we did have a healthy discussion with DCA, yes. the time that I was there. And those individuals that probably do not understand this slide sometimes, I, I, we have the PowerPoint. I made copies and give it to them, but you can know that what we discuss of government okay. uh, in, in the city of Patterson. So saying that we're not perfect, we try to uh, get to the perfection with the knowledge every day that we receive at the same time with the knowledge that we have with the sentiment of the community in heart. So 4th of July is here, almost here. Residents of Patterson, please take into consideration that there's an ordinance of fireworks and make sure you take consideration of your neighbors, elderly, seniors, kids. Make sure you be safe. Saying that, Kai, I'll be home soon. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman um, Mims. Nice and so, um, Patterson, 
I, I just want to give out my condolences to all those that are grieving due, due to the loss of their loved ones. I'm definitely praying for our community with all these shootings that are going on, even as we sat here tonight, another shooting on East 18th Street. So I am really praying for our community with these um, incidents that are happening all, all over our city that are impacting our um, young people in, in this community. So I'm praying for some level of peace and um, unity and coming together in, in these incidents. Um, it's already been stated this Friday, um, I will be sworn in along with uh, Council President Davila, uh, Council Menelek Uden, and the mayor um, for our being reelected for four more years. So if you're available, please come out on Friday at 12 at International, and then 2.30, we will be here for the reorganization meeting. There's so many um, great things that are happening in the community. I wanna congratulate all the graduates today. There was so many graduations going on, elementary, high school, uh, going on today. So to all the families, the parents, um, and all these moving up ceremonies, congratulations to all those uh, students that are preparing to go away to college much success let's keep praying for our city let's keep working together and let's keep building a better patterson god bless you my vote is yes madam clerk thank you madam clerk and secretaries for all you do thank you madam president so i want to thank my council thank colleague councilman colleague um, my vice president for acknowledging uh, my council presidency this past year and Councilman Velez, um, I think that everyone out there has seen that it is definitely uh, not an easy job. Uh, I appreciate giving the opportunity by my colleagues to have served in this year, um, and I'm looking forward to Friday's reorganization. I'm looking forward to being sworn in for another four years. I truly appreciate our Patterson residents. I appreciate Madam Clerk your professionalism, your patience, along with the entire staff. Um, I love my assistant. Uh, she's, she's been definitely a, a godsend to me, uh, Reverend Phyllis Riley. Uh, I want to thank the administration, uh, Madam B.A., Corporation Council, uh, CFO Silva. Um, I know that you all can see that I'm a person of my word. I take a stance. Um, I don't go with the waves. And I think that it's important that anyone in this position, uh, you take a stand and you stand strong. Um, I look forward to the next four years um, and, and definitely doing some you know, new things, greater things. And I want to continue having you know, the open discussions that are important uh, for the council so that way there is a, a, a communication. I'm looking forward to more conversations and more retreats and workshops with DCA. I think that's important as well. Um, and, you know, um, just for the record, Councilwoman Khan, you weren't listening when I was speaking, but I was the first one to shout out the champion at 12 o'clock, okay? That's what I was saying, Councilwoman, I'm saying happy birthday to Mr. Ed Cotton to our former councilman and our champion uh, in Patterson, and I know the champion of your heart. Uh, but with that said, um, I appreciate uh, all of my colleagues, and I am looking forward uh, to uh, being sworn in along with Councilwoman at large, Dr. Mims, and I'm looking forward also to having a newly elected councilman-elect, uh, MD Foreed Uding. Um, I think that this next term, and, but I believe in this next year, a lot is gonna happen. Um, I wanna also give a special shout out to my aide, who has been by my side, still standing. I beat him down all the time, and I'll put it on public, because I do it in public. Uh, but I appreciate him, I truly do. I don't say it much, he knows I'm very tough. When I wanna get work done, it gets done. Uh, and, and, and he knows that. But I appreciate the fact that since we have approved the, uh, uh, the uh, resolution to have AIDS, um, he has been standing by my side, and that says a lot. You know, so um, no, no special interviews, okay? <laughs> but anyway, 
God bless you, Patterson. I'm looking forward, looking forward to Friday. And lastly, lastly, if you want to come and then celebrate the swearing in, celebrate the reorganization meeting, join us at 5.30 for, uh, for the food trucks. That's July 1st. That's July 1st, and then there's going to be, which by the way, I don't appreciate it's on the 1st. It takes away from Councilwoman Mims, me and, and Councilman Udin, and the mayor, right? But um, I guess, I don't know who decided July 1st was the date, but that's the date that's on for the Celebrate Patterson, and there's gonna be fireworks and food trucks and all of that, starting I believe at 5.30 till I think 9.30 over at the Great Falls, so. Um, with that said, uh, the last person that I did not the fifth ward. thank, the fifth ward uh, I'm sorry, Falls. it is a fifth ward now. Yeah. Uh, I also want to uh, congratulate once again the mayor, and we will see you, mayor. You're probably not watching this, but we will see you on Friday. Thank you. God bless Patterson. God bless you all. I Good got night. a library, too. Good night. My vote is yes to close. Thank you. The vote is five in favor, four absent. The regular meeting of June 28, 2022 is adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.